Hey friends today we are gonna see what if Naruto born with evil eyes and got harem in Marvel movie. But before we start, if you want more amazing stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video, also if possible share this video with your friends, now without wasting any more time, let's begin the story. Waking up from cryogenic stasis was a bitch, Naruto Uzumaki would soon conclude, especially when you had a regenerative healing factor and a body that actively fought the whole process going in. His captors had even claimed that they were deliberately freezing him at a far lower temperature than was normal just to combat his regeneration and spite him for his troublesomeness. Was that even a word? In the end, the whole process did not do good things for his body's cells. Which was why Naruto's eyes were currently stinging like a bitch along with the rest of his body as he thawed, keeping them shut due to the pain took away one of his senses but then he already couldn't taste, smell or feel anything either, those senses were all completely numb. However his ears despite throbbing fiercely could at least make out something resembling sounds from his surrounding, nothing truly distinct and if he was to use a comparison it was like listening to already muffled sound underwater but it was still distinctly sound, which meant one of his regular senses was working even if not properly. Despite his poor condition, Naruto Uzumaki was just happy he was finally free of that kami forsaken prison for however long he would retain that freedom this time. It was not the first time he had been brought out of cryo by these evil scientists that would have been best pals with Orochimaru and it likely wouldn't be the last, however Naruto fully intended to make sure he didn't go back into that hellish contraption willingly, not that he ever did go in there willingly to begin with but he intended to put up more of a fight this time. Curled in a fetal position on the floor where he had fallen after being released, Naruto was garbed in nothing more than some skin-tight sports boxers to preserve his modesty, as he slowly regenerated in that state he was far from being capable of even moving let alone doing anything else at 100% functionality. However the scientist at this facility had done something to him and somehow accelerated his healing ability. Naruto could literally feel it and it scared him, cells which had exploded due to being frozen at temperatures far below 0 degrees Celsius thawed due to his higher than normal body temperature, repairing themselves and putting his body back together, which meant in a few minutes he would be physically at 100% and those that had done this to him would all be in a lot of pain if they hadn't drugged him to high hell by then. Still his captors weren't idiots and knew better than to release him from his cage without safeguards, they were still rebuilding several labs from the first and last time they had been careless with him and had gone on a rampage as he attempted to escape, which was why Naruto wondered to himself, what was going on here? Surely they can't be this stupid. EY, are you alright? Ah, uh, he thought, it seemed his hearing had finally kicked in enough so that he could not only differentiate words being spoken from white noise but understand what was actually being said and that the voice speaking to him was that of a female grunting in a failed attempt at a response due to his vocal cords still thawing, only earned him a concerned, easy, easy, you just came out of cryo, it's disorienting and painful but I promise I will help you get out of here. Why? Naruto wondered to himself as he lay there regenerating, it had been weeks since he was first brought to the facility from what he could gather each time they brought him out of cryo, seven weeks to be exact, yet in that whole time he had been held captive and frequently experimented on. Not once had he met a single individual in this facility who was willing to show him even an inkling of compassion and human decency. Instead they had cut him open with wide grins as they plundered the secrets of his body and mind in hopes of replicating them to improve upon their Weapon X program. Whatever the hell that was, it was the highest physical violation a shinobi can endure and the reason Hunter Nin squads existed in the elemental nations, Hell Konoha Anbu who were too badly injured to complete the mission willingly immolated themselves to preserve the secrets of their bodies, as for Naruto he felt very violated and someone would pay for that. So it naturally begged the questions, why was someone suddenly claiming they would help get him out of this hellhole? Why was this person showing kindness towards him and he could feel that it was genuine kindness through his negative sensing ability when for the past five weeks all he had known was pain, humiliation and indignity from his captors? In the end he concluded that the only way to get the answers he wanted was to open his eyes and look for himself into the eyes of the woman who claimed she would help him, so risking the pain that would come from the brightness of the room as he opened his eyes that had yet to fully regenerate from being frozen, he laid his gaze on his would-be savior and his mind went blank, apparently his eyes were a lot more healed than he thought. Kami she's gorgeous, the stray thought had sprung to the forefront of his mind of its own will and yet he couldn't find it in himself to deny its truth, he had seen plenty of great beauties in his homeland, May. Tsunade, Yugo, Yugito, Hanada, Karen, Ino, Anko, Mabui, Ryuzetsu and many many more, even his own mother and Sasuke's for that matter could be described as babes, not that he entertained such thoughts of his mother but it was still an undeniable fact. Yet this girl was different, her breast size was not even as large as half the above mentioned women and yet it suited her physique perfectly and enhanced her, 
She wasn't very tall at 51 feet but her lithe figure had the type of musculature that one could only get through intensive workout on a nearly daily basis and proportions that were simply perfect for her. Her skin was a darker tone that indicated a lot of exposure to the sun and Naruto did a double take when his gaze swept over her hips and ass which were undeniable sexy as hell, she did not look like some ethereal goddess like so many of the women he had known in his homeland but perhaps that was what made her so much more fetching to his eye, that and the fact she had just saved him from his personal frozen hell. He couldn't resist noting how her form hugging black top, pants and heeled boots did nothing but enhance how sexy she looked, and yes, he was a bit of a pervert but the world needed to be praising the log that he wasn't worse considering Jiraiya of the Sanin had been his master, however he still had the presence of mind to note her straight raven hair and jade eyes, eyes so full pain, regret and hope mixed together, eyes that reminded himself of every time he looked in the mirror when he was younger, they were beautiful. Beautiful, Naruto most certainly did not mean to say that out loud seeing as his vocal cords were supposed to still be repairing themselves so when she blushed and looked to the side, he had no idea to how resolve the awkward atmosphere he had just created, or at least do it properly, but then again this was Uzumaki Naruto we were talking about so he decided to bull his way through the awkwardness and simply change the subject. Um, I am Naruto Uzumaki, nice to meet you, he said extending his right hand only to realize with no small amount of surprise that he actually had a right hand, huh, I thought Kagaya chopped that off below the elbow, it certainly wasn't there last time these asshole brought me out of cryo. The girl eyed his extended arm for a second as if it was a snake threatening to bite her before taking the hand in her own and shaking it as she calmly replied, X-23, we need to move, we are not safe here. Caught off guard by her name he couldn't help but blurt out, X-23, the hell kind of name is that? Let it not be said that Naruto was not his mother's son, quick to speak and impulsive to a fault, had improved over the years as he took on various responsibilities but he was still very much an Uzumaki at his core. The people who captured you and have been experimenting on you, created me years ago and designated me X-23, the 23rd experimental clone to replicate the abilities of my father, the original weapon X, she explained without a care in the world. Naruto paused in surprise at her blunt revelation before saying, yeah, I gathered my captors were a bunch of dicks but that, that's just not right, don't you have another name I can call you? It was the girl's turn to pause in surprise more so at the fact that Naruto still had some sense of morality than anything else after being the facility's plaything for a while, still she replied, my mother named me Laura Kinney. Perfect, Naruto said with a wide grin showing his sparkling teeth as he memorized the strange name, it was a strange world had found himself in so strange names came with the territory, it's nice to meet you Laura, now let's get out of here, I think I've healed enough to move. Again Laura, seemed to get caught off guard by his comment as he rose to his feet, eventually asking, you can regenerate? are you another clone? For a moment Naruto thought of the thousands of clones he once could make using the shadow clone jutsu he was famous for but dismissed it, already knowing that the way she used the word was very different from the way he and his people did, no, I've always been able to heal quickly but I think they enhanced that or something, I am healing faster than normal and my right hand seems to have regrown, somehow. She looked at his hand in curiosity before asking, did they cut it off? Naruto merely chuckled as he recalled exactly how he lost his right arm before replying, nope, I lost that in a fight with some stupid goddess, with that he headed for the door heedless of the incredulous look his savior was giving him as she followed and soon the duo were out of the lab he had been held in. VVV Julian Keller aka Hellion knew had fucked it up with Laura, he knew at the minute that she begged him to kill Kimura and had said no, whatever mutual attraction the two had been feeling for each over the past few weeks since had saved her from Nimrod was suddenly replaced by betrayal, she felt as if his actions by choosing to let the psychotic woman live had betrayed her in some deep profound way. Unfortunately he could not understand why this was and perhaps he did not want to. It had been a long night already and his eyes had been opened to a side of Laura that he had never seen before. The side that reminded you that she was every bit the clone of Wolverine she claimed to be in a killer to boot, his teammate Cecily Kincaid aka Mercury had been kidnapped by the an evil organization that X-23 referred to simply as the facility, these people were the same ones that had created Laura to be a living weapon and apparently they had been the ones to experiment on Wolverine too years ago and bond his skeleton with adamantium. In short these people intended to do bad things to his teammate Mercury so Hellion and X-23 were in a race against time to save her, which was why they had struck at the hideouts of numerous little gangs with connections to the facility or connections to someone who was in turn connected to the facility in some way, it didn't even matter how remote the connection was, the duo had visited every single one of those individuals for information. Unfortunately each and every time while Julian tried to kick the bad guy's teeth in to get the information out of them. Laura on the other hand had absolutely no qualms with straight up gutting these people for answers, in short she was more than willing to kill or dismember quite a number of bad guys for the information she wanted, 
as far as she was concerned when it came to these people, it was kill or be killed, pure and simple. Over and over Julian had repeated to Laura like a mantra that the X-Men did not kill and she would listen for a moment and seemingly consider his words. However when they got to the next locations she would ignore his words and do something that could potential kill one or all of the people they were shaking down for information, oftentimes Hellion was the very one saving the lives of the bad guys from X-23 as she took playing the bad cop to a whole new level, one thug that she had thrown out of a 12th story building window came to mind after he had failed to give her answers, lucky for the thug Julian was telekinetic. Hell Julian had even watched her shoot a man in the head in cold blood that very night, right after the man had truthfully given them all the information he had on the facility, not that it was much, still after witnessing all that, Hellion just couldn't look at her the same and it all came to a head when they had been ambushed by Kimura and he had successfully countered that ambushed and pinned Kimura to a wall with his telekinesis. Laura had then begged him to end Kimura's life with tears in her eyes and he had said no, in that moment Julian had watched something inside of her, some kind of faith in him snuff out, it was heartbreaking for him but he already knew he would make the same decision again if it was thrust on him. However this also meant that whatever the two of them had had together these past weeks since the Nimrod incident was now over, after tonight, nothing between them would ever be the same and it was killing him, he just wasn't a killer, while X-23 very much was and in his mind you couldn't be a killer and good person at the same time, yet Hellion still found her so attractive. Sighing as he made his way through the secret facilities many labs ripping doors open and taking down guards wherever he encountered them he headed for the location X-23 had pointed out Cecily was located at, saving his teammate was the mission after all and it took precedence over everything he was dealing with emotionally. VVV Naruto why did you stop? Naruto looked at his pretty rescuer when she called his name, his attention had been drawn momentarily to the spike in negative emotions he sensed in various places in the facility and he had unknowingly stopped the quick jog through the facility, replying honestly he said, your friend is in great pain up ahead, I can feel it and it's kind of distracting, however I can also sense more lifeforms in that room. With his explanation given Laura frowned for a moment before nodding as she said, one of them is probably Hellion, I sent him ahead to rescue Mercury, while I investigated the lab you were in, I am positive he got to her by now and he's strong enough to handle almost anything the facility could throw at him. The explanation was simple but from Naruto's frown Laura could tell that the ninja knew there was more to it than that, it didn't take a genius to figure out that while in the midst of rescue mission, one doesn't just veer of course and investigate a random lab when their friend is in danger without there being some kind of story behind it, either Laura had the utmost confidence in this Hellion's abilities or she had other reasons for doing so. Laura however was just grateful that Naruto didn't press the issue, choosing instead to say, your friend Hellion might be in there but he is not alone, I can sense four other life signs in there and three of them don't feel completely human, I think both of your friends might be in danger. Worry finally made its way into Laura facial expression as she said, then I better hurry in case they need me. Do you want to wait here? I can double back for you after I take care of the threat. Naruto felt touched that this girl was concerned about his well being, enough that she was giving him the option of staying out of any ensuing fight, but that only made him all the more determined to fight at her side, even if he was as weak as shit at the moment. No, I think I've regained enough strength for some combat, let's keep moving. You seem experienced in combat, aside from your regeneration, do you have any other abilities or skills? I need to know what you are capable to better coordinate with you in the coming fight. Startled Naruto looked at Laura in surprise as she eyed him up and down, he was pretty positive that she was very experienced in combat and she had the eyes of a killer, however he didn't expect her to be able to tell the same about him so easily nor did he expect her to be tactician. A strategist eh, brilliant, Naruto mirthfully responded before explaining, I am a ninja skilled in ninjutsu, taijutsu, shurikenjutsu and fuinjutsu. Laura scrunched her face up in confusion at the terms and asked, can you clarify what you mean with those words? I am not a ninja. Still she knew enough to know that if he was really a ninja then he was a force to be reckoned with, provided he had any skill in these arts he was listing of course. Sorry, ninjutsu is, well civilians always called it ninja magic. I know many different types of techniques in this field. Though I don't have access to most of them right now. Taijutsu is just physical combat but more so hand to hand combat. Shurikenjutsu is the art of hitting targets with thrown weapons like shuriken. Kanai or senbon for example which are ninja throwing stars, ninja knives and ninja throwing needles respectively but there is more to it, fuinjutsu or the ceiling arts is a bit harder to explain, it's kind of like ninjutsu except you write symbols that command reality for various effects, and all this is powered by an energy we call chakra, Naruto quickly explained before making a rasengan in his left hand showing it to her saying, this is chakra. Laura's surprise was palpable as she beheld the spiraling ball of blue energy known as the rasengan in Naruto hand. It felt powerful and dangerous to her instincts, like something she should avoid getting hit by at any cost unless she wanted to be in a world of pain, Naruto's apparently more powerful than he seemingly appears, 
she thought to herself as she said. Ah, oh, I see, I can tell just by looking that that technique is quite dangerous but I am more surprised that you even told me as much as much as you have about what you can do. Looking her straight in the eyes Naruto simply replied with a calm and confidence that was simultaneously unnerving and inspiring, I trust you. You don't know anything about me. Laura rebutted with a frown on her face, how could he say that about her, they'd only just met a few minutes ago. Naruto merely looked up at the ceiling with a whimsical smile, as if seeing something that she could not fathom and replied, I know enough. I am a killer, why she said that Laura had no idea. She found Naruto interesting and his company pleasant, she also felt giddy at the prospect that she was trusted by him even though they barely knew each other. She'd been seeking the trust of her fellow mutants ever since Logan had dragged her back to the X mansion and slowly she had earned that trust, however it had been an uphill battle all the way, and yet this guy was so willing to just trust her after knowing her for less than 30 minutes. Common sense said that Naruto had an agenda and he should not be trusted at all, her feelings had been betrayed so many times in the past by people claiming they trusted her and asking for her trust in turn that she found herself desperate to test and see whether his words were genuine. Laura was not just any mutant but Wolverine's clone and one of the powers they shared in common was the ability to detect lies. And yet Naruto was not lying, he really believed what he was saying from what she could tell with her heightened senses, he really trusted her, it was such a pure and innocent action that she couldn't help but try and dissuade him from doing so without at least knowing a little about her, she could practically feel a sort of kinship with him radiating of the redhead as he looked at her and in that moment she understood. Where the insight came from Laura would never know but in that moment as she stared into his single unblinking amethyst eye could see it as plain as day. Naruto was the same as her, a living weapon used by others for their own ends, some of those people were noble and others malicious but in the end they had all used them. So when he calmly replied, I know that too, but you are also a good person or at least you are trying to be a good person, that has to count for something Laura knew it was the truth. They were the words his surrogate big brother and former sensei Hitaki Kakashi had told him after he found out what was being done to him and how he was being used by Root, those words, a whole lot of training, some Yamanaka counseling sessions and a lot of unconditional love are what had saved him from the hell of his old life, and just like they had left him stunned back then and prepared to reevaluate his whole life, the same words did so once more as Laura replied, how can you tell? His answer was to spread his hands out and indicate his surrounding while saying, are we not rushing to save your friends right now? it's not exactly the kind of thing a bad person would do, nor was releasing me from my confinement Laura. Naruto then turned to look Laura straight in the eye and said with words borrowed from Kakashi himself, besides, I am a killer too but I was first taught how to be a good person, a lesson I don't doubt that you can learn with ease. T thank you, Laura stuttered showing a bit more vulnerability than she was accustomed to. To which Naruto merely beamed at her and said, no problem, now let's go save your friends. VVV perhaps it was the fact that Laura had gone her own way that made Hellion so cautious when he first entered the lab holding Mercury, nevertheless he was grateful that he had put up a telekinetic dome around himself and the device imprisoning his teammate, if he hadn't done so, he would definitely have been Chow for one of the canine like monstrosities currently attacking him, if not for all three. Even now it was taking everything Julian had to keep them out as the silvery skinned beasts battered themselves against the TK dome he put up. They looked like dogs, really really big dogs with lots of muscle towards the front of their torsos, even on all fours they were larger than the average man and their teeth looked like they could shear through bone with relative ease, however what made them so terrifying to him, what struck fear into the rebel heart of the young man called Hellion was not their roars, their size, their speed or their strength but rather their skin. Hellion knew that skin anywhere seeing as it belonged to his teammate and dear friend Mercury. Julian Keller honestly found himself terrified at the prospect of learning exactly what had been done to Cecily Kincaid to create these nightmare creatures. When Laura called these people in the facility monsters and described their experimentation and Torgia's procedures, it hadn't registered with him. It wasn't until he had seen it for himself that Julian Keller understood exactly what they were up against. That he understood what it was the facility did to mutants like him, that he could understand that Mercury who had been there captive for a day had been so brutally tortured that she could barely keep herself in a coherent shape and would have nightmares of her time here for the rest of her life, yet X-23 had been the plaything of these monsters for years, it made Julian's blood boil as he was forced to acknowledge and understand another piece of the puzzle that was Laura Kinney. Just as he felt he was at his limits holding back the silvery predators trying to eat him, one of the door to the lab they were in blew open and in stepped a welcome sight, along with a very confusing one, X-23 who was the welcome sight stood in the doorway with all four of the claws in her arms extended and ready for combat while besides her stood a bewildered and mostly naked redhead save for a pair of sports boxers to preserving his modesty. If anyone asked, Julian would deny it to hell and back but he couldn't help in that moment feeling irrationally jealous of how close the half-naked teen was standing next to X-23, especially since the bastard was so goddamn good looking, 
even with barely any clothing on, now Julian wasn't gay or anything, he just couldn't deny that the boys simply knew how to pull off the gravity-defying spiky scarlet hair look like a professional model and make the hair work for him. A few locks of his scarlet hair covered the teen's left eye like an eye patch keeping it from view but his right eye was a vibrant amethyst that seemed to glow in the low light conditions of the lab, then there was his ridiculously ripped six-pack, hell all his muscles while not big and bulky looked so well defined that they could have been made out of some kind of living marble rather than flesh and blood for all the difference it would have made. The only blemish he could see on the other boy's healthy peach skin if one could even consider it a blemish were the three whisker-like marking on each of his cheek that gave him a foxish appearance for some reason, whether they were tattoos or birthmarks, Julian couldn't tell. Speaking of tattoos there was a strange flame-like red tattoo on his left shoulder and some tribal-like pattern around the wrist of that same arm, this boy also didn't seem to give two shits about the temperature, which was pretty chilly that evening, or the monsters that had been attacking Julian until he and X-23 busted in. If anything he seemed more bewildered by Laura's extended claws seeing as he was hanging uncomfortably close to her and closely scrutinizing them. Suppressing the pang of jealousy Julian felt at this he simply called out to his teammate asking, Laura, who is this? Naruto Uzumaki. Before she could even reply the redhead introduced himself with a weak grin as he turned his attention to Julian and Mercury before looking to the three creatures that were in turn giving him their entire focus. Honestly the stare off between the redhead and these monsters felt like two different predators had suddenly met and were sizing each other up. Laura who was also keeping a keen eye on the creatures chipped in, they were experimenting on him so I freed him, that was a surprise, of course he knew that she had originally left his side because she was pissed at him for not killing Kimura and needed something to do, still. How do you know you can trust him? It was a legitimate question even if it was one born of slight jealousy towards Naruto Uzumaki and his sheer masculinity. We can discuss that later Hellion, just know that I do trust him for the now. Laura's comment seemed to surprise the redhead who grinned widely at her before turning his attention back on the predators, that said, what's important right now is saving Mercury and dealing with these things. More guards are coming from the north and the west, ETA 1 minute 52 seconds, the strange redhead finally deigned to speak again, the whole time never taking his eyes of the silver dog creatures. VVV the former section commander of Anbu Black Ops team's RO, Ran, Han and Ko kept his eyes fixed on the silver canine-like creatures before him. Naruto had blasted them with a mild amount of killing intent from the moment he first spotted them, strong enough to appear a threat and force the silver hounds to keep their attention solely on him but weak enough, that they didn't panic and scatter. In his opinion those beasts needed to die, now that he was up close with them he could sense how wrong their life force felt to his chakra senses. A result of the fact that they were artificially engineered. They were nothing but rabid monsters to him and through his negative emotion sensing ability he could feel their bloodlust and endless desire to kill. It was also a desire they would act on the minute he looked away and displayed a moment of, presumed, weakness, rabid monsters though they were. These silverhounds were still clever predators, they were weak predators compared to some of the beings he had tangoed with in the past but predators nonetheless. Do you know how many? Laura asked in response to his earlier declaration about enemy reinforcements. Naruto did not turn his gaze away from the silver predators to check or to respond to Laura but then he didn't have to when his left eye hidden behind his scarlet bangs could see through walls and spot everything around him for kilometers around, yes, Naruto had the Byakugan, an eye he had been gifted by his late lover Hayuga Hanada after Shed been impaled through the heart by Uchiha Madara as the Jinchuriki of the Ten Tails. He still couldn't control its power very well, especially since it wasn't even a remotely normal Byakugan to begin with. Still Naruto had always been pretty talented at getting around those kinds of handicaps, so instead of using the Byakugan's full omnidirectional vision for one kilometer of localized near omniscience, Naruto merely focused in a single direction with the telescopic vision aspect of the Byakugan. With the assistance of his chakra and emotion sensing abilities to detect what directions enemies might be coming from it allowed him to focus solely on what he wanted to focus on rather than on simply seeing everything around him, even with all his experience assimilating the memories and knowledge of thousands of clones at a time. The sheer amount of information the Byakugan granted when active was daunting, this would have to do until he could learn to properly control the powerful eye. About 43, 10 from the north, the rest form the west, explained referring to the other two of the three entrances to this particular lab. Laura nodded in understanding before humming to herself in thought and saying, then we need to deal with these creatures quick, I presume you are the one keeping them in check? Yes, Naruto quietly responded before adding, those three bitches will attack as soon as I look away or one of us makes an aggressive move. I will strike first and attempt to capture them, follow behind me and decapitate them with your claws once I have captured them. Laura looked at him in surprise for a second before replying, acknowledged. E, T, a 50 seconds, Naruto said deliberately breaking his gaze with the silver predators, something they took as a sign to attack, 
However before they could even make it one meter forward Naruto seemingly faded from where he was standing next to Laura and materialized next to the middle predator of the three which he kicked, hard. It was like a cannon had gone off as his foot crashed into the beast's mercury-covered chest and launched it away from him at speeds one could only describe as supersonic. Unfortunately Naruto just happened to punt the oversized dog through one of the few windows in the facility leading to the outside. Oh shit. That was not supposed to happen. Naruto thought in shock as he looked at his leg in wonder. His chakra levels were barely above minimum capacity and his reserves were not refilling as fast as he would like and yet had just moved far faster than he had ever done without the aid of chakra, whether sage, tailed beast or six paths chakra. Hell had kicked the predator had attacked with the kind of force had normally expect had augmented himself with his chakra and sent it flying. This had not been his intent, somehow he was stronger and faster. Everyone in the room was frozen in shock at the sheer outrageous speed with which Naruto had attacked the one predator. Everyone but the remaining two predators who were already behind him and took the chance to spin around and attack Naruto from the back, unfortunately for them, Naruto through his various sensory abilities was pretty much omniscient in a localized area. Realizing his earlier mistake with how hard he had kicked the other predator creature, Naruto used a technique better suited to capturing enemies, a technique that was distinctly one belonging to those of his bloodline, the Uzumaki chakra chains, sometimes known as the adamantine ceiling chains. From his back sprang forth golden chains of energy that immediately sped towards the two remaining predators, they attempted to dodge and retreat from the golden chains but the chakra chains pursued them like they had a mind of their own and wrapped around the predators necks like a noose before lifting them into the air. It honestly looked like he was trying to hang them with the way his chakra chains suspended them in the air as they struggled but he had a very different reason for doing this, one that involved Laura, their deaths were not meant to come at his hands but at the hands of his companion whose claws were far better suited to cutting through the predator's metallic skins, something she proved not even a second later. With grace and elegance that would have left the world's greatest ballerinas and gymnasts in awe Laura performed a series of complex acrobatic maneuvers towards the predators suspended three meters in the air and decapitated both with her foot claws. The duo thumps of their bodies hitting the ground as blood gushed from their severed necks brought home the realization for Julian and Cecily that these nightmare creatures were gone for good, well, at least for two of the three thanks to Naruto's little error. With that done Naruto raised his hand and started gathering chakra, this was not the Rasengan but rather a cousin of the fourth Hokage's infamous technique and the inspiration from which the Rasengan was first created, albeit a weaker version of that original technique. It was technique that every tailed beast and Jinchuriki with control over their tailed beast understood how to perform almost instinctively. The tailed beast ball or in this case the menacing ball which was just a vastly weaker version of the tailed beast ball quickly formed in his outstretched hand. Blue and red energy from the world gathered around his outstretched hand in a ball the size of soccer ball before turning a dark murky purple, satisfied with his creation Naruto began concentrating the power compacting and shrinking it down till it was the size of tennis ball and turning it a menacing black from which it got its name. Moving towards Mercury and Hellion while dragging the corpses of the dog monsters had killed Naruto turned to Laura and said, get behind me Laura. What is that? Laura asked curiously as she obeyed Naruto's instructions. Naruto simply replied, a bomb, then why are you bringing it here dumbass? Hellion protested as much Naruto's amusement, they weren't in any harm as long he didn't release concentrated chakra. Still he needed them behind him so replied in a tone that brokered no argument, there is no time to explain, I need you all behind me so I can shield you from the blast. TCH, tell us that shit before you go making bombs, Julian complained but obeyed, what about the guards? Want to kill them? Cause we are X-Men, not killers. Naruto smiled and replied, it's a small bomb, it will scare them and shake them up as long as they don't set foot in this room. We are in the room idiot, Hellion whined, like I said, I will shield you from the blast, with those words Naruto's chakra chains deposited the remains of the predators on the floor behind him before they shot into the floor, spreading out around the four of them and forming a dome like matrix followed by a transparent barrier popping into existence. It didn't look like much but it was one of the most powerful barrier in existence and one Naruto's own mother had one used to overpower the Kyubi itself and keep even a cage from entering it, hell it was the reason she was kidnapped as child by hidden cloud ninjas forcing her father to save her and kick off their love life. A barrier. Laura spoke up startled as she pressed her hand against the glowing field of golden energy surrounding them before she noted that the menacing ball Naruto had created was no longer in his hands and asked, where is the bomb? Pointing outside the barrier to where Naruto had left ball of energy that was already beginning to destabilize as it began to glow a brilliant white he casually replied, over there, close your eyes and brace yourself. Huh? Oh fuck boom. Hellion's voice was drowned out as the explosion turned their room into a miniature sun. Vaporizing everything in the lab as it sent a powerful shockwave outwards that simply toppled all the surrounding walls and shattered every glass object in the facility, 
even within the dome where its occupants were protected from both the explosion and the deafening thunderclap that was its shockwave the ground shook violently enough to throw everyone save Naruto off their feet, the benefits of using chakra to keep yourself standing. All visibility of the world outside the dome was gone due to dust and smoke floating through the air. The only light available to them for seeing each other was the light generated from Naruto whose left head was suddenly covered in golden energy and glowing vibrantly, while it was a waste of chakra and Naruto was already dangerously close to sending himself into a chakra coma, he did it for the benefit of the other two, it would at least keep them from panicking. Laura was a highly trained assassin so he had no doubt that she was fine with darkness and explosions, he hoped. Using his senses Naruto could feel that the guards who had been sent to apprehend, kill them were still alive but they were not in good condition due to burst eardrums, the ceiling coming down on top of them and various other side effects of being too close to an explosion, still they were alive which meant Hellion couldn't pull another hissy fit. That didn't stop the half-deaf telekinetic from opening his mouth again and screaming, the hell was that? Giving him a blank look Naruto responded I did say bomb, didn't I? Holy crap, these scientist freaks were trying to make a weapon and succeeded, Hellion cursed as he turned to Laura and Mercury who had just managed to reform into a human shape again, she was, strange, it reminded him of the Haozoki clan. Still Hellion's assumption were way off and needed correcting, incorrect, I had those powers long before these people captured me, their goal was to harness me as a weapon or at the very least my DNA to build a new type of living weapon, a new weapon X as they called it. Everyone in the room shuddered at the idea especially since three fourths of the people in the room had been experimented on directly by the facility. Finally Hellion said in a teasing manner, then it's a good thing Laura saved your ass, even if it's lame someone as powerful as you needed saving in the first place. You're really immature, Naruto coldly responded before turning to Mercury and saying, you must be Mercury, I apologies if it seems tactless but are you capable of retrieving your stolen genetic material from these monsters? Dude, that is totally tactless, Hellion exclaimed. It probably was but they needed to get moving before more guards showed up and made things difficult. Naruto did not have much chakra left to spend and would likely have to resort to taijutsu and shurikenjutsu if any came looking, he was banking on the fact that if anyone was watching through the numerous cameras in the facility his little display would intimidate them, that and even if they did come his way, the dust and smoke would cause a lot of confusion with which he, Laura and her friends could sneak out. As I said, I apologize for that but from what I can sense she is still connected to the silver skin on those monsters. They carry her life signature and that skin is still alive so I believe it possible that she can reabsorb that skin into herself and in doing so simultaneously regain her strength and deny our enemy a resource to make more of these abominations, Naruto finished gesturing to the creatures they had killed. Hellion however did not like his wording and grabbed him by the neck before yelling into Naruto's face, she is not a resource, call her that one more time and ill. Whatever threat he was about to level at Naruto never made it past Julian's lips for a vice-like clamp in the form of Naruto's hand wrapped itself around his wrist which was still around Naruto's neck and wretched it away, pain shot through Hellion's hand as he felt wrist being crushed but before he could even think of screaming he was jerked off balance and Naruto's leg swept behind Julian's feet sending him crashing to the ground in surprise. His back hit the ground before he had time to regain his balance and all the breath left in his lungs after his little rant was forced out of him. The whole sequence of events had been timed for just that perfect moment before he took another breath and so Hellion suddenly found himself powerless to say another word as Naruto stood over him and finally spoke up. You seem as quick to misunderstand the situation as you are at hurling baseless accusations Hellion. I know she is person, not an object and I sympathize with her. However I also know that in this room you are the only one who has no idea what kind of hell she's just been through so forgive me if I don't give two shits about your righteous indignation cause the fact is. To the people who created this place, we are all nothing more than resources, so think about that as you catch your breath, meanwhile Mercury can try and reabsorb her genetic material, me and Laura on the other hand will see about tracking that last monster, Naruto finished with a glare at the troublesome team. We came here for Mercury, we got her, we need to get back to the X mansion, Hellion said as he finally caught his breath and to Naruto's surprise Laura agreed with him. Naruto paused for a moment and considered what was being said before replying, you have a point, unfortunately that creature, the one that is still wearing Mercury's skin is 700 meters due west of our position and hauling ass. I can only track it for a few more minutes before it's in the wind and make no mistake Hellion if it escapes we will all regret it so we need decide now, deal with that thing or help Mercury. Mercury. Both Laura and Hellion insisted in unison. Nodding his head in understanding Naruto deactivated his Baikugan to conserve his currently limited reserves chakra and motion to Mercury saying, then it's decided, now bring her here. Why? What are you planning? Hellion asked suspiciously, the kid's jealousy and stubbornness was beginning to grate on the shinobi's nerves. Still Naruto calmly replied, it'll give her back some of her lost strength, 
hopefully she will be able to heal what's missing now that the other creature is gone and with that naruto used as little healing chakra as he could safely manage to begin healing mercury even as she reabsorbed her metallic skin from the two dead predators vvv emma frost former white queen of the hellfire club and current deputy headmistress of the xavier's institute for higher learning was cursing up a storm she and the X-Men were following the trail left by Hellion and X-23 as they attempted to rescue their kidnapped teammate Mercury in the Blackbird State Route 79 hypersonic stealth jet in order to back up the two mutant teens. They were already in the airspace of the two mutants' last known location and Emma had been scouring the countryside in hopes of picking up their mental signature when suddenly there were reports of a small explosion in an old factory on local police scanner. It was at that moment that whatever had been blocking Cerebra and her telepathy from reading the minds of anyone in the area was suddenly gone and like a new star being born a powerful and overwhelming presence suddenly filled that void. Back at the Xavier's Institute she could feel her girls, the Stepford Cuckoos, a trio of telepaths who were currently mind-linked and using Cerebra to scan the nation recoil in pain as they felt the backlash of the same awe-inspiring presence appear before them metaphorically speaking. He and there was no doubt it was a he, was huge with a complex, not entirely human mind that left sections visible to her telepathy and others invisible, reaching out to take a peek at this being Emma brushed against his mind, she did not expect him to immediately recoil in surprise as he felt her invading presence in his mind much less physically turn his head in her direction. There was a pulse of some kind of energy and Emma Frost became very aware of the fact that even from miles away this being was looking straight at her and he was not amused, thinking fast as she felt his hostility quickly rising she mentally said, my name is Emma Frost and I mean you no harm. I was curious about the massive psychic presence that had just appeared in range from nowhere. There is nothing wrong with curiosity but I would ask you respect the privacy of another person's thoughts Mindwalker, a thunderous voice sent back that would have been incredibly intimidating if not for the fact that Emma could sense his anger at the intrusion rapidly draining through their mental link. Relieved that this god-like being had calmed down so quickly, Emma curiosity took over and she asked, how is it you can see me from so far away? you are dozens of kilometers at the very least. In the same way that you can read thoughts and wander through the minds of other individuals, it is a gift, you seem to be searching for something, the last part wasn't a question but an observation made in a tone equal parts cold detachment and amusement. Not something, Emma corrected before following her instincts that said this being she was communicating with was trustworthy and taking a leap of faith as she added, I lost contact a couple of hours ago with two mutant teenagers who were headed in this direction, my last contact with them placed them over this area and until just now there was a psychic blackout in this area but now it's gone and in its place is you. Your massive psychic presence is shielding them from my mind. These two teens wouldn't happen to have the code names X-23 and Hellion would they? And their purpose here wouldn't happen to be saving their teammate Mercury? It asked with a hint of curiosity. Yes, have you seen them? The hope and excitement in Emma's projected thoughts was practically audible as she asked this. One moment. He replied one moment however took nearly a full minute to which Emma finally asked rather awkwardly, Hello? You there? I am still here Mindwalker, came the reply but his voice was a young and gentle human sounding voice this time, rather than the thunderous booming of a god-like entity, even his psychic presence had practically diminished at this point. Is that you? I can barely sense you now, he was practically invisible now and only the fact that she was specifically looking for him allowed her to even sense him but more importantly she could finally sense the other students besides him. I've raised mental barriers so that my presence isn't so greatly felt, there is only enough to receive your thoughts, as for Hellion, Mercury and Laura Kinney, they're here with me, the being confirmed although it was unnecessary. What was more shocking was the fact that he knew Laura's name at all, something Emma expressed, you know X-23's real name. She told me her name when she saved my life, I owe her, I will keep them out of trouble until you arrive Emma Frost, he replied. Miss Frost is fine mister. Emma began pausing as hint for this young man, divine or alien entity to drop his name. The being chuckled and replied, Naruto Uzumaki, well just call me Naruto. Well then Naruto, who are you? Emma asked curious about this newcomer. To put in your terms, I am ninja from another universe stranded on this one, I apologize if not everything translates properly, with all the experimentation that was done on me. I didn't have time to learn the subtleties and nuances of your culture or language Miss Frost but the gist of my story is that the people of this facility tried to turn me into one of their weapons or at the very least use my unique biology to make a new one, Naruto explained quickly. That was surprising and it led Emma to voice her next question even as she psychically guided Scott to the location of this facility, so you are a mutant? There was a pause for a few seconds before Naruto responded in an unsure tone with, I don't fully understand the concept, what qualifies as a mutant on this world? Emma was surprised by the admission, though it gave more credit to Naruto's story of not being from this universe, on the other hand he must have been from a very different and distant universe if mutants were a strange thing to him, 
She personally knew half a dozen people that had gone hoping around the multiverse and they had all encountered mutants wherever they went. Still they could just be going under a different name. I am sending you the information directly to your mind. Receiving, Naruto replied as she sent him all the relevant information on what mutants also known also known as Homo Superior was, after mere seconds of him digesting this information, and she could literally feel how quickly his mind assimilated the information, Naruto simply replied, I am the next step. Now that was cryptic, naturally it elicited the question, the next step to what? In human evolution Miss Frost, just as mutants are a step above Homo sapiens. I am merely what comes next, in a way I suppose you could call me a mutant if you use the term loosely and squint sideways, the mutations that the X gene gives from what you've shown me can be described as random at best, my powers and the powers of my people are more organized, let's just say the X gene stopped behaving like that around 800 years ago on my world, Naruto replied in a mix of excitement and amusement. Organized how? This was both alarming and exciting news to her, Naruto claimed to be from another universe, was that universe set a bit further in the future than this one if mutants as she understood them were the norm 800 years prior. Organized enough that mutations are not called mutations but rather bloodline limits. If the parents had a particular power then the children will most certainly have the same power so long as they share blood, it's resulted in those with similar mutations gathering together and intermarrying to form a clan of people with very specific powers, these clans then grouped with other clans boasting their own unique powers to form communities and eventually even small cities called hidden villages, Naruto explained. Interesting, we should talk more once the blackbird has landed and we get you all sorted out, we are literally 30 seconds out, Emma said ready to cut the mental link as they approached the top secret facility which had an entire collapsed section belching flames and smoking like chimney. A shudder quickly ran up her spine but she dared not voice her thoughts until she cut the link. Indeed, I look forward to it. The first five weeks of my life on this world have been hell but since meeting you mutants, I've found myself looking forward to the future, he sounded pleased for some unknown reason. VVV Naruto frowned as he the leaders of the mutant superhero team, the X-Men bickered with officers of a military organization known as the Office of National Emergencies aka one in deciding his fate, apparently one thought he was too dangerous after Hellion explained how he blew up part of the facility and accidentally took out the side jammers blocking Miss Frost's telepathy. Naruto already knew that Julian Keller, as he had learned Hellion's real name, did not like him one bit and it had something to do with Laura, so it was no surprise that even though the facts in the story were accurate, he made it sound ever so slightly like Naruto was a maniac fueling one officer Colonel Reyes' paranoia against the shinobi, the fact that none of them could simply penetrate his mind and take whatever information they wanted, nor was he willing to let them into his mind, did not help this lack of trust. Also to the giant hundred feet tall autonomous blue, silver and purple puppets bristling with weaponry that the locals called sentinels he apparently appeared to be both a mutant and not one so one was hesitant to remand him into the custody of the x-men on the other hand and much to the surprise of everyone present his earlier conversation with miss emma frost was a blessing in disguise and she was the top person championing his cause well she and laura something that seemed to freak out all the other x-men seeing as apparently the two never got along all of this however was a secondary concern to naruto at the moment for what held his full attention was the throbbing pain in his newly regrown right forearm, a pain that had been steadily increasing for the last hour and been diligently ignored until now, flaring his Byakugan to life so as to take a closer look at what was causing this pain, what Naruto found surprised him so much so that he yelped, what in Kami's name. All arguments came to stop as everyone turned to Naruto who was simply staring at his hand as if it had grown a mouth, ears and a pair of eyes and then started up a conversation. Before anyone could even ask what was wrong there was a very distinct snicked sound that echoed across the room, every X-Man and mutant who had ever been around Logan or Laura knew that sound intimately, the sound of the feral mutants extending their claws, however that sound did not come from Wolverine who wasn't even present nor his clone this time, it came from Naruto's right arm. For their extending from between his ring finger and pointer finger as well as his pointer finger and index fingers were two 12 inch claws just like Laura's, now he understood how the facility had enhanced his natural healing abilities, they had somehow grafted Laura's DNA into his own and this was just a side effect. Turning to the gathered government officials and the X-Men Naruto spoke up for the first time saying, it seems they used Laura's DNA to enhance my own regeneration powers. With his new claws clearly on display the woman in charge of the one people gave an audible groan while glaring at a rather smug looking Emma Frost and said, we will leave him in the X-Men's care for now but we will keep a close eye on him. Colonel Reyes, the military man in the green uniform with medals and pinned to his chest and a funny hat immediately began to protest, Director Cooper you can't. Unfortunately it seemed this Director Cooper wasn't in the mood to take shit from any of her subordinates and immediately cut him of with a final, that will be all Colonel. The colonel bit back a sigh of frustration before replying, yes ma'am, 
Let's pack it up people, with that done. He marched off and began giving orders to the other one personnel. Meanwhile Scott Summer codenamed Cyclops who was not only leader of the X-Men but alongside Emma Frost were the headmaster and headmistress of the Xavier Institute for Higher Learning walked up to him to speak of his future no doubt. VVV Scott Summers leader of the X-Men, representative of Mutantkind and headmaster of the Xavier's Institute for Higher Learning walked up the boy who was now officially a ward of the X-Men, to say that he found this Naruto Uzumaki fascinating was an understatement. For one, the more his lover Emma Frost learned about the kid the more excited she seemed to get and Scott did not need telepathy to tell that Emma wanted Naruto enrolled in their school, for another X-23 seemed just as fascinated with this boy who from what information Emma had pulled out of Laura and Julian's minds and then shared with him was due to him hinting at having a past much like Laura's and turning out a lot more human. Then there was the fact that he was from another universe where his people were similar to mutants but supposedly a bit more advanced which made even him curious, if this boy was the next step in mutant evolution perhaps in his genetic code there was an answer or a miracle of some kind that could bring hope to mutantkind and prevent its extinction, he would have Beast look into it. Scott was also interested in seeing how skilled the kid was in a fight, had already seen with Emma's help the plethora of skills had displayed in front of Laura, Cecily and Hellion. If the kid was half and as skilled as he believed him to be then he would be a badly needed resource in the dark days to come, which was why Scott was most determined to recruit the kid. Naruto was it, upon receiving a nod from the boy in question Scott declared, well it's nice to finally meet you, Laura and Emma have both said some nice things about you in front of a lot of important people and I wanted to meet the man himself and get my own measure. The young man merely cocked his head sideways and asked, are you Emma's lover? Uh, yeah. I suppose it's no secret that we are in a relationship, why do you ask? The question had caught Cyclops flat-footed with how it came out of nowhere but his reply made Emma Beam who was not so secretly listening in from where she was in a very different conversation with Laura and Cecily, being in a relationship with a telepath meant sharing headspace with one. Curiosity, her eyes soften every time she looks at you and she smiles a bit more when she looks or talks to you than with just about everyone here. Your tells on the other hand are a bit more obvious, Naruto replied in an almost clinical tone as he spouted his observations, though he declined to elaborate on Scott's tells as he called them. Slightly taken aback by the ninja from another universe Scott quickly tried to get things back on track, oh, um, okay, how about we discuss my love life another time and instead we talk about you for a moment. Naruto seemed to pause for a moment in thought before saying, I apologize for making you uncomfortable Mr. Summers, please go ahead with your questions. I am not uncomfortable with the question itself, just where it was leading to and it was getting way off track, my interests today on the other hand is in you Naruto Uzumaki, I want to know who you are and I want to know what you plan on doing next. Then once you've answered those questions, I have an offer to make, Scott explained. Naruto merely smiled in amusement at this and replied, my name is Naruto Uzumaki, I am 19 years old and a ninja from another universe, as for why I am on your world. It's not by choice and nor is it really important save for the fact that for the time being I am stranded here, so to answer your question on what I plan on doing next, well that's simple enough. First things first, I will secure shelter, clothing and nourishment. Something I can accomplish in 24 hours one way or another, then with the basics secured I will begin gathering information on this world, its math, sciences, technology, religions, economics, social studies and whatever else is necessary to blend in. Once that is done I will look up any information you have about trans-universal travel and any other related topics so I can figure out where my home is and how to get back inevitably, does that satisfy your curiosity? It's impressive that you got it all so figured out already but what if I can offer you my assistance with all that? What if I can give you that shelter, food, clothing and all the information you could dream of, would you take my offer to join me and the X-Men back at our headquarters for the time being? Cause I think we can benefit from your presence as much as you can benefit from ours, Scott said. It really was impressive that that this 18 or 19 year old kid seemed to have his goals figured out already and was so confident he could achieve them when not even three hours ago he was a prisoner of this facility, but then he was a ninja from another universe so who knew what kind of training he had. Laura seems to trust you so yeah, I guess we have a deal then Mr. Summers, Naruto simply replied extending his hand. Taken aback by how quickly the negotiations ended Cyclops shook the extended hand while saying, oh, great. I must confess that I really thought I would have to do a bit more to convince you on my proposition. Naruto merely smiled at him before looking meaningfully in Laura's direction and replying, like I said, I will secure shelter, clothing and nourishment in 24 hours one way or another, this way just allows me to keep a promise while I am at it. Naruto's vision blurred from the tears streaking down his face, the natural sounds of the world around him were dulled to the point of almost being muted to his ear, even physical sensation was gone aside from a mind-numbing cold and the dullest of pressure to represent touch. Naruto felt almost nothing, with almost being the key word. 
Despite his senses being shot to hell and back Naruto wasn't worried, Uzumakis were creatures of emotion and if there was one thing he could still do, it was feel emotions, unfortunately, his heart was filled to the brim with grief for all that he loved as he beheld his home village and its citizens. The sky was choked with acrid smoke for as far as the horizon and possibly beyond that, the surrounding forests of the land of fire were all ablaze, Hokage Mountain, the most prominent symbol of his village was mysteriously missing, all that was left behind of it being a massive crater, as if an almighty god had reached down from the heavens and scooped it up from out of the ground. Everywhere he looked something was going wrong, the buildings and architecture of the village were literally disintegrating before his very eyes, as they were caught in the intense ethereal blaze, animals turned to ashes mid-step and faded into nothingness as tongues of unquenchable white flames spread everywhere, however, it was the people who had the worst fate in his opinion, particularly the civilians. His people, the citizens of Konoha whom had originally grown up hating, then bickering with, then pranking and finally learned to love, all around him, they were turning into piles of pure white ash, that scattered in the wind before his very eyes, no civilians seemed to be safe from the flames as they sought out and almost aggressively leapt from family to family, consuming all in their path. Mothers held their children close in a tight embrace as the white flames enveloped them, fathers watched on in sad resignation as they befell the same fate, any human that the white flames touched slowly turned to ash and then scattered in a non-existent breeze, despite the blaze, no human burned, they simply turned to ashes and ceased to be before Naruto's eyes. The only humans who seemed to be unaffected by this phenomenon were the shinobi and none of them had so far even tried to stop the flames, not even him, behind him Shikamaru Nara stood besides his fiancée Damari, hugging her closely as he gave Naruto a sad smile, Shoji Akamichi and his new girlfriend from Kumo stood together with Sakura Haruno and Ino Yamanaka, their eyes filled with a mix of confidence, resignation and regret. Hanabi Hayuga openly wept in the sleeves of her father Hiyashi's robes while Konohamaru awkwardly tried to comfort her. Jiraiya of the Sanin held his wife the fifth Hokage Tsunade Senju as she cried in his arms, rubbing her back soothingly. Meanwhile the sixth Hokage Kakashi Hitaki barked orders at the various Anbu and Junin as they mobilized further in the heart of the village, for some unknown purpose. Like an observer in his own body Naruto watched all this occurring around him, unable to do a thing about it, his body completely unresponsive to his commands as everything had ever known literally burned around him, then Sasuke Uchiha dropped out of the sky like a vengeful angel, landing silently besides him, his Rinnegan fully active. Proper sounds seemingly decided to return to the world at that exact moment, as Naruto's brother in all but blood said, the Otsutsuki clan are almost here, they've brought an army, are you ready loser? Of course, ya bastard, Naruto heard himself automatically reply with a confident smirk, there was no heat in his words, only affection for his fellow transmigrant, somehow they both knew this would be the last time they'd see each other for a while, quite possibly even forever, Naruto couldn't explain why he was so sure about this but he knew it, they both understood this and they were prepared to live with that. For a second time, Naruto instinctively knew that they had long since said anything that needed to be said to each other, so no more words were needed, not to mention the two strongest ninjas in shinobi history had two very different jobs at the moment, which was why Sasuke merely raised his right fist for a fist bump, a motion that Naruto instantly mimicked with own raised fist and a grin that could only be described as foxy, good luck then brother, make them bleed for me. Im, take care of everyone, was Naruto's only response as Sasuke's Rinnegan flared to life in a purple blaze of power and light, a portal materializing out of the ether before them. There was an impossibly loud bang as the ground beneath Naruto's feet cratered, time slowed to a crawl and the redhead sped up to near relativistic speeds, the distance between where he previously stood and the portal was crossed so fast time itself became an obsolete factor to him, then he leapt into its heart and allowed himself to be swallowed. How long he spent in between dimensions was irrelevant cause time never flowed normally there but before he knew it, Naruto appeared on the other side of the portal, it was Kagaya's ice dimension and it held an army pale-skinned alien gods ready to invade his dying world he would not let that happen. With his Byakugan fully activated and his Tonto drawn, all he could do was grin and do what he did best, draw a line in the sand and kill anything that crossed it, his world was on fire and there was nothing in the universe that would save it from turning to ash, but before the end of this day every world would burn. VVV Naruto woke up with start and promptly fell off of the sofa he had been lying on, looking around in panic, he relaxed when he remembered exactly where he was and why he was there, he was currently in Miz, Emma Frost's office where with a bit of her psychic help, had been reliving one of his memories. To be specific, it was his last memory of the elemental nations before arriving on earth and waking up in the clutches of the Weapon X program, more alarmingly though, it was the only memory he had of his time between the aftermath of the fourth shinobi world war and his arrival here, everything else was simply gone and even a psychic as powerful as Emma couldn't help recover his missing memories. Wiping the tears from the corners of his eyes, 
A side effect from the dream, trance. He focused on the owner of said office sitting in a comfortable chair reading a rather popular orange book from the Elemental Nations. Naruto didn't miss the slight tug at her lips as she placed the Icha Icha Paradise book down and gave him a once over, pretending to have not noticed his tears. Emma Frost was obviously amused but not by his tears, rather she found amusement in how had fallen off the sofa, giving him a warm and supportive smile Emma asked, am I correct in assuming you were slightly more successful today? Indeed, Ms. Frost, he replied, it was all Naruto could come up with in that moment. The psychic trances or dream walks that Emma put him under. Always took a lot out of him when he was done so he had to take a moment to recover. It apparently had something to do with chakra not meshing very well with psychic energy as it existed on earth, this was according to her teammate Drive, Henry McCoy aka Beast, who was the X-Men's resident super genius, and yes, Naruto was more than surprised that there was a level of intelligence even beyond genius but there really wasn't any other word that could describe people like Reed Richards, Tony Stark, Hank Pym, Bruce Banner and Henry McCoy to name a few. Apparently the spiritual, mental energy component of chakra and by extension all yin natured chakra as Naruto put, were all a form of psychic energy, however it was also different from the psychic energy native to their earth due to it not only being tied to Naruto's life force and his soul but also being born from chakra itself, a weaponized form of life force, in short the two were similar but not quite the same, siblings even, for lack of a better term. However it was that same incompatibility that gave Naruto a natural resistance to all psychics. He wasn't immune to psychic attacks, he just happened to be able to instantly notice such attacks and brush them off with relative ease before any damage could even be done, and in the off chance that a telepath of sufficient power managed to get into his head, it was quite literally an uphill battle all the way, seeing as his head and by extension his whole body was saturated with chakra, in short, Naruto was extremely resistant to all psychic attacks, at least on the human, mutant level. This wasn't even taking into account the fact that Naruto and by extension any shinobi capable of even using shadow clones did not even think like humans. That's not to say that they did not have human thoughts but rather their natural ability to process information itself was not only beyond human but in many ways not human. Ignoring the fact that one full half of chakra was psychic energy, normal humans could not truly multitask and maintain efficiency in whatever activity they were performing. Efficiency always went down the moment any amount of focus was prioritized on one activity over the other. Shinobi on the other hand weren't so limited. From carefully selected memories Naruto had shared, Emma had come to the conclusion that a shinobi's brain was hardwired and helped along by chakra-induced mutations to handle massive amounts of information, something that was seen most prominently when they absorbed all the information returned from a dispelled shadow clone, even receiving the sensory information of one dispelled clone would knock out a normal human, with greater risks being created the longer the clone remained active. Two dispelled shadow clones would do anything from put a human into a minor coma to leaving them brain dead, three was an automatic death sentence, yet the average junin could easily process information from upwards of twenty dispelled clones, every single feeling, thought and emotion that the clone had while alive was transferred back to the original at the same time, allowing them to experience every single clone's life almost simultaneously. Even if it was just for a moment, to a normal human or a non-psychic mutant, Experiencing the return of all that information after having your clone dispelled would be like having every single neuron in your brain firing at the same time, repeatedly and at a ridiculously fast pace, your brain would feel like it was on fire and that would be from a single clone, thus shinobi in general did not think like humans. God forbid a monster like Naruto, and she meant that in the nicest way possible, for whom it took upwards of 2000 clones simultaneously dispelling for him to even get a headache, which his regeneration took care of in a second flat, even as she was having this session with him. Hundreds of Naruto's clones had raided Drive, McCoy's library and were simply soaking in all the information relevant to this world like a sponge, it was quite frankly terrifying. Still, she had a job to do, anything new, it was mostly the same. Naruto responded as he began to describe memory which had been getting clearer and clearer upon each revisiting. The world burning and the shinobi forces making no moves to stop the fires or save the civilians for some reason. Then my brother showed up and opened a portal to another dimension that should have been covered in ice and snow, yet I think it might be been burning, unfortunately I don't remember seeing anything despite the fact that my Baikugan was active the whole time, all I do know is that I was going to fight a group of alien godlike beings known as the Otsutsuki clan who wanted to invade my world for some reason, that's about all I got. Well, you are remembering more and more details each time we do this mister. Uzumaki, unfortunately, I think I am at the limits of all the psychic assistance I can give you. The psychic element of your powers is extremely efficient at keeping telepaths out of your head and interfering whenever one of us successfully gets in. It's honestly a pain in the ass, Emma complained with an exasperated sigh before adding, which is why as soon as he gets back I am going to have to surrender you to the expertise of Professor Charles Xavier, 
The man who built this school and created the X-Men, he is the most powerful telepath on the planet and if anyone can help you with your forgotten memories, it's him. Nodding in acceptance, although with a clear tinge of reluctance in his body language Naruto replied professionally, I understand, and thank you Ms. Frost, I really appreciate all you've done for me. Emma said nothing, instead choosing to simply nod her head once. Technically this meeting was over, Shed done what had asked for and he was free to go. However Naruto was still a little disoriented from the psychic trance, mind walk and while he could walk out of there on his own power even now, Emma knew that he would prefer to wait a few minutes, and with this being the seventh meeting they had had so far, he was becoming something similar to a friend to her, which made this the perfect opportunity to ask a few personal questions, so how are you doing with all this? About as good as can be expected, considering my last memory of home is of the whole world on fire, my people turning to ash, my friends and family leaving for the unknown and myself fighting off an alien invasion, of course, Shed forgotten how grouchy Naruto could be when he came out of his memories, there was something of a sarcastic edge to his voice as he responded but she knew he didn't mean it, he was just hoping desperately that it would hide the anguish he felt inside. Emma wasn't fooled by this and they both knew it, they'd performed this little dance every day for a week so she knew how much this bothered him, in that time she had come to respect Naruto as person immensely and learned to be patient with him, so instead of trying to force answers out of him she changed her angle of questioning and simply asked, how about life here on earth? How are you handling that? anything particular you were enjoying. Naruto let out a sigh of exasperation at her persistence. He had admitted previously that he admired her stubbornness when it came to questioning him about his feelings but it also pissed him off. Still, just like she respected him, he had come to respect her, however that didn't mean he was just going to freely give her what she wanted, so he replied, I was trained to adapt to any kind of situation I might find myself in, and believe it or not Ms. Frost, I've been to alternate realities before not something quite as unique and different as this but you get the idea, I believe the earth saying been there, done that covers it, right? Honestly, it's like pulling teeth. Interesting sayings and peculiar adventures aside, this told her nothing about what he really felt at the moment. He might as well have just replied I am fine Ms. Frost for all the difference it would have made, not to mention the fact that he willingly called her Ms. Frost instead of Emma after the official session had ended was another indicator that he was trying to push her away. It was only during the psychic trances that they ever addressed each other formally, afterwards she was always Emma and he was Naruto. Instead of voicing her frustration with the somewhat stable child soldier in front of her she merely smiled and used a few choice words to force an answer out of the boy. It was cruel yes but Naruto needed to open up to someone, he was too dangerous to humanity as a whole to be able to afford not to, not to mention, Emma found herself starting to care about him, even if she didn't want to admit, I suppose it does cover it, still, you are stranded here for the foreseeable future. How does it make you feel that you are here safe and yet you have no idea what kind of situation your people are in? I am worried okay. I don't know the fate of my people or my world so will you quit probing? Naruto instantly snapped at her, an audible growl leaving his throat, he was doing a remarkable job of not turning his aggression against her, but that growl was a warning, if she kept pushing, well. Emma didn't visibly react but she felt relief inside that he had admitted something real to her, relief that she knew that Naruto would pick up on, whoever thought that a therapy session, impromptu or not between an empath and telepath would ever be good idea needed to be shot, not that this was really a therapy session but whatever, it didn't change the fact that he needed to hear this, Naruto, you need to open up and speak to someone. They both knew she wasn't just talking about starting a conversation or being social with others. Naruto could do that easily, in his sleep even, he was surprisingly good at making friends for someone who would have no qualms with killing those very same friends if he had to, he wasn't a sociopath or anything but if this Itachi Uchiha was willing to kill his whole family in one night then there wasn't much she believed that would stop Naruto from murdering all of them under the right circumstances, especially since he had yet to truly connect to anyone. As if to mock that notion Naruto's entire demeanor changed to a less aggressive and almost friendly one as he said to her with a wink, I got you, don't I? Cheeky bugger, no, I mean someone you really trust. With me you are merely asking for some psychic help and you are only doing that cause your own methods failed to provide answers. With me, you are cordial, friendly even but we both know you'd never truly let me close, at least not so soon, it kind of stung to admit it after a week of getting to the know the man, especially since she knew exactly who he would let in and how easily Naruto would open up to her, but she really liked the kid, and it was one of the few things that she shared in common with Logan and his clone. I've shown you parts of my history, shinobi secrets that I wouldn't even trust other shinobi from my world with. He responded, and it was true. Some of the things Shed been shown by him as he guided her through his mindscape were utterly amazing, utterly horrifying or some combination of both, and almost always secretive, yet even so, she knew he didn't trust her or anyone else at the Xavier Institute for Higher Learning, or rather, he didn't trust anyone enough to share his emotional burdens with them, not really. 
Logan, Beast, herself and X-23 were the closest things to real friends he had here and X-23 had been kept away from him since they left the Weapon X facility. Though Naruto had expressed interest in getting to know Psylocke but whether that was because Elizabeth Braddock was a ninja or because Naruto Uzumaki could be a bit of pervert when he put his mind to it was up in the air. Honestly, some of things Jiraiya of the Sanin and Kakashi Hitaki had had him do were, well, she literally had no words to describe them, not that she didn't appreciate their efforts, or she wouldn't have been enjoying the Icha Icha series in her lounge chair, that man is a talented writer, wherever he is. But that was besides the point, the point being, Emma didn't blame Naruto for his reluctance to trust nor did she try and pry his secrets out of him, not that she could do so without him noticing and simply ending her in some gory fashion, everyone had secrets and everyone was entitled to their secrets, Naruto had already shown them a remarkable amount of trust by showing her and by extension the X-Men as much as he already had. The fact that the memories he had shown excluded anything that they might find useful or could be used against his people. Was besides the point, Shuri had only shown her the interior of the Shinobi Academy, Hokage Tower, Hokage Mountain, a view of Konoha from the top of the fourth Hokage's stone head, the Valley of the End, Tanzaku Gai, the surrounding forests of the Land of Fire and a hundred other miscellaneous things each one from a position that hid any classified shinobi activities, he never showed shinobi military secrets, advanced team formations, shinobi training, shinobi equipment, etc. Hell, Emma knew in her heart he would literally rather die than expose any of his people's weaknesses, Naruto had accommodatingly explained this fierce protectiveness that all of his people shared, with a single phrase, he called it the will of fire and declared that every single Konoha citizen had it. Naruto had even taken the time to show her that the depths of their protectiveness for one another was so great that his people would die to keep the secrets of even someone they hated from outsiders. Even he had claimed that had been a victim of unjust public hatred at one point in his life, yet when an outside force attacked his village looking for him, many of the shinobi literally died taking the secret of his location to the grave despite the fact that they did not at all like him, it was cause of this philosophy that the idea of betraying the village was so anathema to his people. In the 100 years since the founding of the village, Less than 10 people had ever betrayed it and only 3 of those could be considered truly successful at that due to the hyper-competent Anbu Black Ops program. Those terrifying monsters would hunt you down to the ends of the earth, behead you and then destroy every inch of your body to keep enemies from discovering its secrets, if you ever tried, on top of that, one of those 3 traitors, wasn't even an actual traitor but a hero who stopped a civil war before it started by slaughtering his clan and allowed himself to label the traitor so as to spy on a very dangerous upcoming terrorist organization. You could get away with betraying an individual from the village. Murder them even, and though you would probably be jailed for it or executed. Such an action would still be considered something personal between two individuals, betray the village and every single person who calls Konoha home would instantly become your enemy, and you could bet that they'd do their damn best to kill you at every chance they got till the day you die, you'd have to be on the run for the rest of your life, constantly looking over your shoulders the whole time, in short, Konoha didn't tolerate traitors. Which was why Naruto was having such a hard time with the memory shed helped him recover, the will of fire was so deeply imbued in him and his fellow Konoha ninjas that he couldn't accept the idea that they would all just stand aside and watch the civilian citizens of his village burn, he couldn't accept that not even one ninja, himself included, was willing to lift a finger to save a life, it just wasn't how Konoha ninjas worked. So with his last memory being of his world on fire, ninjas going off to gather somewhere unknown in an army of Otsutsuki in another dimension, that he personally fought, was it any surprise that Naruto was near manic in his desire to get back home quickly and figure out what the hell was going on, oh, when in view of others he pretended to be confident and unflappable, but Emma knew the truth, Shed been inside his head after all. Returning to the conversation she replied, true, but then I can't exactly use those secrets or blab them to any enemy from your world to use them, they're completely useless on this earth, furthermore, while you trusted me with those secrets, you don't actually trust me, not really, that's why I am saying find someone you can truly confide in at least until you trust me enough to really talk to me, otherwise, you will burn yourself out and your worries will destroy you. Sighing tiredly Naruto rose to his feet and said with a tone of finality, it's late and I am tired Ms. Frost, I am going to rest now so we can pick this up some other time. Fine, just think about what I said, Emma said, to which Naruto nodded and then made his way to the door to leave, she didn't push because he genuinely was considering her words and had gotten her point, however Naruto did surprise her when before he was even halfway out the door, he suddenly paused mid-stride and spoke up once more. It's not that I don't trust you Emma, my problem has always been that I trusted too easily, and I have been betrayed countless times cause of it, thus, Naruto Uzumaki must not trust you or anybody else easily, things generally turn out better for everyone that way, Naruto paused for a moment after saying this, as if to choose his next words carefully and then finally added, however, when I truly give my trust, 
I give it completely and those who betray my trust, I destroy completely. With his peace said, Naruto walked out and closed the door behind him, leaving Emma Frost to sigh tiredly at his threat, promise, explanation of his trust issues, internally she mused, that's right, Naruto was the commander of those Anbu monsters. VVV it had been one week since the incident at the Weapon X facility where she rescued him, a full week since Laura Kinney last saw Naruto Uzumaki, the fascinating, scarlet-haired ninja from another universe had been locked away in an isolated room within Drive, Henry McCoy's lab for testing. Laura had no idea why Naruto would agree to this, after what had just been through but she hadn't been able to ask cause she wasn't allowed to see him. Cyclops had made some bullshit excuse about how he might be carrying an unknown contagion and that they couldn't risk her and the others catching. Laura's response was to level him with an incredulous look upon hearing that and bluntly ask if he was an idiot. Even Emma had face palmed at the leader of the X-Men's sad sad lie. As Wolverine's genetic clone and someone who shared his mutant powers. Laura literally couldn't get sick to begin with, barring extraordinarily special circumstances, not to mention, any contagion or alien pathogen Naruto might have carried would have already have been exposed to Hellion and Mercury immune systems if any of Scott's crap had been true, yet, Laura and her teammates were neither sick nor had they undergone any form of quarantine, further illustrating that the whole excuse was pure bullshit. But even then, Laura had been denied access to Drive, McCoy's lab, of course she tried breaking into it on three separate occasions just to check up on Naruto but the X-Men stationed a hidden guard outside of Naruto's room every night, the first and third time she had tried break, it was her father, Wolverine who had been waiting for her in the shadows, the second time she had gotten caught, had been by the ninja telepath, Psylocke. Neither times had been fun, thanks to the ton lashing Shed received afterwards. And after the third time, Logan had let her off with a stern warning to not try again or there would be real consequences the next time. However, inheriting her progenitor's stubbornness, Laura had only agreed to stop trying after Beast had explained a couple things to her, like, while Cyclops' explanations was pure crap, Naruto had willingly agreed to be quarantined and the actual reasons for it were very important, though Drive, McCoy still kept silent about why Naruto agreed to this or what they were doing with him, he had volunteered to say hi to Naruto on her behalf. In the end, that past week had proven to be easily one of the most frustrating weeks of her life, so it was no surprise that Laura was rather keen to see Naruto once again and talk to him about their shared circumstances now that he had been released from quarantine, better yet, he would be living in one of the rooms in boys dormitory from now on, a location she could easily access and infiltrate whenever she pleased. From their conversation in the Weapon X facility, Naruto seemed to understand the kind of things that she was going through in a way that no one here other than Logan ever could, the fact that he was really interesting in his own ways, also motivated her to see, on the other hand, Laura was getting tired of Hellion's clinginess and the way he was speaking out against Naruto lately. Ever since they had rescued Cecily and Naruto, Julian had been acting, irrational was the only word she could think of, he was constantly trying to act like he was more capable than he actually was, had also taken to speaking about Naruto in a way that while true, was worded to make the red-headed ninja look bad, the fact that the ninja in question wasn't even there to defend himself pissed her off. It was true that Naruto had indeed created a bomb out of his unique energies and detonated in a move that would seem reckless and inconsiderate to human life. But, no one had died and if Naruto had wanted to kill everyone, he could have done so easily, furthermore, words could never do his actions any real justice, it was one of those things that you had to be there to truly understand the situation they had been in, and Naruto's action were not necessarily wrong, reckless maybe but not wrong, after all his energy bomb did take out the side jammers and allow the X-Men and O-N-E to find them. If Naruto had wanted the enemy dead, they simply would have been, Laura had been able to see that much in his eyes at the time, plus, the guy had just come out of cryostasis at the time and his mental faculties were not all there, something that was proven by the fact that the first thing he did upon awakening was call her beautiful almost as soon as he laid eyes on her, had obviously been speaking without thinking even if she found that the compliment made her feel strangely warm inside. In the end it seemed like Hellion was reverting back to the attitude he had once had, when she first met him just after M day, it was disappointing cause she honestly believed Julian Keller was better than that and could be so much more. Naruto on the other hand was a person of great interest to her and tonight was the first night had been allowed to sleep in a normal room without some freakishly competent bodyguard keeping all visitors away from him. Outside of his quarantine, Naruto would be living in the boys dormitory from now onward. Eating and freely interacting with anyone he chose to at the school. And it was cause of this that she had snuck out from the girls dormitory on the opposite wing of the mansion and was now breaking into his room. Logan had even been surprisingly accommodating and given her Naruto's room number while muttering something about it's always the redheads that get us isn't it, Laura had no idea what that meant but she wasn't going turn down her father, brother, progenitor's help when it was given freely, 
Knowing exactly which room Naruto called his own was slightly easier than taking the two minutes max it would take for her pinpoint his room by smell, not that she hadn't done so anyway. Using her memory of the layout of the building and the fact that his room was on the second floor. Laura snuck outside the mansion, dodged three patrols of O. N. E. and senior X-Men personnel before scaling the outside walls to his window and silently opening, then closing it behind her without waking him. It was a feat well beyond anything that any of her fellow teenage mutants could ever replicate, even many of the full-fledged X-Men would fail, including that reptilian mutant Anoel who could stick to walls like a gecko and camouflage himself. It was all a testament to her training as an assassin and a lifetime of living in the shadows. A single visual sweep of her the room picked out Naruto's form in his bed, lightly snoring with a peaceful expression on his face and no surveillance equipment of any sort. A sniff of the air confirmed much the same, so it was it was no surprise that as the infiltrator began her approach of Naruto's bed to better observe her target, she was completely startled by said target's voice coming from above her. That's some impressive stealth you're showing there Laura, if I didn't know better, I'd have assumed you were here to either kill me or prank me, but I do, don't I? As Naruto spoke up, his bright Cheshire grin faded into view followed by the rest of his body and scent, from where she had previously assumed was an empty spot on the ceiling. The redhead was casually laying on the ceiling with his arms folded behind his head, in complete defiance of gravity, he had been using some kind of cloaking power to hide his real self from Laura's senses, she realized, it explained why she hadn't seen, heard or smelled the real him when she originally scanned the room and she was a damn good tracker, I wonder how he fooled my senses so thoroughly. Looking back to his bed Laura noted the similarities between Naruto and his decoy, the other Naruto in the bed smelled like him, was lightly drooling, had a heartbeat, looked like him, caused the right amount of depression and to surface the mattress for someone Naruto's size and weight, showed the rapid eye movement of someone dreaming and made the other such micro movements indicative of someone in deep sleep, to all her senses, the thing in the bed was alive and it was Naruto. There were many many more signs present that would convince her and likely anyone else that she was looking at Naruto Uzumaki sleeping in his own bed, yet, looking back up to the ceiling, there the scarlet haired ninja was grinning back at her, calmly laying on the ceiling as if gravity was a mere suggestion to him, the only thing she could ask at that point was, how? It's another one of my powers, as if to prove that point the Naruto on the ceiling made a strange gesture with his left hand and the copy in his bed burst into a cloud of smoke, simply ceasing to be. Laura blinked in confusion as every trace of the Naruto copy who had been in that bed simply stopped existing, even his scent that had covered the whole room simply vanished as if it had never been there and something told Laura that every trace of that Naruto's DNA, including hair follicles and dead skin cells was now gone, she trusted her instincts. I don't need much sleep and this is the best way to draw out and observe anyone with ill intent towards me, in the lab I had my guard up the whole time, plus no one except you was willing to tangle with Wolverine or Psylocke, thanks for trying by the way, it was really entertaining to watch, you were an amazingly good fighter, Naruto explained and then complimented with a cheeriness that made Laura blush. No problem, Laura replied while trying to fight down her blush and the embarrassment she felt at the fact that he knew about her nightly activities that week, in hindsight, it was pretty obvious that he must have seen her little scuffle with her father and Psylocke. Naruto had already said that he could sense life signs and he had told her that his left eye could see through walls, not so innocently she thought, I wonder what else he uses that eye to spy on. Now though, Naruto continued, not paying the slightest attention to her embarrassment. Anyone coming for me would naturally assume I'd let my guard down on my first night out of drive. McCoy's lab, in which case, if such a person intended to make a move on me, then tonight is naturally the perfect time to strike. It's for this reason that I set up a trap in anticipation of capturing whoever tried to prank or kill me, anyone that came for me would strike my decoy while I surprised them from above, that was the plan anyway, I didn't think the first person to sneak into my room would be you. Laura's heart seemed to sink with each word out of the ninja's mouth, she didn't want Naruto to think she was out to kill him or something, yet he had been expecting something exactly like that and prepared a trap just in case, a trap she had walked right into, there were only so many ways he could have interpreted that. Luckily for her Naruto sensed her inner conflict and decided to clarify things, relax Laura, I already know you have no ill intentions towards me and one of the individuals this trap was created for just so happened to be Kurt Wagner, a fellow prankster, I intend him absolutely no harm whatsoever, well, aside from his dignity that is. She nodded in understanding as relief poured through her entire being at the fact that she had avoided a misunderstanding with Naruto, only for her to blush again when she turned to look back at Naruto and found his face inches from hers. He had alighted from the roof so softly that her enhanced hearing had not picked up any sound whatsoever and was now standing in such close proximity to her as to call it intimate. GYK. A strangled kind of sound left her throat as she took two steps backwards in rapid succession while thinking, too close, too close, what a, the thought didn't complete itself for she had no words to fill the blank space in her mind nor did she feel any genuine annoyance at the ninja. 
As if nothing had happened Naruto continued saying, Now while I sincerely doubt you are here to prank me or fight me, and I wouldn't mind sparring with you or having a prank war, I'd still like to know what I can do for you this evening. I, ah, I didn't think you would be awake so I was just going to check on you, Laura said with an increasingly sheepish look, knowing exactly how that sentence could be interpreted, neither Julian, Soraya or any other members of her team had been happy when she had spent a night observing them, they called it stalking. A mischievous grin adorned Naruto's face for a split second that had X-23 had more experience with humans and more specifically pranksters, would have worried her, with a suddenly stern face and a very serious tone Naruto said, oh, so you merely intended to watch me all night as I slept, his tone suggested that this wasn't a question. Oh what could she say to that? Laura knew about common sense and the things normal people called common decencies but just because she knew of these things didn't mean she really observed them, they were the kinds of things normal people did, the rules normal people followed, she was a killer, so yeah, she fully intended to watch Naruto Uzumaki in his sleep until she either got bored, Naruto began to stir or the sun came up. She hadn't really put any thought into what her actions would look like to someone else until just now, and now that Shed thought about it, while she normally didn't care about anyone's opinions, she really wished she had thought this whole thing through before coming here, this was something she was regretting, and she didn't even know why. Thankfully at that exact moment, Naruto's serious face broke into a wide grin as he let out a snort of amusement, followed by a hearty chuckle and said, I am just messing with you Laura, something like that doesn't bother me at all, hell, one of my best friends used to do it all the time when we were kids, plus, it'd be kind of hypocritical of me to judge you for stalking me when my left eye gives me localized visual omniscience. Jerk, the word automatically popped up in her head to Laura's surprise, cause while she had used the word before it wasn't exactly something that was part of her regular vocabulary, she ignored it for now, in favor of responding. I am. Laura paused for a moment as she thought of what she wanted to say to best describe her current feeling. Naruto wasn't angry at her but rather amused and had been faking it well enough that Shed bought. She didn't particularly like the deception, in fact she was kind of pissed at him for it but she was also extremely relieved for it, relieved he wasn't angry, yes, that's what she was feeling, I am relieved, you are much better acclimatized to acting human and dealing with emotions, you even joke like them, I wish to be like that, to be like you and Wolverine, you are weapons but you are also human, I want that. Naruto face scrunched up in a frown at her words, as if he didn't like what she was saying before he replied, you are just as human as me and Wolverine, Laura and way better than I was when my older brother first found me, the Weapon X facility just taught you to bury those feeling and instincts, I will help you to bring them out again but before that you need to understand something about me and Logan. What's that? Laura replied feeling curious, it seemed like Naruto had some kind of insight into her father and himself that she was yet unaware of, from the way he worded that statement. That monster, that killer lurking deep down inside that could butcher thousands of innocents without even blinking, it's still there, it's just suppressed for now and it will never go away. Laura felt something akin to despair fill her heart, she was dangerous, she knew this, to her, the idea that she was a risk to every living thing around her was something as undeniably basic as breathing, what with the trigger scent hanging over her head like a sword of Damocles. However seeing Naruto act so human right now, seeing Logan do so on multiple occasions before today, Laura had come to believe that she could put aside her fear, believe that she could somehow overcome the side of her that was an animal, a butcher, an unstoppable killer, but it sounded like Naruto was telling her she couldn't. So she argued, but Wolverine's always telling me to use non-lethal takedowns and you don't seem particularly bloodthirsty. Naruto sighed as he walked past her to his bed and fell onto it with his back. He patted a spot next to him, indicating she should join him to which she did but he remained silent. For a full minute he seemed to be lost in his thoughts before he said. I don't know enough about Wolverine to say whether it's the same for him. But whenever I get into a serious fight, you would probably be able to see it for yourself, I tend to become more and more silent as well as ruthlessly efficient the longer a fight goes on, provided of course, I think I am up against a worthy opponent, in the end, if the fight lasts long enough, I'd probably do something that outside of combat normally wouldn't even occur to me of doing in a fight, holding back also becomes, hard, I am sorry, that explanation was horrible. Perhaps to anyone else that explanation would have been terrible but Laura felt like she could make sense of what he was saying, no, no I think I kind of understand, I've seen old videos of Logan going into berserker rages, and even now that he's got that handled something has always bothered me, why is it that despite the fact that he knows more than a hundred different martial arts styles, Logan still prefers to use his claws and fight the way he fights? It's like he is trying to express a darker part of himself using his claws or something. That's exactly it Laura, Naruto said with a rather serious look in his visible amethyst eye. So make no mistake, I can't fix you and magically turn you into something you are not, something we are not, you, me, Logan and others like us we're all killers, we've just learned that there is a better way to live, 
What I can do however and what I intend to do from the moment we met, is show you that even if we are killers and monsters, we can also be just as human as everyone else, and as for our dark sides, no one ever said that we couldn't use them for the of good of the world. Laura weighed those words in her head before giving a nod. There was more to them than she currently fully understood. She could perceive that much, would her other side come to express itself in the way she fought much like Naruto and Logan's. And if so what would that look like, she knew she was far more ruthless and lethal when under the effects of the trigger scent but she also had no memory what she did when she was like, all she knew was that even Kimura, one of the most terrifying and heartless monsters she had ever met was scared of her when she was under the influence of the trigger scent, what did that say about her and did she really want to bring that out of her? She needed more information before she could come to any conclusion and it necessitated her asking certain extremely personal question, then praying Naruto answered instead kicking her out, hesitantly she asked, how did they break you? Naruto didn't answer immediately but he lost the soft smile had been wearing up until that moment. Thankfully he wasn't angry at her or if he was, he at the very least didn't show it. Eventually he replied, my mom and dad died on the same day I was born so my early years were spent in an orphanage, however, due to certain circumstances that occurred on the day I was born that I don't want to get into right now, I was reviled by the citizens of my home village, it wasn't something that was my fault. I had no control over it and yet I was hated for it much like mutants are hated by humans for having one extra gene. Was it the whisker marks on your cheeks? They make you look feral, Laura asked, quickly explaining her reasoning. Shed Long since noted that Naruto had longer than normal canines and enhanced senses. The whisker marks on each of his cheeks also hinted at some kind of possible animal heritage, with him being from another universe anything was possible, perhaps people were not as tolerant of those with animal features there as here on earth. A strangled sound that seemed like a cross between a choke, a coffin laugh forced its way out of Naruto's mouth as his face did something funny, as if undecided on what expression it should settle on, finally it settled on disbelief and amusement. Naruto was so caught off guard by her comment that he chuckled in disbelief before shaking his head and replying. No, the average person on my homeworld has far more diverse genetic traits than the average human on earth. Something like my whisker marks wouldn't even make people blink in surprise in my homeland. I might eventually tell you what it was that caused this hatred someday but it's still a military secret and it's not even that important to the story I am telling you right now, the important part was that I was hated and I didn't know why at the time, most people reacted to me in one of two ways, either I was persecuted by anyone and everyone nearby. Or? Laura asked, she did not like where this was going, obviously Naruto was similar to her and had had a rough life but this sounded like he was still a toddler when people began persecuting her, Laura had at least had her mother to shelter her until she was nearing the prepubescent stage. Or, I was ignored and ostracized by those around me. In other words, I either received negative attention and potentially a beating or no attention at all. Neither option was good for the mental health of a growing three-year-old child. Naruto said a little sadly before adding, for the most part everyone at the orphanage simply pretended I didn't exist. Unless to make sure I had my meals which were never filling enough. I was literally kept away from the other kids given chores to keep me busy and never given a hand when I needed it, unless withholding help would actually harm me in some way, allowing me to come to physical harm was a big no no cause the ninjas had big plans for my future, anyway, one cold winter evening when I was just 3 years old I screwed up one of my chores in a big way, big enough that the matron of the orphanage decided to throw me out of the orphanage for the night. When you were just 3 years old, Laura's face bore an aghast expression before her eyes lit up with a burning fury that startled even him, as she scowled while coldly saying, I would like to meet this woman and flay the skin off her bones with my claws. Suddenly smiling Naruto snapped his fingers at her and said, that, that right there is good, threats of violence aside, a normal human would react angrily to the knowledge that a child was subjected to something even as mild as that. Laura could have sworn she heard him add under his breath at least on this earth but maybe she was just imagining things. Ignoring everything else he said, Laura latched on the one thing that stood out and demanded, you call that mild? Sure she had been through things infinitely more severe than that, just not at the age of three, even the Weapon X program wouldn't risk her life like that, especially when her mutant ability hadn't kicked in at that age. Naruto simply nodded as the mood from his earlier outburst became solemn again, with a sigh that made it clear he really wasn't that into recounting his past he said, compared to the hell you and I have been through, a night in the snow was mild punishment, not that I spent more than an hour locked out that night, no, my fate was something far worse, that situation was nothing more than the perfect opportunity for a root retrieval team to pick me up. Laura could practically feel the all capital letters in that word and guessed that it was likely a shady spy organization similar to SHIELD, so for confirmation she asked, what's root? Again Naruto's face did something funny but a little different this time upon hearing the question, it was as if his face was purposely struggling to keep how much he disliked root from showing in his expression, 
He wasn't succeeding very much at it and Laura found it rather amusing but then she'd probably have a hard time hiding her feeling about the Weapon X facility if she was asked. Eventually Naruto replied, On my world, ninjas are the soldiers and guardians of the country more often than the assassins and thieves they seem to be on earth. When we are not doing things related to national security, the village hires us out like mercenaries for a price, clients present missions to the village, which charges a fee dependent on the difficulty of the mission and allocates a team of ninjas of appropriate skill level to successfully complete said mission. These missions can range from something as mundane as babysitting and dog walking to something worthy of an earth spy novel, like the assassination of a high profile target and destabilizing another nation's government. That said, the vast majority of the average ninja's duties revolve around things more in line with acting as a protection detail, bandit elimination, border patrol, policing cities and towns, manning observation stations, tracking down and rescuing kidnapping victims, the annihilation of drug and slavery rings, etc etc. Things in line with what you'd expect from a soldier or a police officer. It sounded a lot more complicated than just things that a soldier or a police officer do. In fact just the list of things head mentioned had duties that every single three-lettered federal organization in America covered, and all of them were taken care of by regular shinobi, which meant Root had a different function, I am guessing then that Root was a ninja organization that handled the darker things like assassinations then. No, regular Anbu Black Ops, our ninja special forces units covered stuff like that. Root on the other hand, Root was much much worse, they did the things that even the Black Ops wouldn't touch with a 50 foot pole. Things so inhuman and unthinkable that ninjas from regular Anbu and the mainstream forces would try and kill them for if their secrets ever got out, they believed that their job was to do the, the unthinkable in the shadows so that the rest of my village and by extension my nation wouldn't have to, often they operated outside of the Hokage, our military leader's purview, answering only to a man named Danzo Shimura, the Hokage's rival. And they took you to become one of them, she guessed but surprisingly Naruto shook his head in denial. My father was the previous Hokage so they couldn't just take me out of the limelight for long without drawing attention to the shadows they operated in. Attention no one wanted, no, because I was just a three year old, they believed that if they influenced the way I thought from such an early age, they would be better able to control me later down the road, they succeeded too, or at least partially, Naruto admitted, he clearly didn't like Root but he also had a strange pride or was it respect when he talked of his experience with them, it didn't make sense to her but what it did do, was make Lori even more curious about Naruto. What did they do to you? It was perhaps insensitive to ask such a question in that way but Laura believed she was beginning to understand Naruto a bit better, where a somewhat normal person like Nariko would have been offended by her tone, her question and the timing, Naruto didn't seem to care all that much, more importantly, she felt like she was beginning to grasp, something, some kind of insight, the more Naruto talked about his life, so she wasn't even thinking of being tactful. They gave me the thing I craved most at that time of my life. Positive attention, it was such an alien experience to me back then, I had no allies and I utterly lacked any understanding of anything, so I was drawn to it, like a moth to a flame. Naruto confessed. Everyone else insulted me and degraded me or outright ignored me so a simple act of kindness went a very long way to gaining my trust, before I knew it, I was beginning to trust these people and believe them, which quickly turned into me believing in them and their ways. Indoctrination, she thought, effective too, if things were going in the direction she believed them to be going. Children were naturally dependent on adults and so far everyone in his life at that age had been anything but dependable, so the first sign of affection from someone would have naturally made him trust them. Continuing his story Naruto said, they kept me nice and warm that first night. Gave me a nice meal and a bed to rest in before delivering me to orphanage early in the morning just as the matron came to let me in. However, after that day they visited me every night for a whole year. Little by little, showing me less and less positive attention, while convincing me to give up my desire for it, they convinced me that my emotions were not necessary, then they convinced me to let my dreams and desires, things natural to a three year old, fade into nothing, then they showed me the power of chakra, within a year, I had the mind of a killer and some basic training, that would years later become the foundation of my ninja prowess. They were subtle, Laura commented, her mind was still going through everything that had been said, and she just knew there was so much more to the story that had been left unsaid. Indeed they were, from my point of view, I wasn't manipulated into that life. I wanted it, as far as I was concerned, I sacrificed all those things willingly and truly wanted to be become a killer. And with the completion of my indoctrination route began to teach me things, arming me with the tools I would need to be that killer, they taught me how to read, write and count, how to access my chakra, to sneak around successfully, to be invisible to everyone around me, including fully trained and extremely paranoid ninjas and finally to kill with ease. My training would have gone on longer but then my future best friend turned 4 years old and got herself kidnapped. This last part was surprising for Laura. Naruto had a best friend? 
the Weapon X program didn't allow for friendships or any other kinds of attachments and from what Shed got from this story so far, Root was Naruto's world's equivalent of Weapon X, so how did he have any attachments as significant as a best friend, that would no doubt be answered as the story progressed so Laura asked, what happened? Root allowed Hanada Hayuga, the Hayuga clan heiress to be kidnapped by an enemy ninja as a test for me, they manipulated things so that the kidnapper's only safe way out of the village was on a path that led straight to me, my job was to kill him, Naruto explained, there was obviously more to the tale, things happening in the background but Naruto neglected mention them. They weren't worried you'd fail, Laura asked, killing an adult ninja had to be tough for a four-year-old, even if said four-year-old was himself a ninja in training. There is no room for failure in route but in the event that I did not kill him, there was a team of operatives ready to pick up the kidnapper and Hinata outside the village and then use the kidnapper as a political bargaining ship or something, Naruto didn't sound too convinced that this would have happened. So did you kill him? Laura asked both curious about this and somewhat saddened that Naruto might have had to see death at such an earlier age. However Naruto shook his head in the negative before grinning darkly as he replied, no, I didn't kill him, though in the end he probably wished I had, instead I castrated him and then immobilized him. Laura blinked, disbelief apparent on her face as she asked, castrated him? Isn't a little extreme? Especially for a four-year-old remained unsaid? Naruto merely shrugged, a slightly blush adorned his cheeks as he replied, there are only so many places that are within stabbing range of toddler with a kunai, I just picked the most painful, plus it was revenge, well sort of, the hidden cloud ninja village had a habit of kidnapping women who were important to me in some way, to turn them into breeders due to the unique bloodline abilities they carried, basically their mutations, thankfully they always failed and I was happy to foil that attempt. A distinctly female righteous anger seemed to fall over Laura Kinney like a heavy blanket upon hearing those words. To be kidnapped for the sake of becoming breeding material for the sake of another village. Something in her snapped at the thought and even Naruto found himself scooting backwards and away from her. Discreetly, this hidden cloud village was lucky that they were literally a universe apart or she would make it her mission to find those responsible and make them pay for this deplorable practice in the most painful ways she could imagine, and she could think of a lot, in that case you let him off too easily if he was willing to kidnap a four year old so that they could breed her for her mutation, you should have made him suffer. Ignoring her last comment and the visible discomfort he felt at her words Naruto tried to get things back on track. Saying, anyways, there were always tests within tests in route and the man who had kidnapped Hinata Hayuga was part of a political envoy from a rival nation that had just signed a conditional peace treaty with my nation that very day. In fact, he was the head negotiator, killing him in public would have created an international scandal but I would have gotten away with it, a top tier ninja from a rival nation successfully infiltrates enemy territory and kidnaps a high value target but gets killed during exfiltration by a four year old out past his bedtime, it's not something any village would want made public and would be quickly swept under the rug. If ninjas, outside of matters of national security, had to offer up their services as mercenaries and they had direct competition from other ninja villages, then Laura could understand how that would have been bad, if it became public that mere kids from your enemy's village can take out your top ninjas then why would any clients come to you anymore? everyone would immediately try and contract the other village, I can somewhat understand the reasoning behind Root putting you through such a test, however since you didn't kill him, what happened? Naruto physically winced as he recalled the memory. The whole village woke up due to the mon's screams and he was quickly arrested. The fact that he was very clearly trying to kidnap the heiress of one of the biggest clans in Konoha after personally signing the treaty with other Kumo delegates made him and by extension his whole village look bad in the eyes of the public. As compensation my village demanded a special young lady from his village to be brought to Konoha as a hostage or they would mount a ton of political pressure and the most devastatingly one-sided smear campaign in the history of my world. A smear campaign? The idea sounded simply absurd when you considered that these were ninjas they were talking about, yet Laura could clearly see how this would work, even as Naruto began explaining it. Konoha was in the right and Kumo looked deceptive, obviously all ninjas are taught to be deceptive but not to show it to civilians. This case was pretty clear cut for any civilian clients to see. Kumo had called for a peace treaty, signed it and then utterly violated it within 24 hours. Clients simply wouldn't trust them and give their business to any number of rival ninja villages and nations if that got out. Then there was the fact that I was a four year old boy who took out a junin capable of sneaking into the Hyuga clan. Ninjas who all have omnidirectional vision that can see through walls and see things for kilometers away and then successfully kidnapping the clan leader's daughter before successfully sneaking back out. If that got out, Kumo would instantly become the laughing stock of all the ninja villages, so the situation was bad for business and bad politically, plus while we desired peace more than anyone, we were not weaker militarily speaking, thus there were only two options, give us our hostage and we would make this whole scandal go away, 
refuse and we were going to crucify them, naturally they accepted and I got an older sister. What about the Hokage, I am pretty sure he wasn't happy to find out you were wandering around at night, then there is Root, you disobeyed an order, even if the end result sounds like it was much better for your village and country, I am pretty sure they weren't too happy that you didn't kill when instructed to, Laura pointed out. Some of them weren't happy but Danzo expects his soldiers to be capable of thinking things through logically. It's for this reason that he eliminates their emotions, he never wanted obedient dogs that do every single thing he says and can't form thoughts of their own, hell, the old bastard personally defended me when the Hokage tried to grill me on what I had done and presented me as a new prototype ninja to the Hokage, the results kinda spoke for themselves so it was hard for even the Hokage to disagree with him, Naruto said with a shrug. Indeed, four-year-old takes out a top-tier ninja from rival ninja village. You might have had help and things might have been skewed in your favor but all that mattered was that a four-year-old had beaten one of a rival nation's top ninja, it must have gained your village a huge amount of political clout and that hostage you mentioned earlier must have been incredibly important if she is all your village demanded, so regardless of how it happened, the end results spoke for themselves, incidentally hostage wasn't used for breeding, was she? As she asked the question that righteous anger seemed to come back and Naruto froze like a deer caught in headlights. Nope, Yugito became my big sister and, well that's not important. But Konoha doesn't tolerate that breed practice, anyway. I can't talk about a lot of what happened next cause it's classified military secrets but a lot of politics later and I found myself undergoing training that was to be overseen by Kakashi Hitaki and Jiraiya of the Sanin when he was in town. I was being turned into a weapon for my nation, the Hokage understood this and accepted it but he also ensured that the ones who would do train me, would be some of the most morally upstanding people you'd ever find amongst ninja kind though they sure had their work cut out for them when it came to me and later on my future team, at the mention of his Naruto's tone almost took on a wistful quality. His team was obviously very important to him and he seemed to hold this Kakashi and Jiraiya in high regard so Laura asked about them, so what was this Kakashi and Jiraiya of Asani like? Naruto smiled and said, I don't think that's fair, I've been talking quite a bit about myself so now it's your turn, tell me a bit about how you grew up and after that we will talk about Jiraiya and Kakashi, though I will say this about those two, if I was to describe them in a single word, I'd call them the biggest perverts I have ever and likely ever will meet, but sweet Kami were they strong. He was right, this whole time had been speaking about his life. The things had been through and the people had met. It was only fair for him to pose questions of his own and for her to answer them as honestly as she could. So far Naruto had not lied, had told when he didn't want to talk about something but he had not lied yet. So neither would she. My earliest memories are of my mother reading to me from children's storybooks while pretending to read to me The Art of War by Sun Tzu. I remember being trained by my sensei in various forms of traditional Japanese and Chinese martial arts but also being shown immense kindness by that man. I remember being shown love in that hellhole even as I was being trained to kill my enemies in the most efficient and ruthless ways known to man, and then I was forced to kill everyone who had ever shown me love and kindness, the only exception being my cousin and aunt. I still ruined their lives just by meeting them and getting to know them but they changed my life for the better, it was not fair. Life rarely is, he replied calmly with a tone that told her he very much sympathized with her. She wasn't doing this right, stories began at the beginning. Naruto himself had done so and explained things clearly for her understanding. So she would do the same, I suppose I should start at the beginning. As you know, I am the genetic clone of James Howlett better known in his civilian identity as Logan and Wolverine in his superhero identity. Or rather I should have been had the Weapon X program been able properly clone me from a genetic sample they'd taken from him, after 22 failures, my mother intervened, duplicated the X chromosome in Logan's DNA to create me and then carried me for 9 months, I was a weapon created by Dr. Sarah Kinney for the facility but I was also her child, for all of her mistakes and the things she allowed to happen to me, she loved me and wanted me to live. Any good parent desires at least that much for their children, my parents did too, they even died for me. Wei Naruto said that as if it was the most obvious thing in the world, she couldn't help but smile ever slightly. My mother died because of me, as you know, when an organization like Root or the Weapon X program want a weapon. They make sure they have a means to control it, with you they indoctrinated you into thinking their cause was right and doing things in a way they desired. With me they repeatedly exposed me to a chemical compound. A trigger scent, that as the name implies, triggered a berserker rage in me, I have no control over this and I kill anyone and anything in my path. They used this trigger scent on my mother when they deemed her love for me a liability and I killed her, she confessed then looked away, waiting for condemnation, disgust, anything from Naruto now that Shed told him her dirty little secret, his parents had died for him out love, she had personally killed her mother, things were not the same. Instead Laura received the last thing she expected from Naruto, in one smooth move, he pulled her into a hug as he said, I am sorry to hear that. 
At first she resisted but then relaxed in the following silence and to her surprise tears began to roll down her eyes. Why am I crying? This happened years ago, even her voice cracked, much to her annoyance. Because you loved her then, and you still do, Naruto calmly replied. There was an understanding and warmth to his words that simultaneously wanted to bask in and question how it was possible for someone like them to have. Naruto was a walking breathing contradiction to her, so human and full of life, yet unquestionably a cold and efficient killer, isolated and hated from an early age yet so kind and full of understanding, it didn't make sense to her but then it didn't need, as they sat on his bed, with Naruto's arms wrapped around her, Laura decided she liked this. Eventually they began talking again and would continue to do so well into the morning, the duo would share all kinds of little things about each other's lives and experiences as they sat comfortably on Naruto's bed, unknown to her and perhaps even himself she was being given a glimpse of the real Naruto as he opened himself up a little bit to someone for the first time since coming to earth. Thanks to some privacy seals Naruto had installed in the room, no one who Naruto didn't want noticing learned of this midnight exchange save for a few beings that far transcended humanity and a pair of nosy mutants, some smiled, some frowned and one decided she should pay this strange boy so full of life a visit in the morning. VVV it was somewhere before sunrise that Laura finally left and Naruto found himself cursing the fuzzy feeling he felt inside chest cause of her visit. He already knew what it was, when they first met, had just come out of cryostasis and said the first thing that came to his still regenerating brain, which was to call her beautiful, he normally would have kept something like that to himself but he wasn't thinking straight at the time, however that didn't mean he was wrong, Naruto still very much agreed with his past assessment of Laura, more so than ever even. After spend time talking to her about his life and then listening to her talk about her own experience in the Weapon X facility and her subsequent escape, Naruto had come to the conclusion that he really liked her and they had a lot in common to boot, outside of being killers, in short he found her attractive and wanted to get to know her better, still, what would be the point? Head thankfully dodged the topic of his past relationships whenever Hinata came up in the conversation by referring to her as his best friend. When she had been so much more, and Naruto had done enough research of 21st century earth customs to know that polygamous relationships were not exactly a popular thing here. So Naruto did not mention any of his many romances back in the elemental nations. Some sixth, or perhaps it was eleventh sense at this point, told him that doing so would end poorly for him. Laura already seemed pissed enough at Kumo that she was willing to march in there and try and raise it to the ground, he did not need that anger directed at him especially because he believed there was a chance Laura would somehow succeed in causing him grievous injuries he would not be able to regenerate from, the righteous anger of a woman had always been something that terrified Naruto, especially after he met his mother. In the end though, that was just it, Naruto was already aware of his skewed opinion of Laura due to her saving him from the Weapon X facility, it was common for someone rescued to see their rescuer in a certain attractive light, hell, that's how his own mother had fallen for his father despite thinking of Minato as girly and undependable up to that point and Naruto was nothing if not his mother's son, scarlet locks and amethyst eyes were only physical proof of this. Naruto was also a shinobi and due to their lifestyle in which death could come at any moment. They tended to live every day like it was their last and love more quickly and passionately than was accepted as normal here, that entire lifestyle just clashed horribly with what was normal on earth, even for someone like Laura who had had an abnormal life by earth standards, furthermore, Naruto was an Uzumaki and there were no ninjas more passionate and emotionally charged than the Uzumaki clan which was he locked his emotions down with his root training logic more often than not. Unfortunately that training wasn't working at the moment, which was why he was meditating in the surface of Breakstone Lake, a little to the east of the X mansion, he was couple meters into the lake at this point where he sat perfectly still and drew on the natural energies of the world while reflecting on all that had happened in the state of his heart. Breathe in breathe out breathe in breathe out in the end Naruto wasn't sure if he wanted to punch Wolverine in the balls or thank him for sending Laura his way last night, maybe a little bit of both, the man was pretty crappy father material but he genuinely cared for Laura and wanted was best for his daughter, sister, clone, unfortunately, for some reason the feral mutant had gotten it in his head that Naruto was what was best for the girl. Flashback, so did you enjoy the night? Naruto glared at the older mutant as Logan took a couple of sniffs of the air before saying, you are not covered in her scent so at least you didn't try anything inappropriate with my daughter or ID have to act like a proper father and pop my claws to gut you like a fish. It was said as a joke but there was a certain glint in the mon's eyes that made it so Naruto couldn't entirely dismiss the idea that Logan might be serious, Naruto had fought the man a couple times in sparring sessions but never seriously, internally he smiled at the idea and thought to himself, at the very least such a scenario would be interesting. Logan had found Naruto as he was eating his breakfast in the gardens, away from the eyes and questions of staff and students alike. It was also so that Naruto could process both his meeting with Emma the previous evening and the events of that night and to make a decision on his next course action moving forward. 
you do realize that you are the one who practically sent her my way right? Not to mention, the ease with which she accessed my room and snuck back to her dorm in the morning. She's good but I am not buying the idea that at least you and Emma didn't plan this somehow. Between Logan's super sensitive nose and Emma's telepathy, they should have easily picked up Laura's activities, there was no way that they wouldn't have known that Laura had come to see him and they could have easily stopped her at any time before she entered his room, in short they wanted this to happen, Emma had said as much the evening before, Naruto just hadn't expected her to work with Wolverine of all people, those didn't exactly get along much. Logan snorted and said, you're a little observant, it'll give you that much, I admit that I am willing and able to create opportunities for her to be around you, with the help of some of my teammates who shall not be named, however, whether I create such opportunities or not, it won't stop Laura from coming to see you. The thing she inherited most from me was not my claws or healing factor but my stubbornness, this just makes things easier for her. Naruto felt kind of happy for Laura, she hadn't directly said it but had picked up pretty easily how much she desired her father's acknowledgement and how much she valued his opinions, the fact that Wolverine was pretty much pushing her towards him, would mean the world to her once she figured it out, even so, Naruto didn't quite understand one thing and so he asked, why me? Logan didn't answer right away, instead he chose to light a cigar and inhale deeply before exhaling a blast of smoke into the air that made Naruto frown, how would this bastard like it he started playing with smoke bombs whenever Logan was trying to eat something, still, a subtle application of wind release prevented any contaminated air from coming near him or his delicious fried eggs and bacon. Finally Logan said, you understand what she's been through, what those like us have been through and you came out relatively okay, oh, I know deep down inside you can be just as much of a monster as me if not more when the time comes, but you got a handle on that, we've both learned how to be human but you seem to be able to actually be able to teach this to Laura and do so quickly, that's a lesson she dearly needs at this point in her life, can you believe she was smiling this morning? Huh? Naruto voiced his confusion, Logan himself was smiling as he clearly thought back on whatever encounter he had with Laura that morning, yet, it was like the wild mutant wasn't used to seeing his daughter smile and thought of it as an almost alien expression on her face, this didn't make sense to Naruto, had seen Laura smile multiple times and it was a damn pretty smile, soft perhaps, small even but damn pretty. Laura, after she left your room, she was smiling, trust me kid. That girl don't smile, Logan explained as he looked up at the sky, obviously having picked up on Naruto confusion somehow, the older man silently basked in the morning sunlight's gentle rays for a few seconds before continuing, you're good for her Naruto, you're already having a positive influence on her and not only does she like you, you also like her, don't deny it kid, you can fool a shit ton of people with your ninja skills but not me. Naruto was leveled with a glare so challenging he actually found himself audibly gulping, for some time later this little fact would trouble him, how was it that he could face down a rampaging ten tails without a hint of fear or hesitation, yet Logan had frozen him with a look, he would also wrongly conclude that Logan had other unknown powers somehow. With a nervous chuckle Naruto confessed, I admit I find her attractive and fun to be around, plus we do understand each other better than anyone else because of what we are, still, what then? I've promised to stick around to at least help her with her past and to find her humanity but I also need to return to my own world eventually, it wouldn't be right to string her along and then just leave and I doubt Shed want to abandon everything she knows and everyone she loves here on earth and follow me to a new unknown universe, so regardless of my feelings, what would be the point? If you really feel there is no point to starting a relationship with her then I won't push you, it's none of my business what you kids get up to anyway, however, just assuming things won't work out for you without trying is rather cowardly and I may be mistaken but in every spar we've had so far you've left me with the impression that you were anything but a coward. Flashback end, that bastard, Naruto mentally growled for a moment as he thought of Wolverine's last comment, for all of his rude and anbu training, his genius intellect and calm demeanor inherited from his father, Naruto was still his mother's son, in other words despite fully recognizing the trap for what it was, his Uzumaki pride wouldn't let Wolverine's comment slide, keep an open mind when it come to Laura huh? So when she decides to follow me to another universe and you try stopping her, who is you will be cursing out for reminding you that this was your idea? Cause such a day comes, I am gonna laugh at your misery old man, oh yeah? Emma is also going to need a punch in the face for her part in all this, putting his thoughts on Wolverine and Emma's antics and his vengeance against the two irritants out of his mind Naruto focused on meditating. Breathe in breath out breathe in breath out breathe in. Breath out the mantra played somewhere in the back of his head as Naruto sat perfectly still and released some of the tension he carried within, into the environment, the water didn't even so much as ripple beneath him as nature energy gathered thickly around him and he quickly entered sage mode. Yet this time it was different, gone were the orange rings that used to surround his eyes and denote sagehood on his world. In their place remained a series of dark purple lines and geometric shapes that ultimately looked like like a cross between a ceiling formula and the pathways on a circuit board. 
Think of the curse Mark Danzo placed on Sasuke in Shippuden episode 210 but branching out more. As strange as it was to him, this sage mode felt strangely fitting, his right eye remained amethyst but gained silver cross in place of its pupil, a leftover from his six paths sage mode, as for lavender by Kugan it turned dull gold. Naruto however was unaware of the visual changes to his appearance that came with his activation of sage mode. Only the strange ways his new sage mode affected him. The boost of energy was about on par with what he got back in the elemental nations and most of the other things were the same but his chakra felt slightly more robust and slightly less flexible when he melded it the nature energy of earth, it wasn't a bad thing, just really strange to him, he intended to figure it out in future when he found a place he could really test his abilities out, but for now Naruto focused on his breathing and more importantly his inner world. One of the first things had checked upon getting a moment of quiet for himself was his seal to see if Kurama or any of the other tailed beasts had made it to earth with him what had found was not encouraging. First of all the seal was different, visually, the seal on his stomach was not the Torii seal he had created after gaining access to the Nine Tails Chakra. Nor was it the Eight Trigrams sealing style of the Uzumaki clan his father had placed on him, twice, no it looked like a nine-armed swirling pinwheel encircled by nine tomo. The comma-like marks in the iris of the first stage of the Sharingan, they look like a bunch of nine. The seal was far stronger too, he wouldn't have been surprised if it could hold back Kagaya herself with extreme ease, but how had he gotten it? The inside of the seal it, while not strictly speaking empty, completely lacked any of the tailed beast's presence. In their place was a large reservoir of chakra that felt more powerful than anything he had experienced including Kagaya and Hagoromo Otsutsuki, so powerful in fact that if the seal was to suddenly fail, he feared that all that power would almost instantly tear him apart, this chakra felt a lot like Hagoromo and Kagaya's power too but also different, as if it was changing into something new, something like him or rather what he could eventually become. As he was contemplating this, Naruto was unaware of the massive effect his meditation was having on the environment outside his seal, or more specifically, who his senjutsu was attracting at the at the moment, it was to be an event that would shape his life for many many years to come. The air grew clear, cool and crisper by the second, flowers in the courtyard of the X mansion and across its many gardens quickly began to bloom, growing ever more vibrantly colorful by the second, the trees of the forest looked greener, the soil healthier and the waters of the lake a clear crystal blue. Even the animals were responding, schools of different kinds of fish located in the lake swam in wide circles beneath where Naruto sat, while flocks of birds mimicked their formations in the skies above, woodland critters and the occasional deer gathered on the banks and just stared at Naruto as if longing to cross the water and reach out to him. However that was not all, James Howlett, Laura Kinney, Henry McCoy, Nick Gleason, Victor Burkowski and a few others emerged from the tree line and just stood along the shore as if in a trance, every one of these mutants feeling their animal instincts drawing them to this place, to bear witness to the descent of a goddess, to witness nature itself commune with the young sage sitting on the lake. Naruto was aware of none of this, for even his body had entered into a trance-like state, yet his mind remained active, he didn't realize when his mindscape changed from the massive underground cavern which held the one-time prison of the mighty Kyubi no Yoko to a vast empty white expanse that went on forever. Naruto quite literally felt like he had been in this white expanse the whole time and yet he remembered having stood before the seal just moments ago. The one thing he was fully aware of however, was that he was no longer alone in his mind. Yet he could instantly tell that this presence was on a completely different level from that Emma or any other human telepath. He couldn't just throw it out whenever he felt like it, that actually scared him somewhat, yet he also felt warmth, like that time he met his mother chakra ghost when she helped him control Kurama's power. A silky smooth yet motherly voice spoke into his ear as if carried by the wind itself and said, you drink deeply from my power child, yet you do not claim it for yourself, why is this? Some instinct within Naruto told him he was talking to a goddess and not just any goddess but a powerful nature goddess many times more powerful than Kagaya, allowing himself a sneak peek at how powerful she was, his sensory powers showed him that this goddess could influence nature on planetary scale and was even stronger than that, it would be prudent to be polite to such a being. A mirthful chuckle filled the air as the voice said in a sultry tone, taking a sneak peek at a lady's assets. An atomic blush instantly replaced Naruto's calm demeanor at those words, so much so that he couldn't even stutter an excuse and found himself tongue-tied, wa, I, huh? While he was a disciple of Jiraiya and a student of Kakashi, thus all too familiar with Ero Ninjutsu and peeking on beautiful ladies, the idea of peeking on a goddess practically made his brain short-circuit for a second there. In response to this, the goddess chuckle suddenly turned into a full-blown belly laugh at his expense and outside of Naruto's mindscape every bird in a five-mile radius, simultaneously burst into song, the same song but in a hundred different variations, it was quite frankly creepy to any humans that might have been paying attention, 
they would never know it was in response to the most powerful nature goddess laughter. An ocean of warmth suddenly enveloped the embarrassed red-headed ninja as the voice said, I am just kidding little one, my days can get awfully boring at times and so when I recently sensed someone guzzling up a chunk of my power I thought I should take a look and determine their motives. Naruto sighed in relief at hearing this, the goddess before him seemed a hell of a lot more reasonable than those of the Otsutsuki clan. He had already known that the gods of earth were pretty reasonable individuals and often helped humans in defending their homeworld. The Asgardian named Thor being the biggest example of this but not the only one, still to know about this and to experience it firsthand were two entirely different things, and it left Naruto feeling a good deal of relief, that said Naruto had to make one thing clear first, I am not a thief. Yes indeed, with every breath you drink deeply from my power and mix it with your own surprisingly strong life energy. Augmenting it, empowering it and then releasing it as you breath out. This new energy spreads out into the world, reinforcing everything touched by me that it comes into contact with, it's amazing. The last time I saw anyone aside from me and a few other beings replicate something like this was long before the birth of humanity and the gods worship nowadays, yes, you are no thief, if not for this fact, I would have undoubtedly struck you down the first time you drew from my powers, but now I am fascinated by you remained unsaid. Naruto felt incredibly nervous at the idea that he had come so close to death without even knowing it. Seriously, he could tell that while he could probably put up an impressive fight if he went all out against this goddess. She'd utterly destroy him within minutes if the second she decided to take things seriously, she was just that much more powerful, I see, in that case I apologize for not asking first, on my homeworld. Our gods did not interact with humanity much and those that did were alien gods from another world that sought the destruction of my world, if I had known about you and your dominion over this world's nature energy I would have asked first before using my world's sage arts. Naruto had yet to physically see this goddess yet he somehow felt her nod in acceptance before she said, hmm. Well that explains a couple of things about you child. You look human enough to pass for one of my own children. You've even been touched by their evolution, however, you have the smell of another reality and you are undoubtedly a mixed child, with blood both alien and divine flowing through your veins, it explains why you are teetering on the precipice of divinity, ready to fall over at the slightest nudge, are you prepared for immortality child? To watch almost every other human you have ever known die and turn to dust scattered in the wind while you remain unchanged by the passing of time. Her words while not said with any cruel or malicious intention were like a knife to the heart. Naruto was a ninja who believed in the will of fire and an Uzumaki at that, more importantly he was an orphan who had never known the love of family until had met his team and even then it wasn't the same thing as being raised by a father, mother and siblings, it was the one experience that Sasuke and Hinata had, he truly lacked. So to put it simply, family and friends were the most important thing to Naruto, and while this goddess hadn't mentioned any specifics, watching everyone you'd ever known die, obviously implied his family, unless of course he died earlier his family became immortal, either option bothered him greatly. A feeling of comfort and embrace surrounded Naruto as the goddess said, I see I've upset you, do not fret child, you are not a godling yet, though it warms my heart to know you would be a better choice than most and at the very least take divinity seriously, I must be going now Naruto Uzumaki. Despite still being shaken Naruto scrounged up the curiosity to ask, how do you know my name? In response he got the impression of young woman smiling happily at him, eyes sparkling with amusement as she replied, you cannot remain unknown to me so long as you stand on this planet, I am sure you can figure out why, after all you did take a peek at this old girl. Fighting of any embarrassment he felt at the thought of what a naked goddess might look like, damn you Jiraiya. Comprehension struck him like a bolt of lightning as Naruto said, you are connected to everything, aren't you? Her happiness spiked as she replied, exactly. Naruto could tell that the goddess was about to leave, the conversation had been winding down and she had already satisfied her curiosity, so whatever else he wanted to ask needed to be asked fast and there was something he really wanted to know, may I know you name oh goddess. Naruto got the impression that the goddess was cocking her head sideways in thought for some reason before she replied, I have many names and many forms though I have neglected to show you any but I suppose it would be simplest for you if you called me Gia or Mother Nature, whichever is easier and yes, you have my permission. Permission? Naruto asked in surprise, trying to connect to what she was saying and failing. To use your sage arts and draw on my power, provided of course your moral compass does not deviate further from what is good and righteous. I can stomach a lot of acts but some things will not be tolerated, thankfully, even at your most extreme, your actions would be in the range of what I would consider tolerable, deviate from that however and there will be dire consequence, Gia's warning was beyond stern. A promise of the inescapable all-consuming wrath only a goddess could deliver, yet it was also strange, as if she was looking into what might be and warning him against it rather than what was. Understood, and thank you for this, he should nt have understood this, a normal person couldn't truly understand what he was feeling, yet he did. 
Ever since Hagoromo had granted him the Yang Seal and Six Paths Sage Mode, Naruto had been able to perceive the imperceptible with his senses. I can see that you do understand, good, I am relieved, in that case it's my pleasure to meet you Naruto-kun, don't be a stranger, I get oh so terribly bored in which goddess doesn't love a strapping young man, the flirtatious tone with which she said those words left no guesses to the implications of her words. GRRHK, blushing a darker red than his hair as his mind conjured all kinds steamy images, Naruto cursed Jiraiya in his thoughts, he was no stranger to sex, but with a goddess? An image of a woman whose beauty was literally indescribable suddenly filled his head. It was an image that had not been born from Naruto thoughts but projected into his mind and this woman was very much naked. Well, naked save for several tree vines that were covering her privates in much the same way as Naruto's sexy jutsu female form used smoke to cover her privates, then the naked woman winked at him before the whole image vanished from his without a trace, Naruto suddenly felt lightheaded and could have sworn that had he any control over his physical body at the moment he would have probably fainted. Ha 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 ha, I haven't had this much fun in eons. Gia roared with another loud belly laugh even as her presence faded out of existence. Before Naruto knew it, he was alone again but also very aware of all the different life signatures surrounding him outside his midscape. Thankfully by some miracle his body was completely disconnected from wherever his mind had been and thus he was not sporting an impressive erection or this would have been super awkward, up until that moment. It seemed Gia's sheer power had blanketed the area and hidden all life from him despite being in sage mode but now Naruto was acutely aware of everything alive in his immediate surrounding. With a sigh he opened his eyes and spotted the entire X-Men team, several students and director Valerie Cooper standing on the shore watching him, along with a multitude of animals, some of them like Wolverine, Beast and Laura even looked a little disoriented, as if they were coming out of a trance, perhaps they perceived a bit of what was going on, I need to ask. Sighing Naruto turned to the gathered animals and said, She's gone now, you should return to whatever you were doing before she arrived, and just like that every animal dispersed to go do whatever they naturally did at that time of the day, only apparently whatever he had said wasn't what he thought he said. As the X-Men continued to stare at him with an odd fascination, Naruto asked as he casually walked over water to them, what? Wolverine was the first to ask and he was looking very very concerned as he did so, Naruto, what language was that you were just speaking? Frowning at the Mon's question as he stepped onto dry land, Naruto thought about the various languages of Earth, over the previous week his research had pointed out that there were many languages on Earth and he had yet to have an encounter with any of them. However, in the week since had woken up Naruto had been wondering why he understood everyone, he obviously didn't speak English and he doubted that the written form of the language was even remotely similar to his native language, yet he understood everything he heard or read perfectly, he found it completely suspicious but he had never really bothered to investigate it too deeply, at least until now. Even so, he had more important things to do than wonder how it was that he understood a previously unknown language or why everyone was looking at him like Hugh was crazy for talking to animals and for said animals obeying him, Jugo did it all the time, it wasn't so strange here, was it? Perhaps animals were just dumber on this world, instead of voicing this Naruto replied, the same language I am always speaking, why? It really wasn't kid, and I think I know why, but first tell me, what did you mean by she's gone? Who was here? Wolverine demanded, he seemed both upset and worried. Naruto understood worried, especially if he had sensed Gia, she was an unbelievably powerful goddess after all. A super powerful goddess decided to say hi after noticing my presence here, she was just curious and wanted to make conversation, Naruto explained but neglected to reveal Gia's name, maybe she wouldn't mind revealing her identity but he would ask her first, she was decent enough to not smite him when he basically drawing on her power without her permission so at the very least he wanted to return that decency. In response Wolverine merely sighed and said, well, that explains it, all speak huh, you never said you were a god? Naruto frowned at his, he wasn't a god, god like maybe, a godslayer perhaps and maybe even demigod if you squinted at his status as transmigrant in the right way but not quite a god, even Gia has said he wasn't one yet, but, I am not. VVV it was after one lengthy conversation in which Naruto tried to explain to everyone present exactly why he wasn't a god, much to Wolverine's amusement, that Scott brought up a different equally important matter, due to the Nimrod incident and purifier attack before that, the senior X-Men had charged Wolverine with upping the new X-Men's training regimen, which Logan was more than happy to do cause they were far below his standards. However, before he could get into the meat and bones of what he had planned for them. The kids were due a little training exercise to better assess their abilities, it was a way to see exactly what they were capable of and how far he could push them before everyone except his daughter dropped dead of exhaustion, it also gave him and the senior X-Men a chance to hear the evaluation and opinion of Naruto, a ninja from another universe an opinion that Naruto would gain by sparring with the kids himself. Having fought against the redhead alongside Psylocke, 
Nightcrawler and Colossus. Wolverine already knew that Naruto was way above the junior team's league, it would be less of a fight and more of him simply toying with them in probably humiliating and amusing ways, still the brats needed it, after Nimrod and the purifiers, they were getting too big for their own britches and someone needed to knock them off their high horses and remind them that there was always someone better than them out there. Over the week you've been here with us Naruto, you've been incredibly compliant and patient with us, for which I want to say thank you, Scott began, drawing on all the charisma he was known for and cementing the fact that he was the leader of the X-Men, he might not have been the smartest, bravest, strongest, fastest or most powerful member of the team but he sure knew how to talk and get people to listen. It's no problem Mr. Summers, if you had shown up out of the blue on my world, even the most benevolent ninja village I know of would have been at least as cautious as you've been with me, honestly I will simply take your words as a compliment and a sign of how much you care about your students, Naruto replied, sounding as humble as ever, his nice demeanor was so sincere it almost made Logan forget that Naruto was another apex predator. Scott nodded in gratitude before saying, that said, I think it's about time we extend a bit more trust to you. So far you've been compliant with our every request and listened to our advice on any matter we brought up. From now on though, we think it would be great for you to go out into the city whenever you wish to do so. Both so that you may experiencing the variety of human culture on this earth and so that you may access more information from libraries and individuals who might be able to get you home but do not live on this property. Provided of course, that you keep Ms. Braddock informed whenever you leave and she accompanies you. Seeing as the X-Men have chose her as your minder and the government has left you in our care, she is held responsible for any actions you take, should you do something US government doesn't approve of or considers a crime, we will all be held responsible and punished for it, so please consult with her whenever you come across things you don't understand, it will save us a lot of problems, otherwise go nuts. Naruto actually smiled upon hearing that, it wasn't a secret that he was remarkably curious about his fellow ninja and that they had both wanted to question each other for some time. They just hadn't really had time to sit down and talk yet, now though, had exploited this opportunity for all it was worth. Thank you for your consideration Mr. Summers, I will be careful not to cause the X-Men or Mouton kind any problems, I am also sure it will be lots of fun to hang out with a fellow ninja. That's why we chose her, Scott said with a shrug before continuing. Two more things before I let you go though, we've called in a few favors with the Fantastic Four's leader Drive. Read Richard and he's freed up his schedule for you this evening, if you've brushed up on our world's history then you probably know that there likely isn't a more intelligent person on earth, not to mention he's very experienced at traveling to alternate realities, in short, he wants to scan you for your quantum signature and use it to find your home universe. I can go home? The hope in Naruto's voice was heartbreaking to hear, Logan knew the young man enough to know that he didn't actually dislike earth, he just really 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 wanted to go home, what he was in a rush to find there wasn't something he was privy to. Emma might have been cooperating with him to push Laura and Naruto towards each other but she kept anything she had been told by him in confidence, secret, it actually made him respect the blonde woman a little more. With a tactless shrug, Scott replied, I don't know, the science is way beyond my head but from what I've gathered Reed will at least be able to find your home, how long this takes is anyone's guess and if he can't help, however unlikely that is. Psylocke has a brother who might be able to, so there are plenty of options. Thank you. The words were a lot more meaningful than the other times Naruto had expressed his gratitude to Cyclops, as if they came from a deeper place this time, after a moment of silence Naruto finally asked with a voice that while laced with hope was duller than earlier, what's the other thing? Wolverine took this as his cue to step into the conversation saying, I'd like you to participate in training exercise with the new X-Men, the kids have won two major battles and we believe it's gotten to their heads, I'd like you to knock them down a few pegs so they don't get overconfident the next time they go out into the field that an ID like your personal assessment of their abilities afterwards. Logan had been straightforward and to the point about what he wanted, like a soldier, as fellow soldier Naruto had nodded in understanding and acceptance as he replied, no problem, after every two or three successful mission I would beat the crap out of my subordinates back in Konoha, it kept them on their toes and reminded them they were not invincible, well, if we are doing this then I better go prepare my strategy. Logan frowned slightly at hearing that and reminded the redheaded ninja, I want you to kick their asses but remember to go easy on them kid. Don't worry, I can't afford not to, they're not you after all, Naruto replied with a smirk as he headed towards the mansion. As the boy walked off Logan thought of how interesting things were going to get that evening. He knew that the only one on the new X-Men team who even came close to Naruto in terms of skill, efficiency and ruthlessness was Laura and that was only because of her past as an assassin for the Weapon X program, yet that comparison was like trying to compare a flea to a fully grown lion, all she had were her claws, heightened senses and regeneration abilities to work with. Naruto on the other hand wasn't even remotely that limited. Even when put against an entire team of mutant superhero trainees, four of whom Logan had taken great pains to make sure Naruto knew as little about as possible so as to keep their abilities a secret, 
Naruto would still win. Sure if they worked together and came up with a solid plan they could potential pull off something impressive but ultimately Naruto would not lose, all because Logan had asked him to win. Naruto had once said to him that if you want our best, then Junin are the ninjas for you, however if you want the job done, then Enbu Black Ops are what you are looking for, it was this mentality to get the job done at any cost that would make him an insurmountable boulder upon which new X-Men's wave of success would break, his wide range of abilities, high intelligence, better training, vast experience in different kinds of combat scenarios and the fact that had survived a war have helped. Even the way Naruto carried himself was designed to look both confident and strategic. It looked casual to the unobservant but his muscles were coiled like springs, ready to send him off at top speed in any direction at a moment's notice. Whenever they sparred, Naruto had never once come across the various styles of martial arts Wolverine had perfected in his life, yet he quickly adapted to them and correctly began anticipating and creating the perfect counters for everything Wolverine threw at him and Wolverine knew a lot, it was quite frankly terrifying. Even his combat doctrine when Wolverine, Colossus and Nightcrawler tag-teamed him was one of using the environment. Diversions and exploiting vulnerabilities rather than the direct kind of fighting most superheroes and villains were used to, smoke bombs, the ninja equivalent of flash bangs, throwing knives and stars, flexible but extremely toughing wires and a tonto were just a few of the many surprises he had up his sleeve and those didn't require any of his powers. In fact the only power he had actively used then was his left eye, the Byakugan which gave him an enormous advantage. In other sparring matches Head used a lot of his other powers which while formidable were not insurmountable, that eye on the other hand allowed him to coordinate even his weakest abilities and chain them together for devastating effect, there was only one other thing more devastating about Naruto than his eye in Logan's opinion and that was his stamina. The kid recovered too quickly, he had limits to his strength so it wasn't anywhere near someone like the Hulk, however, even when he ran out of stamina, Naruto would fully recover in minutes rather than the hours it would take a normal person, it was the single most terrifying thing about Naruto and one of just a long list of reasons why the new X-Men couldn't win against him, thankfully they were never meant to win. VVV so your mentors, the X-Men are pretty impressed with you guys right now. According to them surviving an attack by the mutant hating terrorist organization known as the Purifiers was already pretty impressive. However you did more than just that, you forced the mutant killing machine known as Nimrod into retreating. A feat worthy of much praise in itself, then you rescued one of your own who had been kidnapped and in the process freed me from the evil clutches of the Weapon X program, perhaps he was beginning to lay it on thick but with each word six of the seven assembled mutants before him, stood a little straighter and were puffed out their chests with pride as they grinned at each other, sole exception being X-23. Whether this was because Wolverine had cued her in on what was coming or because it simply wasn't in her nature to let her guard down simply cause of some kind and encouraging words was anyone's guess. What Naruto did know was that she was easily the most prepared among that team to fight against him after all stories had told her last night, or rather, she knew how little of a chance they stood. Sure he hadn't told her the mechanics behind how he used his powers aside from that they were fueled by chakra, but she was a clever girl and could create countermeasures based on what he had said, she obviously knew he could manipulate wind, water, fire, lightning, earth, clone himself, use seals, make himself invisible and thousand other things had casually mentioned the previous night, would she inform her team about this? Would she keep it to herself because had told her all of that in confidence? Naruto felt he wouldn't blame Laura if she spilled his secrets to her team to help them battle him, teamwork was the most emphasized skill among Konoha Shinobi and had respect her for doing that, however had never trust her again, the mere thought of not being able to trust Laura made him feel strangely ill, I really hope you keep my secrets Laura. Putting those thoughts aside Naruto focused on the task ahead and said. It's due to these specific accomplishments that the seven of you are currently here this afternoon. The X-Men want to see for themselves whether you, their protégés are ready for the next step in your training or whether you just got lucky against Nimrod, the fact that this also gives them a chance to assess my own combat abilities in a secure environment is just a bonus, in other words, this afternoon we will all be going through a training exercise together. Will we be doing a simulation together? Did they finally fix the danger room? Nariko Ashida aka Surge asked in surprise, Naruto could feel her curiosity towards him and what they were going to be doing. However none of the new X-Men had picked up on the fact that they wouldn't be on the same team, might as well spoil the surprise. With a shake of his head Naruto firmly replied, negative, the danger room is still out of commission so this will be an all out brawl, your team versus me. Mercury frowned at this and said, 7 on 1 doesn't seem particularly fair, her concern for him was born out of gratitude for helping save her from the monsters at the Weapon X facility, both the human and animal ones. Unfortunately such concerns were also completely misplaced and would lead to her underestimating him, he certainly had no intention of going any easier on any one of them than a Junin would against group of Genin. Sure some of the kids could take a harsher beating than most Junin were willing to dish out against the Genin in their cells, 
But then Naruto was no ordinary Junin, he was an Anbu commander and one of the most powerful shinobi in the history of the elemental nations. This whole exercise was nothing more than excuse to kick the crap out of the kids and teach them a few valuable life lessons. I know right, your combined strength versus mine is grossly disproportional. I mean, I am not happy about this idea myself, Naruto replied. Trailing off in thought for a moment before shaking his head and saying, nevertheless, I am shinobi and I will persevere, but that is neither here nor there, with the danger room out of action we will just have to fight in an empty room with no cover to hide behind, my goal will be to take down all seven of you by incapacitating you in some way or knocking you out, your team wins by knocking me out, holding me still for 30 seconds or taking this bell from me. With his explanation complete, Naruto pulled a bell from his pouch and jingled it once in front of everyone, before clenching his right fist around it, it would be pointless to keep the bell on his belt in the presence of a telekinetic, and if they could force him to let go of the bell, he would personally be impressed with them, plus they would win. Naruto would prefer it, if of the three options to take him out, they went for the bell, cause while it looked like it would be an easy target, it wasn't, and it would force them to get very creative, very quickly, such a situation would also reveal more about their powers and team dynamics, not that keeping him still for 30 seconds or knocking him out would be any easier for these teens, no matter what they tried they would be in for a nasty surprise, he had contingencies for everything. The only one who was even remotely ready for what he had to throw at them was X-23 and that was largely because she knew quite a lot more about him than the rest after yesterday's talk. Would she reveal to her team what had told her in private or keep it to herself, Naruto didn't know what to think about that, of course he wanted her to keep it secret but had also been taught to be loyal to his team and keeping information that could help your team win to yourself was not right, in the end he decided it wouldn't matter. Still, the exercise was horribly skewed in his favor so Naruto decided to throw them a bone, saying, in addition to everything I just said, I will not be using anything on the sheer level of the powers I demonstrated a week ago at the facility, in other words no bombs, no energy chains or shields and no localized omniscience. You might regret that, I hear those abilities said Elixir. I am sure I will live, Naruto said as he deliberately dropped a tag with a ceiling array onto the floor and then stepped on it in full view of all of them. He hoped that his actions would garner some kind of suspicion from them even if he had never shown any of them his various ceiling tags and how they worked. A ninja would never ignore something like that, even if they didn't understand it. Unfortunately, this was not a team of ninjas. Instead, Hellion announced loudly, You're unbelievably cocky, you know that. The kid had remained suspiciously silent up until now, though the jealousy and anger Naruto was feeling being directed towards him said more than words ever could. Maybe, but should NT you decide something like that after you defeat me, Mr. Keller? Well whatever, you may start when ready, he replied with a mischievous smile, the trap was set and all that was left was for his prey to take the bait. Julian Keller did not fail in this regard. An invisible hand wrapped itself tightly around Naruto as Hellion telekinetically grabbed him and yanked him ten feet straight up into the air, with a derisive snort he bellowed, pathetic. You didn't even try to avoid my telekinesis, how arrogant can you be to just stand there, knowing you face a telekinetic? I can take you down by myself, I just need to hold you there for thirty seconds right? As if in response to his words, the paper tag Naruto had stepped on earlier activated on the floor beneath him, it would go off in five seconds, no one not ignore this of course, their attention all concentrated on Naruto at the moment, who smirked and simply replied, now why would I avoid your telekinesis when it guaranteed you would fall into my little trap? Overconfidence will get you killed kid. What are you, gah? Hellion and the new X-Men didn't even get the chance to express their confusion when the unassuming paper tag detonated in an eye-searing flash and an ear-wrecking screech that could be felt in their very bones. It was as if a thousand thousand trains had suddenly and simultaneously activated their brakes and all that sound was now being blasted into this room. Hellion instantly lost his concentration as instinctively covered his ears to shield them from the awful racket, and his ironclad grip on Naruto failed, it was a mistake and the last mistake he would make in this particular exercise. The screeching came to a sudden stop the instant Naruto's feet hit the floor, to his credit, Hellion valiantly tried to recapture Naruto with his telekinesis, unfortunately telekinesis worked at the speed of thought and the speed of thought was not as fast as people believed, especially when telekinesis was involved. The vast majority of all the photons that entered the eye were lost before they even got to the back of the eye, the 10% or so that made it had to be translated into an electrical current and sent to the visual processing center of the brain and then understood before a reaction could even be considered, by the time that reaction arrived, even if it came the instant the problem was understood and appropriate action was taken, a small amount of time would have passed. For a normal person this would be insignificant, a span of time measured in milliseconds, barely even noticeable to the majority of the human population, Unfortunately Naruto wasn't even remotely normal, by human or ninja standards, he stood at the peak of what it meant to be a ninja of the elemental nations. Julian literally blinked and the scarlet-haired ninja, who had been clearly on the other side of the room, 
was suddenly standing right besides him as if had teleported, the telekinetic didn't even get to process Naruto's new location before the ex Anbu operative flicked his left index finger out. The glowing tip covered in green chakra connected with Hellion's temple and pulsed once, then like a puppet without strings Julian instantly crumbled to the floor, he was completely out cold. Threat neutralized, six more to go, it was barely a mutter but the whole room heard him, Naruto's voice was devoid of all emotion and his eyes completely lacked any of the warmth they held before the exercise, as he looked down at the fallen boy. With his guard seemingly let down for a second, Naruto almost smiled when in response to his actions there was a whistle in the air, the sound of an incoming blade parting the air was unmistakable, Naruto had grown intimately familiar with that sound, having caused and heard similar sounds, hundreds of thousands of times in his home universe. With a violent jerk of his upper body to the side, twin 11-inch monomolecular blades sliced through the space his neck had previously occupied as X-23 attacked him with lethal intent, it was an impressive assassination attempt, had almost not heard her approach, unfortunately even without the Byakugan his other senses were still absurdly superhuman. For a split second the two locked eyes with each other as Naruto's whole body swayed out of the path of her attack, and she swept past him, the whole world seemed to just fade into the background, with the only thing remaining being the eyes their counterpart. Naruto's amethyst and lavender eyes were visible pools of warmth, gratitude and sadness, while Laura's jade orbs held excitement, nervousness and unshakable determination. Laura clearly understood the situation, between their talk the previous night and what she had seen at the Weapon X facility or heard from Wolverine. She had a pretty good idea of how utterly outmatched the she and the new X-Men were against him, yet, she was determined to give him a good showing. Naruto wanted to smile, he could just feel his face trying to stretch out into a happy grin, however this wasn't the place for that, this was training, a place of preparation for the battlefield, and much like the battlefield, there was no room for his feelings here. With that thought Naruto's eyes seemed to lose their friendly warmth and light, becoming the cold almost hollow things that had taken the countless lives on the orders of his nation and his Hokage. Naruto was pleased to note that Laura's eyes quickly began to reflect his own, thanks to her training and she at least showed no intention of pulling her punches against him, let the lesson begin. Laura had already impressed him by correctly anticipated that his target would be Hellion and had rushed to the poor boy's aid as fast as she could, hell, Shed started moving towards him before Naruto had even activated the stun tag, this showed a depth and understanding of battlefield tactics that even Naruto found alarming, however Shed also made a mistake in all this, Shed come to aid Hellion on her own. When compared to average human or mutant, X-23 was impressively fast. To the point that she could react to bullets after they were fired at her, that wasn't to say that if you opened up on her with SMG or an assault rifle on full auto shed dodge every bullet, no. Laura would undoubtedly get hit and due to her regeneration, more often than not she wouldn't even bother dodging and simply gut you for having the temerity to shoot in her general direction, that said, her reaction time was easily sufficient to track bullet trajectories mid-flight and react to them. Despite this, X-23 was not an actual speedster, Naruto on the other hand was, he was barely even pushing the limits of his base speed and nowhere close to using his true speeds which came with the activation of his version 1 chakra cloaks, sage mode, karama chakra mode, six paths sage mode or any combinations of those modes, yet he had knocked out Julian before most of the new X-men could even so much as turn their heads to his new location. Worse yet was the fact that for all her experience, strategic mind and skill, X-23 sucked at communication in a combat situation, she had failed to tell her team leader of her plan to assist Hellion and had not asked for backup either, it was the kind of rookie mistake Naruto had punished fully trained Anbu with latrine duty in the Konoha's equivalent of an old people's home, a home specifically geared towards older ninjas, no one said he wasn't a vicious bastard. Naruto liked Laura a lot for a whole list of reasons. Primarily the fact that she freed him from five weeks of cryostasis and hellish experimentation by his captors. He felt a deep debt of gratitude to her for that one act of kindness and Naruto was perfectly aware that he was attracted to the girl on multiple levels. Wasn't anything that anyone would even consider remotely strong but it was an attraction that was undeniably present, he still wouldn't ever go easy on an ally for any reason, especially when they were making a silly mistake, so out of gratitude and a touch of affection for her. Naruto was determined to be harsher towards her than anyone else, and pain was the best teacher for these kinds of lessons. You should have told them your plan and asked for backup instead foolishly rushing in alone, with his piece said, Naruto performed a spinning sidestep to avoid a modified lunging kick from X-23, that had her foot claw pointed forward and ready to shank him in the liver. He promptly retaliated with his right elbow to her temple, the force of which would have knocked out just about anyone else and at the very least disoriented X-23 despite her regenerative healing, Laura however, blocked it with the outside of her right forearm and bicep, yet, the attack still retained enough power to knock her over two meters backwards. Not giving her pause to recover, 
Naruto pursued her with a vicious and extremely precise flurry of jabs and pokes at her various exposed nerve bundles and vital organs, retracting her claws in response to this. Laura quickly slapped the majority of Naruto's attacks aside, to her left or right, anything she couldn't redirect or block she let her healing factor heal. Seconds into their exchange Laura spotted an opening in Naruto's defense and capitalized on it with four consecutive punches aimed at his sternum, neck and face. Naruto blocked the first three with contemptuous ease, but as he went to block the fourth punch, his instincts flared and he instead slapped the blow to the side just as Laura's right hand claws shot out mid-punch and nearly skewered his left hand through the palm. Stepping forward in a follow-up movement, Naruto got within Laura's personal space and stomped down hard on her extended right foot, the satisfying crunch of shattered bone would have left anyone else screaming in agony and unable to put weight on that foot for even a second, Laura on the other hand didn't even so much as flinch. Instead knowing she would simply heal from the damage x23 jumped forwards and used the same injured leg to knee Naruto in the face or at least attempt to do so, with the palm of his right hand Naruto successfully blocked the knee attack while taking a single step back to give himself room, gravity reasserted itself and brought Laura back down to earth where she immediately attacked again. Raising his right leg which was currently in front of the rest of him, Naruto blocked a low kick from Laura's left foot, with her foot claw extended, the attack would have either severed his knee joint or hamstringed him, instead the bottom of his right boot caught her left shin and stopped her attack in its tracks, leaving her somewhat off balance and with all of her weight on her still healing leg. What was once a completely shattered right foot, now only had a series of hairline fractures running through the metatarsals and phalanges bones of her foot, still with her full body weight under that foot even x23 couldn't completely ignore the pain. As a result, for a split second, Laura was unable to suddenly shift her center of balance and react to Naruto's lightning fast shifts in momentum. A normal human would have had tough time spotting this, let alone taking advantage of such a weakness due to how stubborn Wolverine's clone could be and how fast she healed. Naruto on the other hand thrived on exploiting such opportunities in combat and he did so here for all it was worth. He might not have enjoyed hurting her but Naruto was first and foremost a soldier. His feelings and concerns had no place on the battlefield so redirecting his still extended foot that had blocked Laura's attempted low kick, Naruto drove it into her rib cage, with a sickening snap Laura's first and second ribs on her left side were shattered with brutal efficiency, forcing a gasp of pain and air from her lungs and out of her mouth, still she pushed through it and valiantly swiped at his throat with her left hand claws. Unfortunately Naruto extended his own bone claws and skewered Laura's incoming strike mid-swing, before it could pick up any momentum, Naruto's claws pierced between her ulna and radius, and punched all the way through to the other side in a rather gruesome spurt, his fist essentially keeping her arm stuck in place. Naruto didn't even stop for a second, with his left hand's index and ring fingers, Naruto jabbed at Laura's right shoulder in an impressive imitation of a gentle fist strike and severed the ligaments within, the fact that the gentle fist style did not break the skin made it look like Laura's hand had simply stopped working and flopped to her side uselessly. Naruto then shoved his palm into her sternum and pulsed his chakra once. Both her lungs collapsed as her breath shot out of her mouth explosively, meanwhile hidden from view just beneath her breast a ceiling matrix took form, a jab to the base of her throat instantly shut down her windpipe before three jabs specifically targeting the vagus nerve forced Laura into unconsciousness for a few seconds as she reeled in pain and shock from his assault. Naruto then withdrew his claws and punched her with his right hand in the sternum hard enough to shatter it and send Laura flying, the whole fight hadn't even lasted 10 seconds before Laura was completely incapacitated and flying across the danger room. It had lasted long enough for the new X-Men to get their shit together but not enough to even have hoped to change the end the result of this exercise. Target down, five to go, the utterly emotionless way Naruto said it, set everyone's hairs standing, while what had done to Hellion had been incredible, it was the way in which he so thoroughly took apart X-23 then drove home the fact that he way beyond their league, suddenly Naruto was a far more menacing opponent than the new X-Men had first presumed. A miniature sandstorm bloomed around Naruto as one of the mutants he was still unfamiliar with on personal level turned to sand and encircled him to cut off any escape, Soraya Kadir aka Dust, if he recalled correctly had an impressive ability and was using it rather skillfully, it reminded him of a cross between Gara's sand control Hauzuki clan's bloodline limit that allowed its members to transform into water and back into flesh. Naruto could tell just by looking, that at the speed her sand was revolving around him, it would shred his skin and flesh from his bones if he touched it. Soraya's sand form also had the benefit of cutting off his vision of the rest of her teammates and blocking his hearing, thanks to the roar her sand generated as the individual grains rubbed against each other. Normally he would simply track everyone with his Byakugan and various other sensory abilities right through the obstruction but he had promised the senior X-Men to go easy on the kids. This wouldn't even be worth calling a training exercise if he brought in something as overpowered as the Byakugan into the equation, even the use of his bastardized version of Gentle Fist, 
had learned from Hinata and used on Laura was pushing it, localized visual omniscience was way too much of a cheat to be used against such low-level opponents, not even Kakashi sensei was ever that cruel. Instead Naruto fell back on older well-tested tricks had learned from sparing with his friend the fifth case cage who had similar abilities, it would have been a simple matter for Naruto to inhale deeply, flash through the one-handed equivalent of the tiger, ox, dog, rabbit and snake hand seals before turning in the general direction the rest of the teenage mutants muttering wind release. Great breakthrough. As he exhaled, that wind release technique would have been more than sufficiently powerful for the task of blowing apart Soraya's sand, however using something like that was quite a bit above the level he felt was necessary for dealing with dust, for each person he had faced so far and those he was going to face, there was a specific strategy tailored to taking them down that targeted a weakness in their abilities or thought process. For Hellion, it was his overconfidence in his telekinesis, thus, Naruto disrupted his concentration and attacked him faster than his mind could process. For Laura it was her failure to communicate to her team about her plan of attack and her confidence in her regenerative ability, thus he had rapidly overwhelmed her and incapacitated her in such a way that she was permanently sidelined, not that she knew this yet. For Dust, who could shift herself freely from human form, into a form composed of sand and move like a miniature dust storm, she was doing exactly what she was supposed to do, where Laura and Julian were powerful but making mistakes by going off on their own. Soraya was acting as a smokescreen to keep her team hidden keeping him locked down in one position, whether her actions were based on teamwork or not was entirely up for debate but Naruto approved of her actions. If she had a single weaknesses though, it was her hesitation to try and shred him with her wall of sand that was circling him like a tiny cyclone, even if she didn't want to shred his flesh from his bones with her sand, if dust used her sand to converge on his position and wrap around him it could potentially immobilize him like Gara was so fond of doing, too bad she didn't think of something like that, he'd still probably pass her. However this didn't mean he would go easy on her, for while he did not use the wind release, great breakthrough technique on her, he didn't need to in the first place, all he really required was an outwardly expanding shockwave with him as its center to break through dust's wall of razor sharp winds and scatter her all over the danger room, and what was better at creating shockwaves than explosives. Dipping his left hand into his ninja tools pouch he pulled out half a dozen explosive tags and threw them at dust's revolving sand. The fact that the explosive seals were drawn open paper tags helped greatly when the tags got caught in air currents created by the rapidly oscillating sand and spread out evenly, with a one-handed ram sign Naruto pulsed his chakra and activated the seals while jumping straight upwards to the ceiling, the only one who knew he could stick himself to walls and ceilings was Laura and she was incapacitated currently. Soraya Kadir had no time to even react to the explosion as she found her sand form scattered all around the danger room from the explosion and its shockwave. The explosion had glassed a few bits of her sand and the shockwave had hit with enough force that had she been her human form it would have killed her instantly, seeing as she was still alive, it had merely battered her pretty badly and forced her to resume her human form, only one problem though, she had lost her burka again and left in nothing more than her sports bra and panties, luckily the smoke and dust from the explosion concealed her nakedness but this would last. As for the others, the shockwave was so forceful that it toppled everyone still standing except Rockslide. Naruto dropped from the ceiling and landed directly in front of Dust who did her best to conceal her half-naked form, her state of dress did not bother Naruto and in his opinion it should not have bothered Soraya, especially if she wanted to walk the path of hero. However in the past week, he had studied up on the various old and modern religions of earth, and in doing so he had learned that it was polite to respect and show tolerance to those of a different belief than your own, personally he didn't even understand why everyone was so worked up about other people not believing in the same gods themselves and it was one of the stupider reason for going to war than he learned about in this humanity's history. However Naruto did like that Jesus character, he had a really cool attitude and way of looking at life, unlike Kagaya and those those Otsutsuki bastards, so out of respect for Soraya's religious beliefs Naruto turned his head to the side while using his chakra to make a hooded cloak she could cover herself in in a plain anbu mask with no descriptive feature and only large eye holes to keep her face hidden. Soraya quickly donned the clothing Naruto had provided for her, clothing that despite being made out of his chakra was just like normal clothing and said, thank you. Sensing her embarrassment disappear Naruto turned to look at the young woman and said, don't mention it, however, consider that cloak the same as your surrender, you can of course continue fighting if you wish but if you somehow did manage to defeat me, that cloak would definitely disappear, plus after taking an explosion too, well everywhere, I think you need a rest, don't worry you did really well. M. She mumbled with nod of understand, target down, four to go then, Naruto said with surprising warmth in his voice this time, he would have even smiled at Soraya but he had to suddenly duck as with loud roar rockslide launched, Naruto mentally stumbled as he tried to process what he was seeing. Is that Santo Vakaro's own right arm he just threw at me? 
Naruto wondered even as he sprinted towards the living rock golem it would have been considered an impressive speed in the eyes of the new X-Men. Withdrawing a kanai with an explosive tags attached to it from his ninja pouch and two more loose explosive tags. He then the prepared to engage Rockslide from a distance, the mutant in question did not ignore the speed with which Naruto charged straight at him and prepared to pummel the red-headed ninja, spreading his legs apart he raised left arm with careful aim and when Naruto was seven years away blasted his other arm off in a literal rocket punch in hopes of catching Naruto by surprise. Instead of shock or panic, Naruto's eyes merely widened by a fraction as they adjusted to the unique attack, in response there was a bang and an explosive kanai lodged itself Rockslide's granite chest with enough force that it sent him staggering backwards, but that was just the beginning of the rock mutant's misery as he was introduced to the Naruto Uzumaki school of pain. Half second later and Naruto was less than 5 meters away from the stone giant, palming one of his loose explosive tags in each hand he increased his speed significantly so that time slowed to a crawl around him. At 3 meters from Rockslide he easily slid to the floor right under Rockslide's flying detached fist as it slowly flew overhead, then making the half ram seal Naruto pulsed his chakra once and activated explosive kanai still lodged in Rockslide's chests. Just for shits and giggles Naruto allowed himself to slide between Rockslide's legs for a distance of 5 meters before slapping both explosive tags onto the floor behind him, face upwards, the explosive kanai was already in the process of detonating on Rockslide's chest he did this but Naruto wasn't worried about the Santo, if nothing else the teen was durable, this would hurt for him but more like decent beating that taking an explosion to the face. Running straight up the wall till he was on the roof of the danger room, Naruto simply stopped in place via chakra to his feet and waited for the magic to begin, this was going to look good in the recordings when he watched them later with Wolverine, though the grouchy bastard might try to stab me for what I did to Laura earlier, I placed that seal awfully close to her breasts. Boom. All things considered it was not nearly the most dangerous explosive tag he could have used, hell. This one was the same type used in Anbu training exercises, powerful enough to fuck you up if you got caught in its explosion but weak enough that it wouldn't kill you, it was designed to throw an opponent via the shockwave it generated rather than outright kill you, it was still really really painful though. Rockslide got to experience this first hand when the tag in the center of his chest exploded and threw him backwards a clear 5 meters and would have gone a lot further had his body not passed over the two tags Naruto placed on the floor behind, instead. The first tag served merely to push him into the area of effect of the next two tags and seeing as his feet were clearly off the ground when the second set of tags which were not training tags exploded. Boom. That was what a real explosive tag sounded like, sure the arm less rock slide wasn't blown to bits but then that wasn't Naruto's intention, he wasn't trying to kill poor mutant, just hurt him a little, which was why as rock slide found himself propelled 30 meters into the air and Naruto smiled and dropped from the roof to give him a few love taps, or to be more precise, a really good kick. Whoever said that rock was inviolable, well Santo Vicaro's face would have easily disagreed them as Naruto kick left a spiderweb of cracks and boot print on his left cheek. An action that spun the living golem's body around so that he could better grab one off Rockslide's legs before Naruto twisted harshly and began whipping the mutant around in midair like a gigantic flail, after reaching a satisfying speed in seconds Naruto released Rockslide before casually reorienting himself for a silent landing. It would be a moment that all the remaining new X-Men would always remember as Rockslide helplessly careened through the air towards Mercury who was still disoriented from all the explosions, with literally no time to dodge or prepare herself the rock mutant smashed into the girl made of living Mercury really really hard and made her quite literally go splat. As for the rock mutant himself, he was already immobilized by sealing matrix Naruto had placed on him before throwing him at Mercury, it adhered him to the floor, as if he had been covered in super glue or something, he would not be getting up again. Target down. Free to go. Naruto spoke as he soundlessly alighted onto the floor, he then paused for a moment as he looked elixir inside saying, make that two to go. Favoring the golden skinned boy with a pitying look as he tried and failed to use his ability which apparently was some kind of healing to push out the chakra Naruto had left inside x23 body to restrain her, his chakra was slowing her regeneration to a crawl and if Josh Foley could have pushed any more out, she would have been back in the fight and easily become the most difficult of the group to put down. Unfortunately for elixir, while the fact that his healing ability could even affect Naruto's chakra was surprising to the ninja, that tactic had used was not, the golden skinned boy should have known better than to carelessly touch the body of someone that had been taken down by a shinobi, ally or not, it was a basic ninja principle taught to all medic nin. You should be more careful when attending to your patients on the battlefield healer, especially when you don't know the exact details of how they were taken down, who knows, what kit of surprises you might unleash, his words seemed to be carried on the wind itself as they reached Josh Foley and making him look up in shock, however it was already too late. The ceiling matrix on x23 chest cough definitely chest, 
glowed a malevolent red and activated, red kanji markings and other indistinguishable symbols burst forth from it and crawled their way up Elixir's body before wrapping around him tightly, the healer found himself utterly unable to move or speak after that. As I said, target down, two to go, you bastard, both her angry roar and the blast of electrical energy gave away Nariko's position as Naruto tilted his head out of the way, like her name indicated, her powers surged forth in arcs of lightning towards Naruto who merely replaced himself with one of Rockslide's discarded arms for the hell of it, he could have just as easily sidestepped the attack by moving 37 centimeters to the left. Her name is obviously a giveaway of her abilities. Even so, her attack is not bad, it looks like a cross between the lightning release, false darkness and electromagnetic murder techniques. Which means her powers are more like real lightning and I was correct to substitute myself instead of dodging it. Lightning always takes the path of least resistance, which in this case would have been straight into me, had I remained in the attack's vicinity, in that case the best place to be is over there, I might as well get this over with, Naruto thought as he made a beeline towards Rockslide's down form and the quickly reforming Mercury. Come back here bastard and take your punishment like a man, Surge yelled as she she chased after him at incredible speeds using her electricity to boost herself in a similar way to the fourth rakage albeit on a much much lower level. Still she was a heck of a lot faster than he expected, just not nearly fast enough to gain on Naruto unless he let her. He was however surprised when Surge for all her angry screaming moved to his flank and fired her next blast of electrical energy at him from there. So as not to accidentally hit the various blobs that were Mercury with her electrical discharges, while it was pretty blatantly obvious to anyone truly looking, that he was trying to create a friendly fire scenario. Naruto was secretly relieved that Surge cared enough to consider her teammates positions even when she angry. This was a simple test for the team leader, one she passed. Surge was clearly angry that he had taken out most of her team in under a minute and a half but not to the point where she would have been so lost in her anger as to carelessly zap Mercury in her attempt to get him, if she had done that he would have ended the exercise in an instant failed her. However even when gunning for him she seemed to have enough self-control to consider the positions of her allies, on top of that her usage of her powers to both move around and quickly and fire in arcing beams was pretty decent especially when Mercury suddenly reassembled herself and launched herself at Naruto with inhuman speed while he was blinded by the brilliance of Surge's attack, how naive. The ninja ducked under a decapitating swipe from Mercury even as Surge sprang forward with her speed while keeping a concentration of her power around her gauntlets which were clenched in fists, she apparently intended to physically punch him while simultaneous electrocuting him, good plan, good timing, wrong person to try it on. Throwing himself into a side flip over Surge's attack, Naruto sidestepped Mercury's second attack which once again utilized Surge's attack as a distraction, then raising his hand he caught Surge's electrified fists and while still holding it, drove his right foot into Mercury's gut as she came in for another attack, lightning that should have electrocuted Naruto as he held onto Surge's gauntlet was safely streamed through his body and out his foot into Mercury. The shock of all that electricity suddenly running through her system tore a scream of surprise from the metal girl's throat as she was found herself unable to move, playing possum as it's called on earth isn't a bad idea, unfortunately ninjas are hell of lot better at it. Your thinking is correct Mercury, using the brightness of Surge's attacks to distract me. Timing your attacks so that one of you is always attacking me from different directions and angles but never at the same time. Even pretending to reform so that you could surprise me when I got close enough was a good idea. This is the first show of any kind of teamwork I have seen so far today, I approve Naruto said with a cheerful smile before retracting his foot and letting her collapse to the floor as he shoulder checked Surge away from. However, if you are going to use Surge's bright electrical beams as a distraction to strike your opponent then remember that you are pretty shiny yourself, and for Kami's sake learn to run a little more quietly. All the girl could do was whimper in surprise as she struggled to get her body back under control. Naruto ignored this and merely turned to Surge and saying, As for you, nice try with the pincer maneuver, you and Mercury have good teamwork, her inorganic biology also meant that she can move at speeds and in ways that humans could never even dream of it's both impressive and useful that she could match your own speed even if momentarily, loved your coordination, however your simplistic usage of your powers leaves a lot wanting, for example, why don't you try shape your powers like this, Chidori, Sanban. A burst blue electrical energy surrounded Naruto's hand before changing shape into needles of lightning as he casually swung it in Mercury direction just as she began to get up sending her into another set of electrical spasms, Jia. Surge actually flinched as she heard her teammate scream and convulse on the floor behind him but kept a level head and instead asked, you have electrical powers too. Fishing for intelligence I see, my power is a weaponized version of life itself but for simplicity's sake let's just say, yes, with a single leap backwards he landed besides Mercury and stretched out his hand so that it flared with lightning chakra once more, but this time the chakra shifted wildly in Naruto's hands as he said, I can do this too, Shidori. Spear. 
Condensed lightning elongated into what Noriko Ashida could only call a lightsaber before growing even longer into what was undoubtedly a spear, using his training in Bujutsu under the Sandame Hokage in when the old man had some spare time, Naruto swung the Chidori spear around in an intricate and artistic pattern that actually left all those watching mesmerized for second before bringing it to a stop just above Mercury's stomach and saying, I would consider surrendering at this point, your entire team is out for the count and Mercury is my hostage now, on top that, there is no possible version of this fight in which you can win, you can either walk away from this having gracefully surrendered knowing you were utterly outmatched or I can stab Mercury so she doesn't interfere then kick your ass up and down till I get bored and end this fight anyway, what will it be? I surrender, good choice. A leader should always know when to surrender and when to fight. I am really relieved you didn't make me stab Mercury too, with his piece said, Naruto snapped his fingers for dramatic effect and cancelled the seals on X-23. Rockslide and Elixir so that the healer could wake up the downed team of new X-Men, his job was done and had fulfilled Wolverine's request, hopefully to the Mon's satisfaction, now where could he get some ramen before they reviewed the team's performance. They were all gathered in a mental plane engineered by Emma Frost and designed to look like an ordinary conference room, it was nothing special, just a place that they could get together to have private meetings away from the prying ears and eyes of the Office of National Emergency, and today's meeting would be one of the more memorable ones. The mental projection of James Howlett, Hank McCoy, Emma Frost, Scott Summers, Kurt Wagner, Peter Rasputin, Robert Drake, Samuel Guthrie, Elizabeth Braddock and Lucas Bishop sat around a conference table, most of the staff and other members of the X-Men were scattered all over the world and or universe in some cases, on various assignments or personal leave, those present were both the most easily accessible X-Men at the moment, and the ones that absolutely needed to be informed about the Naruto Uzumaki existence and his importance such as Storm. To that end drive, McCoy who had been tasked with studying and working closely with Naruto for the past week, was now prepared present a briefing to them on some of his findings, with the aid of Emma's telepathic abilities, Beast began projecting images, charts, personal notes and complex calculations around the room, for all to see, they were merely his memories but in here they appeared on tablets, screens, documents and various other devices capable of quickly disseminating information to everyone in the room. It took a moment for everyone to get settled in, time in which with a thought Hank projected a 3D image of Naruto Uzumaki in the middle of the conference table. The image was of the 19-year-old boy wearing an orange t-shirt, black cargo shorts and sandals, it was a memory of what Naruto wore just yesterday, Naruto's striking scarlet hair, single visible amethyst eye and impressively healthy physique lending the boy an aura that drew everyone's attention to him one way or another, which also served to hasten the start of the meeting as greetings were made and conversations died down. Let me begin by saying that our standard methods of classifying Naruto Uzumaki's abilities are not as effective as I would like. However they are perfect for appeasing O, N, E for the time being and keeping the government off the boy's back. For now, at least as far as our overlords are concerned. Naruto's abilities boil down to super speed, super strength, regenerative healing, bone claws in his right arm, extreme durability, extremely localized visual omniscience and very advanced energy manipulation, not to mention, he has been listed in the records as an omega level mutant. Beast paused for a moment to let this sink in before saying, This is technically not wrong. However, it also doesn't even begin to scrap the barest edges of Naruto's true abilities. Is he that powerful? Bobby Iceman Drake questioned with audible curiosity tinging his tone. Unlike many of the others who had had some kind of first had experience with Naruto, all Bobby had known going in was that Naruto was a mutant from another universe. To Beast's knowledge, the two had yet to even meet, face to face. Yet Naruto had no doubt observed Bobby at some point in the week with his left eye, his Byakugan. Yes, but not so much in the overt way you were thinking. The real threat of Naruto's power comes from the energy he specifically generates and the way he manipulates it. I would venture to say that it would better to think of it as casting magical spells. Despite this however, everything he does with his energy, or chakra as he calls it, technically falls 90% of the time within the range of what is theoretically believed achievable through science, Beast explained. He could understand Iceman's worry, considering Robert Drake was an alpha level mutant with omega level potential, omega level being pretty much synonymous for mutant powers with anything from continental to near planetary scale effects. So are his powers based in science or magic? Scott demanded. The leader of the X Men in his pragmatism wanted as many definitive answers on the subject of Naruto Uzumaki as possible. Unfortunately, for this particular question, Hank didn't have a definitive answer. Neither and both, Beast began. Ignoring the confusion on Cyclops' face he continued. Naruto's power is life and I mean that in a very literal sense. His people have literally learned how to weaponize their own life force and use it to manipulate reality around them. Don't get me wrong, 
they are not anywhere close to the scale of many of the reality warping superpowered individuals of our world. By Naruto's own confession, he is quite possibly the strongest chakra user on his planet, however, the problem is that everyone on his earth can do it or at least has the potential to learn how to do it. Beast finished with a finality to his tone that dismissed any doubts of his words. Silence had befallen the meeting as everyone save those who already knew Naruto and bit about his homeworld and culture, reeled in shock. Even if they couldn't warp reality on a massive scale, the idea that everyone on his planet could do so or at least had the potential to do so was a scary thought no matter how you looked at it, if some genius ever thought to somehow awaken the power of every chakra users and then combine that power for some goal, there was literally nothing they wouldn't be able to achieve, and if, heaven forbid, that genius just so happened to be evil, Beast shuddered at that thought, super geniuses like that were far too common on his earth. Everyone, it was as much a statement as it was a question but the sheer disbelief Iceman's tone best expressed the shock everyone was feeling. With a firm nod of confirmation Beast continued, yes. And Naruto's own power, while far weaker in scale when compared to what Wanda Maximoff or Stephen Strange can bring to bear. It is still not a weak power by any definition of the word. Again, by his own confession and after slewing through days of online articles and YouTube videos about anything and everything to do with our world, Naruto stated that he could wipe out 99,9% of humanity in day, that remaining 0. 1% of the surviving population would mostly be composed of superhumans capable of surviving the rigors of space, and most of them would be beings capable of replicating such a feat with ease anyway, beings like Thor or Hulk once he's angry enough. He can blow up the planet, Sam Cannonball Guthrie exclaimed incredulously. Thankfully and much to the relief of everyone in the room, Beast firmly shook his head in denial of this claim, saying, no. He's not that strong but he could potentially shatter a tectonic plate and set off dust clouds large and thick enough that they would blot out the sun and choke anything on the planet more complex than a single-celled organism to death, excepting of course, certain select super-powered individuals, throw in the fact that he has a certain amount of control over the wind and you get the idea. But he wouldn't do something like that right, this time it was Aurora Munro aka Storm who asked. She was concerned about the mental stability of a boy with that much power, she of course could do something on a similar scale if she really cut loose, probably, however, there was a certainty to Hank's voice that left most of the gathered X-Men more than a bit uncomfortable, not to mention as Queen of Wakanda she needed to know if this boy was a direct threat to the world and by extension her new people. Fortunately for us, no he wouldn't, for all Naruto's incredible power at such a young age, I believe that even if he thought of doing such a thing, Naruto would never act on it, his empathic abilities, his deep connection to nature, general friendliness and the fact that he views himself as a soldier that exists to protect humanity or some of these limiters, don't get me wrong. Beast said holding up his hands to prevent any interruptions. Naruto is a trained killer and will not even hesitate to kill as many people as he deems necessary, provided he truly believes it's necessary and for the benefit of the world, worse yet, his powers also perfectly equip him with whatever tools he would need to kill almost any individual on the planet you can think of, barring a very very select few, however. The boy has a surprisingly strong moral compass and is a genuinely a nice person, a joy to be around even. You vouch for him Hank? Elizabeth Betsy Braddock aka Psylocke asked, she had only encountered Naruto a handful of times and they had never talked outside of a quick introduction and a sparring match to figure out what he could do, now she was being placed with the responsibility of watching over him and helping him adjust to life on earth while they figure out a way to send him back to his native reality. Beast smiled warmly as he thought back to the week he had spent with little more than the company of the scarlet-haired ninja in his lab, it had been a very productive and instructive week, plus just like with Logan and Emma, Naruto had wormed his way into Beast's heart, yes, in the week he has been here, I have been in contact with him more than anyone else amongst the staff and we've built a healthy rapport, you could even say we're friends, sort of. Sort of? Emma asked with a dark amusement lacing her delicate features, she was one of the few who knew exactly how close he and Naruto had gotten over the week bonding over science, Shed called it, her comment just now however, was just the former white queen's attempt at making him elaborate on his own comment for the sake of those not in the know. Sighing in exasperation Beast replied, Naruto respects me and acknowledges the fact that I am quite knowledgeable about the world around us. He says I remind him bit of the third leader of his village. A man who was as famous for his power and kindness as he was his wisdom and vast reserves of knowledge. Honestly I would have liked to have met this Hiruzen Serutobi myself. He must have been pretty interesting to have gained the moniker the professor. Getting back on track, we all have enemies and we all know that both the good guys and the bad would kill for the chance to manipulate someone as powerful and unique as Naruto. As a scientist, a hero, an educator and dare I say, his friend, it would be unwise of me to not keep an eye out on Naruto in case anyone tried anything and something triggered that unlikely worst case scenario where he destroys our world, the same goes for all of you. 
he needs protection from the threats of our world, he is a fellow mutant after all. Understood. What else can you tell me about his powers? Have they or his genetic code been of any use to you in reversing the effects of M-Day? Scott asked, demanding answers to another one of the more pressing issues he and every mutant remaining on the planet were dealing with. To answer you latter question first, unfortunately no. Beast began much to the disappointment of everyone who was hoping for a breakthrough. They had all been hoping that Naruto being from another universe would be able to provide a solution to the problem where they were unable to find one in this universe. Naruto explained the history of his world, or as much of it as he knew and it helped put a few things in perspective. One major factor in his planet's development was the arrival of a humanoid alien species that went on to eat from their own, albeit vastly weaker version of Yggdrasil, what they called the God Tree. You're saying they have a version of the world tree the Asgardians are always going on about. For the first time since the meeting began Logan spoke up, showing a real interest in the turn the conversation had taken. The man had once said to Beast that his instincts kept telling him the boy was somehow similar to a god and Beast had come to trust Wolverine's preternatural instincts, and even if Beast didn't already trust Logan's instincts, what had learned from Naruto plus the whole event earlier today when Naruto claimed a goddess had come to visit him would have still confirmed that the feral man was right still Beast had a question to answer. Hank opened the palm of right hand, splaying his fingers out as he shook it from side to side while replying. Um, I am saying it's vastly weaker with emphasis on vastly, however it is still a tree that if eaten from gives godhood or something very similar to what the fruit of the world ash we know of can grant, what I am also saying, is that an alien ate from this tree while visiting his world's humanity in the past and that this alien conceived a child with a human noble and that child became the god of ninjas according to Naruto a god from whom Naruto is directly descended. A direct descendant of the god of ninjas, this shit keeps getting better and and better, it also explains a lot Logan commented in amusement before falling silent, satisfied with the explanation it seemed. Still how does this affect his genetic code, how does it keep him from helping us, Scott wasn't clueless about biology and knew enough to know that it had to be something in Naruto's genes that was keeping him from being of any use to mutant kind. You need to understand that Naruto does not comprehend mutants and humanity to be two distinct species. To his people there is little distinction between mutant and human despite the fact that there are those among his people known as bloodline limit users who on our earth would be classified as mutants. To them there are only regular humans, who are just about everyone that hasn't been trained to use chakra and those who have been trained in the use of chakra. Collectively this latter category falls under the umbrella of shinobi but in truth. It houses other groups that use chakra but have not been trained in the same manner as shinobi, groups such as samurai and certain monks for example. Bloodline users also fall under the wide protective aegis of this category, Beast said, going on a tangent again rather than getting straight to the point like Scott would have preferred, unfortunately for their leader Hank wanted everyone to get the full picture. That, it sounds nice, Betsy said in a wistful tone, all mutants knew what it meant to be persecuted so the idea that the ninjas of Naruto's world really didn't care did sound nice. Indeed, more often than not the mutants of his world are valued for the uniqueness of the powers they bring to the table by his world's governments, rather than shunned, still in one country he knows of, there were purges of all mutants in its population which ended in a civil war that their mutants and those that backed them won, but only after years of bloodshed, Beast explained, though he really was getting off topic now. As interesting as this is we are getting off topic and you have yet to answer the question Hank. Indeed, there are many of these clans of bloodline users or mutants in Naruto's world, as I said, they are valuable to their country's governments for reasons I won't get into right now, what is important right now however is that most of these clans are human, or rather, they are human as defined by the people of Naruto's world, unfortunately despite coming from a notable clan himself, Beast never got to finish the sentence as someone else figured out what he was getting at first. Naruto is not, Bishop interrupted, correct, remember those alien gods I talk about and how Naruto is the descendant of the god of shinobi, Beast asked reminding everyone of what had said earlier. So he's part god, Cannonball quickly concluded, more than that. He has divine, alien, mutant and some other unknown DNA in him that I can't even figure out how to classify let alone understand. All of it is blended together in a very special very unique way that would bore you to death if I bothered to try and explain. Beast explained with a shrug, there came a time, quite often even, when a scientist found themselves simply out of their depth. What you need to take away from this is simply that his DNA is extraordinarily complex. The kind of thing I would ask Reed Richards for help deciphering, and even if that wasn't the case, the X gene he got from Laura has bonded with his more alien genes in such a way that it will quite frankly take a lot of time and studying before I can even think of using that data to come up with a hypothesis on how to reverse the effects of M Day. That's not even getting into the fact that Chakra literally altered the way mutations work on his world, it's all very complex. So he will be of no use to us on that end, Scott said with a cold pragmatism. 
I didn't say that, the kid is a walking, breathing miracle in my opinion, if an organization like AIM ever got wind of what he truly is, they'd roll up on campus tonight and try and take him from us by force regardless of casualties and consequences, that said, the samples of his DNA I have to work with are simply full of raw potential and it will take time, effort and a lot of study for something refined to be produced out of it, I might be able to find a solution, just not any time soon. Scott nodded and simply said, in other words, I need to give him more incentives to continue staying here or at least remaining closely affiliated with us until he leaves. Indeed, Beast replied, his face morphed into a look of shame and then disgust as he added. I do not even remotely like the idea of trying to bind him to us and keep him here. It disgusts me on every level, unfortunately he might be a solution for reversing our problem, in which case I need access to him, onto other matters, his chakra is as I mentioned earlier, better to be thought of in the same light as magic, it's an extremely malleable reality shaping power, however it lacks some of the, and pardon my wording, bullshit that any self-respecting man of science would associate with magic. So it is like science, Storm asked finding this Naruto Uzumaki more and more interesting by the second, it looks like magic to the casual observer but it follows the rules, Beast clarified. The rules? What rules? Cannonball asked, the universe is governed by rules. This a fact whether you approach a problem from a scientific point of view or a magical one. Chakra mostly follows those scientific principles that govern the universe and I emphasize mostly, magic on the other hand only sometimes follows these scientific rules seeing as it has its own set rules on what is and isn't possible in every given situation, if you want details on magic then find a magic user and ask, I am a scientist, Beast said brushing of any further questions about magic that the younger and dumber X-Men might try and ask him, he wasn't magician so why would he know? So what can the kid actually do? I mean, I've seen some in our spars but you've been studying him, Logan asked, the warrior in the man was curious and in each of the spars they had had Beast had demanded that Naruto hold back severely so that they didn't trash his lab or the danger room. So far I've seen him stand, walk and run on horizontally and vertical surface without being affected by gravity. I've seen him do pretty much the same on water, he can gather the various gases in the air and rearrange them in such a way that they form something similar to a monomolecular blade. He can create sentient clones of himself that relay any information they discover back to him upon being dispelled. His scrolls are pocket dimension with which to store item and his seals are for all intents and purposes written codes that hack into the base code of the universe and enforce any changes he desires in a localized area. Honestly that's perhaps his most terrifying power yet, however this doesn't even touch on the fact that he can manipulate fire, water, earth, air and lightning, can fly and do hundreds of other things, the list is just too long and it would be easier to make a list of what he can't do and what he hasn't learned how to do yet. In that case we will get back to this topic later. Let's talk about the 198, Sam, you and your sister have been handling a lot of the day-to-day -day logistics there, how are, and so went the meeting for the next hour, as they tackled various other mutant-related topics but none of them could really put Naruto out of their head completely. V V V. a somber mood surrounded the new X-Men as they all sat together in the lounge, the only one missing being David Allen, who had joined them earlier and then left as soon as they were released from the training exercise by Wolverine. It had been bad enough for everyone's self-confidence that the whole team had been annihilated in under two minutes when Naruto was holding back, Wolverine himself had afterwards testified to as much for any non-believers, however that was nothing to how pathetic they were left feeling after Naruto and Wolverine tore into each of them laying their faults bare for all to see. Flashback, Naruto sighed as everyone finished watching him punt their collective assess from one side of the room to the other on the screen. Having destroyed them and more importantly their confidence so easily had left the team of teenage mutants all feeling rather down at the moment, watching the video recording of the training session in the observation deck of the danger room for analysis purposes had only highlighted how far beyond the new X-Men, Naruto really was, but this was just the beginning. Cyclops wanted Naruto to thoroughly tear down their preconceived notions of combat and battle so that Logan and Emma could build the team back up, better, stronger and smarter, and by that, they meant him poking at all their mistakes and giving the kids a bit of advice after kicking their asses hard, the seven of them plus Wolverine and a depowered mutant named David Aline, who had been invited by Logan himself shifted to form a semi-circle around Naruto, as he stood to address them. With a sigh of resignation Naruto began, okay, I am impressed with you lot. I honestly thought you would all suck a lot more than this but you were genuinely not as bad as I feared and better than I hoped, perhaps not beyond what I imagined you were potentially capable of but still an impressive team. You have a lot of potential and different talents that if used correctly will make you a very formidable team in the near future, that said, you 95% completely failed this exercise and if it was up to me I'd drop everyone except Dust, Mercury and Surge from the team. What? The outrage and shock in their voices as they registered his final comment was music to Naruto's ears, 
no wonder Junin senseis loved screwing with their teams so much, he darkly mused to himself. Oh, those adorable looks of surprise and outrage, well hello there, it's been a while. Naruto said in a way that even the densest idiot would be able to tell that he was mocking them. The new X-Men bristled at this and leveled him with their combined glares in response to this, yet Naruto remained completely unfazed, head faced down in rage tailed beasts that could spit balls of energy capable of reshaping the landscape with outputs in the mega joules and sometime giga joule ranges, their glares were about as intimidating to him as a glaring slug, and not the fierce kind like Katsuyu or Saiken, just an ordinary glaring slug, it was honestly quite amusing. Ahem. Naruto blinked as Wolverine cleared his throat in obvious attempt to get things back on track. The feral grin on Logan's face as he looked away from the kids did not hide the mutant's amusement from Naruto. He was enjoying Naruto tearing into the kids, especially because as far as Naruto could tell. Wolverine wanted them to get stronger more than any other member of the X-Men, that's not to say that the others didn't care about the kids, just that for some reason Wolverine was a lot more invested in improving their combat skills and survival chances, the only one he didn't seem worried about was X-23, or rather he worried about completely different things whenever it came to his daughter, not survival, never combat. Naruto put aside such thoughts for the moment, his actions so far were not without purpose and he was in the middle of making a point, a question was asked by the senior X-Men before this exercise began, was your victory against the purifiers and Nimrod a fluke or was it a promise of something to come? You could even say that the whole point of this exercise was to determine the answer to that question, well, congratulations kids, we got our answer, now do you want to know what we've found? cause I will tell you right now, the answer does not look good for you. Conflicts between ninjas happened on multiple levels simultaneously, with physical and mental conflicts being the most prevalent, sure it was mostly the Yamanaka clan and few other yin release specialists who used full-blown telepathy, but most ninjas could use genjutsu and all ninjas were taught or forced to learn how to wield their intent, the most prevalent form of this being killing intent. Killing intent was a formidable tool in the hands of a fully trained ninja. Psychological warfare, weaponized and turned into an art, Every Junin level ninja and above could make most Chunin and below see their own deaths with a single burst of concentrated killing intent, they could stop a civilian's heart and convince Genin to commit suicide with ease, and Kami forbid a cage, S rank ninja or Jinchuriki ever blasted you with killing intent cause theirs was on such a high level that it could take the fight right out of an entire army. Naruto's intent had always been particularly strong. He had personally resisted the killing intent of a goddess and lived his whole life with an angry thousand-year-old tailed beast that until a few years ago hated his guts. His only defense being his own intent and willpower, he was also someone capable of amazing acts of forgiveness and warping the way people saw the world until they saw things from his perspective with charisma and positive intent alone, ultimately he rarely ever needed to unleash his killing intent and preferred to manifest his will as something positive in most situations, this wasn't one of those situations. It was just a sliver of the ungodly levels of killing intent someone of his power and skill could have released. Yet every single members of the new X-Men immediately stilled as they felt a cold hand clamp around their hearts and every hair on their body stand in alarm. Their danger senses were all flaring to life and screaming at them to get the hell away from Naruto or they would die, yet they were powerless to even move under his weighty gaze. Naruto held their gaze for a second, his eyes clearly judging them and finding them wanting. The aura surrounding him and the feeling flowing off of him in waves went beyond just standing in the presence of a predator, it was like staring down the grim reaper and knowing that it was your time, yet, he released all of them an instant later with a dismissive snort, and to the new X-Men, this felt like the reaper had simply lost interest in them and wandered off to take someone else's soul. With a collective gasp for air that was no longer in their lungs, the group of teenage mutants would have collapsed where they stood had they not already been seated on the floor. Even so they found themselves wrestling to get their heartbeats back under control now that they were free of Naruto's gaze, not a single one of them had been able to so much as inhale while Naruto's gaze was upon their heads and shoulders. Even so, Naruto had not hit all of them with the same amount of killing intent, some like Surge and Mercury had been blasted with significantly less of the overwhelming psychological attack and thus the leader of the new X-Men had enough wits about her to ask, you say we've failed and that we are a disappointment, is this what the senior X-Men believe or what you believe? Personally Naruto was happy that Surge was standing up for her team, a leader needed to be able to do that much at least, plus, the whole point of this exercise was to humble the kids and force them to realize that they needed each other, that, and a shitload of more training, however, he still had to keep in character, oh I see, my opinion is worth less than nothing to you, isn't it? I am an outsider from another universe so even if I told you that at the rate you are going, someone on this team will come home in a body bag or not at all, you will probably just dismiss my words as nonsense, well then, Logan don't you think they should hear this from the source? TCH. You have no people skills kid, you know that right? It was a rebuke but there was no bite to his words. 
In fact you could say there was a fair amount of fondness in it towards Naruto, this was not surprising, not after the many many hours Naruto and Wolverine had spent sparring and conversing while he was being tested for everything by Beast. The two were warriors and Naruto had always been great at making friends out enemies had encountered on the battlefield, it helped that Wolverine was always game for a spar against anyone not afraid of his claws. In an almost complete reversal of his demeanor just moments ago Naruto cheerfully replied, not true, I have amazing people skills when I can bother to use them, however you didn't ask me to be their friends, you asked me to shine a light on all their flaws and poke em with pointy stick. Nodding in acknowledgement Wolverine turned to the team of teenage mutants, some of whom were gawking at his and Naruto byplay and said, despite the harsh way Naruto said it, he's not wrong, you kids have gotten kinda arrogant lately and it will get you killed, my sister over there has the highest chance of survival out of all of you but even with my regeneration and claws, she, is, not, invincible. None of you are. So quit acting like you can't die and take this shit seriously. Logan literally growled at the end of that statement making the kids flinch, then motioning for Naruto to continue from where he left it, even as Wolverine folded his arms behind his head and leaned back against the wall. Cracking his his knuckles to get everyone's attention so they wouldn't get too gloomy Naruto smiled and said. So where to begin, right? How about Mr. Keller, ya know that flash of light that distracted you when you tried to hold me still with your telekinesis at the beginning of the exercise. It came from a paper tag with a ceiling matrix on it that I dropped when you all walked in, I was even polite about it by dropping my stun tag right in full view of all of you and then stepping on it in a very obvious way, that should have raised red flags in your heads, instead you all treated it as a simple discarded piece of paper. But you set that up before the exercise even began, that's not fair. Hellion protested with the rest of his team minus X-23, in full agreement behind him, Naruto's action had been taken before the training exercise even began, in their minds, it was unjust and utterly unfair, unfortunately that was exactly the kind of foolish thinking he was trying to tear out of their minds. That's the point, fights are never fair, much less fights against a ninja. Even with my lack of knowledge of this earth's many many customs, I dare you to name a single ninja you know of that fights fair, and before you try to deny it. Everybody here already knew I am ninja before even walking in here, more importantly, since when have mutants of all people expected the world to be a fair place, you better than anyone, should know better, Naruto scolded, receiving silence and looks of shame. Sighing tiredly Naruto said, your enemies are not going to wait for you to say let's begin. Every time you end up in a fight, they will always try to skew the battle to their own advantage before it even truly begins. Thus, you need to learn to assess the situation in an instant and take actions based on your final judgment. So the next time you see an opponent doing something shady like dropping a random piece of paper. Assume that it might be important, especially when it came from your opponent's hand, it might seem paranoid but it could save your lives, me, I was being incredibly lenient on you, I showed you the tag, I then stepped on it showing you where it was and only activated it after I officially said the exercise had began, seriously, if I had followed normal procedure you wouldn't have even seen it coming, let alone me. Ahem. Everyone turned to Logan as he coughed loudly into his hand looking somewhat conflicted at the fact that he was the one trying to keep the peace and reign in Naruto. What Naruto is trying to say is we expected better. The battle begins the minute that you identify your opponent, you will assume nothing of your foe and be prepared for anything, an old ronin taught me this nearly a hundred years ago while I was in Japan and it's served me well ever since, this is the mindset you kids need to adopt if you want to have a hope of survival, even if I never said you would specifically fight Naruto. I did inform you that you would be undergoing a training exercise with Kid Ninja here. Oi, Naruto loudly protested the strange nickname. Ignoring him, Logan continued, so I at least expected those of you who've met him. To not underestimate him and warn your teammates not to underestimate him, Naruto himself told you that you would be fighting him 7 on 1 and that he would be pretty much holding back, your best chance would have been to work together and find a way to take him down, instead Hellion immediately attacked assuming he could actually take Naruto something I personally find rather amusing and everything went to hell after that. Look, we are not trying to take a dump all over you by just pointing out all of your failures and reminding you of all the ways you could have done better. We're doing this so that at the end of the day you all get to go home, earlier you called what I did with a stun tag unfair and you were right, it wasn't, however, mutants better than anyone know that the world is not a fair place and ninjas know this better than even mutants, life is short and things like fighting fair will only get you killed where I come from. Okay. We will talk about that later Naruto cause we are getting way off topic, Logan interrupted, realizing that the topic was getting a little heavy and vying of course. Acknowledged, getting back on track then, let's discuss what went wrong, Naruto said. Josh Foley raised his hand and said, ah, you kicked our collective assess in under two minutes flat. Shaking his head in the negative Naruto replied, I could have done that in 30 seconds or in 30 minutes, it wouldn't have made the slightest difference to me, so no, that's not where everything went wrong. 
We were overconfident and we lacked intel, Laura supplied, it was a marginally better answer. Nodding in affirmation Naruto replied, a wonderful start there Miss Kinney, before the exercise began, Mr. Logan went to great lengths to ensure that I knew nothing about the powers of elixir, surge, rockslide and dust, not that it's particularly difficult to infer what your powers are with codenames like that, nevertheless, I was given no intel on you, as for Hellion, Mercury and X-23. All I knew about what you could do was based on what I had seen you do at the facility and some educated guesses, you three and by extension the rest of your team was equally unaware of my capabilities save what had been witnessed at the Weapon X facility, this was done to level the playing field a bit, unfortunately you failed to take advantage of that. But you didn't even use the same abilities as at the facility, Hellion, Mercury and X-23 told us about how you could make force fields, energy chains, energy bombs, sense life signs and stuff like that, but you didn't use any of it, you even said you wouldn't, Surge complained. Of course I wouldn't, that was me skewing the playing field to my advantage. Rendering enemy plans for me useless, you can't plan for what you don't know about. It's a basic battlefield strategy, besides a ninja's special techniques are not something we just whip out every single time we get into a fight. Or at least we try not to whip out the same technique twice if we can help it. If someone sees a move repeatedly they will naturally create countermeasure for it. Naruto explained with a tone that all but said this is common sense kids before adding. Plus, I am not trying to kill you, so dropping energy bombs as you put it was out of the question. On the other hand, I clearly displayed incredible speed and strength in that battle at the facility, something Hellion, Mercury and X-23 all saw, yet you didn't formulate any kind of preparations to deal with that, unless you were relying on Hellion to subdue me with his telekinesis, in which case I didn't see any attempt to protect the only person that could potentially deal with my speed, from a counterattack. X-23, Josh was quick to bring up and was just as quickly shot down. Miss Kinney merely anticipated I would go after Hellion due to her battlefield wisdom and vast experience that trumps all of yours combined. But that wasn't a team plan, the rest of you did not even know why she was doing what she did, otherwise Miss Ashida, Miss Kadir and Miss Kincaid would have been able to react fast enough to keep up with her, and maybe keep me from taking Miss Kinney out of the fight, maybe even by Mr. Keller a few more seconds, Naruto finished with a smug smirk in Hellion's direction. It did not go unnoticed and it set something off inside Julian who glared at the red-headed ninja and yelled, You sound so confident that you are better than us. How is it you ended up trapped by those weak pukes at that Weapon X facility again? Naruto snapped his fingers as if something had just clicked in his head. Im, good point, I don't know yet how I was captured but I should probably look into that. When I woke up I was already exhausted to the point I would have easily fallen into coma. So it wasn't particularly hard for those bastards to stick me in a cryostasis pod and keep me in a weakened and unfed state for seven weeks, as they experimented on me, if they tried to capture me now however, let's just say they'd deeply regret it, a better question would be, what the hell can knock me out at all and drag me from my native reality into a completely different universe, that end, is it going to come back? But those are questions for another day, the point is yes, I am better than you in combat Mr. Keller, better than all of you, I lived through a superhuman world war, fought gods and I've been a ninja for 15 years. Superhuman world war? Like our superhero civil war? Mercury asked, finding the idea rather incredulous, the team had learned more about Naruto in the last hour than they had known since they had first laid eyes on him a week ago, all of them save X-23. Worse. Naruto replied with single word and a haunted look in his eyes, as if reliving some particularly painful memories before he shook his head and said, but that is a story for another time. The point of this meeting is to review our actions so we don't make the same mistakes, and trust me there were a lot of mistakes but there were also things that were impressive, first I want to congratulate Miss Ashida. Yes? She asked surprised at being singled out by Naruto. You were the last woman standing and wisely chose to surrender. A good leader knows when to surrender and when to fight. You are the leader of this team and you've got the loyalty of your teammates even if it's reluctant in some cases, Naruto said with subtle motioning of his head to Hellion. What you lack is experience as a leader and skill in harmonizing and augmenting the various elements of your team, unit cohesion, keeping the team's general temperament cool, keeping team morale high, etc. This will all come with time and getting to know each other better, even if you want always like each other. However, you don't have a lot of time, your enemy is not going to wait around for you to become the leader that the X-Men think you could be. So here are a few workarounds for your problem that I can immediately point you towards. Learn your limitation. Learn your teammates' limitations and realize the resources they bring to the table and then delegate tasks to others. If they are better and or more suitable to taking up a tasks than you in the first place. Then leave it to them, for example, Ms. Kinney on her own utterly eclipses this entire team combined in combat experience and strategic planning, 
Asking her opinion or analysis in a tactical situation will greatly help your team. If you wish you could even let her plan your attacks, you don't have to come up with the plan. Your job is merely decide whether the team should go forward with the plan. Is it in your team's best interest? Is it part of your objective? What are the risks and rewards? Is it worth it? Things like that? Um, Serge's reply was unintelligible but she clearly had a very thoughtful look on her face. Naruto turned to Hellion this time and said, Julian Keller. You are powerful and have an ability that is difficult for most people to beat, however you are arrogant and hot-headed, make no mistake, there is a place for that, but where that place is not, is in front of an enemy you are about to confront, your leap before you look attitude can and will get your teammates killed, in fact if we switched me for Nimrod and you took the exact same actions, then your friends would have all died or been as good as dead. Yeah, but I wouldn't have approached this the same way if it was Nimrod and I wouldn't have hesitated either, besides, this was just a training exercise, Hellion protested. And that's why you fail, I have no doubt the X-Men have told you repeatedly to treat these training exercises as real life threatening situations, what? Did you think I would be easy to take down, you don't know anything about me and I use that against you, I honestly admire your power Mr. Keller, especially cause of how much it can change the flow of battle and its capacity to save lives, I hear, that you and Mr. Foley do not get along much, yet of everyone here, the two you are best suited to saving the lives of your teammates, talk about irony, Naruto finished with a chuckle. Hellion said nothing but his expression was clearly one of surprise, as if he had never considered the idea of using his powers to save his teammates instead of attack his enemies, but then again, the kid didn't seem that bright. With a smirk Naruto asked, surprised, it's true, your defensive abilities are infinitely more valuable to this team than your offensive abilities. Just by being on this team, you, Miss Kadir and Mr. Foley drastically increase the chances of everyone getting home safely should all hell break loose. Your telekinetic barriers aren't weak and you can move injured comrades out of the line of enemy fire without risking yourself. Compared to your offensive abilities it might seem lame but it's invaluable on the battlefield and will save lives, yet you seem to enjoy standing out and attracting all the attention to yourself, that said, the only thing for you to train in is your concentration, but you already know that, so I will leave you with one last piece of advice Mr. Keller, a nail that stands out too much will always get hammered back down first, make of that what you will. I get it. Hellion growled, a little bitterness tinging his voice. Moving on to Laura whom had had resist the urge to favor since the training exercise began so as not to be biased. Naruto said, Laura Kinney, your combat skills are nothing to sneeze at and your experience and battlefield wisdom are worthy of praise. Proof of this, is simply the fact that you accurately predicted I would target Mr. Keller before anyone else and moved to intercept me. You are versatile, strategically flexible and have a will of iron. You gave me the most difficulty in subduing without using something more drastic and you need the least combat training of everyone on this team. However your poor communication skills are a threat to your team. Due to your vast experience, you have insights in varying situations that wouldn't even occur to the rest of your team, yet you failed to voice them, had you explained to Surge that I was going to go after Hellion due to his telekinesis being the most immediate threat to my abilities you might have bought him a few seconds more and you definitely wouldn't have been taken out of the fight so quickly, polish your communication and social skills especially in combat and you will be fine. Understood, was her not quite cold response, it sounded bland but had enough of a little something to it that Wolverine Silent raised a brow at his daughter before chuckling to himself. Ignoring Logan and turning elixir, Naruto smiled at the golden-skinned teen and said, Josh Foley, on my homeworld whenever two ninja squads get into any kind of conflict it's standard procedure to eliminate the medics first. So long as a medical ninja can heal his injured comrades. Those comrades can continue to fight, in that regard you are the most dangerous member of this team. Which is why I personally think you are the one who needs the most work. From looking at your musculature and your reaction time during the fight, you are this team's weakest link, yet this team cannot hope to survive without you. You should focus on improving your martial arts skills, both armed and unarmed, your awareness of traps is also pretty horrible, particularly traps placed on your patients, also get a ranged weapon like a gun and develop general awareness of the state of the battlefield. Logan looked up alarmed at this interrupted saying, Ah, Naruto. He's a minor and even for an adult guns require licenses and specific conditions for them to be used without getting into trouble with the law. A minor would never legally be permitted to carry a gun, it also doesn't paint the most heroic image. Blinking in surprise Naruto replied, Oh, what if it shot bolts of electricity or something else more esoteric? I am pretty sure I've seen dozens of heroes and villains use ranged weapons like that without any problems from the law. I am also confident that drive. McCoy can make something like that. I bet he can, if he has the time, I also think I like the idea so I will teach Foley how to shoot, it also being a tech based weapon like that wouldn't be as much of a big deal as an actual gun, 
I guess I will teach him armed and unarmed combat while I am at it, so Foley, from now on you're with me kid, Logan said, relishing the look of despair on Elixir's face as he said this. Got it, was all Elixir could reply reluctantly, turning to the living rock golem that was Rockslide. Naruto said, Santo Vicaro, Rockslide, you didn't do anything wrong and by that I mean. You didn't anything different from what anyone looking at you would have expected you to be able to do. You are strong, you are tough, you are loud and you are kind of dumb. That's what people see, when they see you, no thanks to YouTube. But I think you can be so much more if you are willing to work hard at it. Who's to say that you can't be silent and stealthy or that you can't be a great tracker? Just because you are made of rocks doesn't mean you can't be fast or awesome at hand-to-hand -hand combat. You can be so much more if you try, most people will look at you and say you should take on every blow head-on. They something like you should become a walking. What's the word again, oh yeah, a walking tank, they will tell you to tank every blow, I say, do it if you want to, but, you can always be so much more, in short, don't limit yourself because of what other people say you are capable of, you are the only one who gets beside that, this true for every one of you but Rockslide is the one that needs to understand this most. Hum, Rockslide's response literally sounded like rocks rubbing against each other but he seemed pleased and thoughtful. Turning his attention to Mercury, Naruto smiled at her. He hadn't yet gotten around to talking to her about what happened to her at the facility and would soon make that a priority. For now he simply said, Cecily Kincaid, nice work. Aside from with electricity, it takes a lot to hurt you physically and your reaction time wasn't too bad once you got your head out of the gutter and started taking this seriously, your physiology's in human nature allows to you bend, contort, move and even hit in ways most humanoid beings can never replicate, look into this aspect of your powers more and polish it up, watching online footage of Mr. Fantastic and Hydroman should be informative. Thanks, she quietly replied, with a nod Naruto turned towards Dust and said, Soraya Kadir, you are another particularly stubborn person to take down without causing massive damage to the environment, I had a friend who lived in a desert and could control sand, not quite like you do but fighting you leaves me feeling pretty nostalgic, anyway, with a name like Dust I assumed you could control Dust, not turn into it. Why yeah, Soraya replied sounding a bit unsure of herself. You did well overall always trying to surround me or shred me to pieces if I was careless and too aggressive. You also seem to have a better understanding of your abilities when in combat than most. Outside of simply being outclassed, you didn't actually do anything wrong. You should know however that you are an invaluable resource to this team as a living smokescreen. It probably sounds lame but then again, I am a ninja. Smokescreens and diversions are my best friend, your abilities are perfect for distractions, allowing your teammates to retreat formulate plans in enemy territory in the midst and attack, ambushes and a hundred other things, you, Hellion and Elixir are the most important members of this team when it comes to physically making sure everyone gets home safely, also watch Sandman videos online, they should give you a few ideas, Naruto firmly stated. Dust, Hellion and Elixir working together to protect the team was a point he felt he needed to strongly driven home, he had no intention at the moment of training them, Elixir need to start from the very beginning with the basics, Hellion pretty much hated his guts and would never accept training, dust, maybe, she was humble and kind from what little interaction had had with her, so maybe. The biggest problem to making any promises to teaching anyone was he didn't know how much time he had on this earth, if Dr. Richards had a way to get him back home right away, he would stay for a few weeks, a month at the most just to help Laura and then leave, such a small time frame wasn't very good for training a student, at least not for proper training but he had options. Soraya finally said, ah, I've never thought of that, the look in her eyes was one of thoughtfulness. Well that covers everybody and I got another appointment coming up soon, Laura, later on come find me, I would like a word with you, with his peace said Naruto left the danger room to work a few things and prepare for his visit to the Baxter building. Flashback end, Naruto's analysis of their abilities and flaws had impacted each of them but it was learning that the senior X-Men were disappointed in their performance that was crushing their spirits. After Naruto left, Logan had not sugarcoated it and outright told them he and the senior X-Men expected a far better performance from the junior team. They were supposed to be the next generation of X-Men, the ones that mutants and humans alike could look to as heroes just as the senior team had come to be regarded, hell they were supposed to be even better than their predecessors, there was a reason they were called the new X-Men after all, instead, they were falling short of their mentors expectations and it hurt, no one liked to disappoint those they admired. Yet neither Logan nor Naruto were saying they'd given up on them, or that the team couldn't be better, in fact the team was left with the impression that those two had a lot of faith in them even if they didn't outright say it, they merely seemed to think that a lot of the things the team did could have been handled better, the pieces of advice and harsh criticism from the two was weighing heavily on everyone's mind, so much so that they had rejected the company of their fellow mutants their age. 
It was into this gloomy mood that Emma Frost deliberately walked and sat down amongst them, the simple action so jarring that everyone focused on her and braced themselves subconsciously for another tongue lashing. Emma however merely sighed and said, I am not here to tear you a new one children, it seems Logan and Naruto sufficiently covered that. But you are disappointed in us aren't you, you are the one who chose us all to be a part of this after all, well most of us, Hellion said, giving X-23 a subtle glance. I had, unrealistic hopes for you I suppose, she cautiously replied. What's that supposed to mean? Serge asked darkly, her accusing tone plain for all to hear, the two of them had never gotten along very well in the past and that wasn't exactly about to change, but considering what they had just gone through Emma wasn't about to do or say anything demeaning, Nariko was just lashing out in frustration because of her own insecurities as the leader of the team, leadership that Emma had personally granted her despite Hellion. I know more about Naruto Uzumaki than any of you, from a logical standpoint, that means I also know that there is absolutely no way he would lose to you barring some unbelievable circumstances, but in the past few months, you kids have shown me the unbelievable, when the purifiers invaded our home, who drove them out? When Nimrod held one of our own hostage, who tracked it down and defeated it, forcing it to retreat? When the Weapon X program kidnapped a member of this team, was it not members of this team that lead the charge to rescue a teammate? Emma was never much of an orator and most of the time her demeanor could be described as a frigid bitch. She also never needed to use words to shape opinions when she could simply do so with her psychic powers, that didn't mean she wasn't good at it. Even as she spoke, the spirits of the members of the new X-Men team were visibly rising, Shed always had something of a rich dark charisma to her, and when she could be bothered to use it instead of merely altering people's memories or literally changing their minds, Emma was admittedly quite good at persuading people, it did help that she was a trained counselor and had unique insights into the minds of people. You kids showed me the unbelievable. Emma continued as she looked at all them individually before settling her gaze on Laura and saying, all of you, so yeah, I had some faith, no matter how unrealistic, that you might be able to beat Naruto, plus, he was holding back and Logan had skewed the training exercise to be as fair to you as he reasonably could without making the whole thing pointless. Yet we failed, Josh Foley declared in a still rather gloomy voice. Yes, you failed, but so what? You kids are supposed to live happy. Normal lives are as normal as life can ever get for a mutant. In a perfect world, you would have never have had to deal with the horrors you've been exposed to these past months. You should never have had to know what the word Nimrod even meant let alone fight the damn thing. Yet when, the world turned everything on its head, you stepped up, made a stand and did what was needed to survive, better yet, you protect others while doing so, and that's what the X-Men have always been about, it's why, we the senior X-Men believe you will someday surpass us, so yes, you failed today and yes, you have much to learn but that's what training is for. Now that you know your weaknesses and flaws you can only improve, right? Emma phrased the last part of as a question forcing them to think about and acknowledge the fact that if you hit rock bottom you can only go up. What about Naruto? Soraya spoke up, she was more often than not the quiet one of the team, just trying to fit in as a young Muslim girl in America whenever she was not praying or doing anything team related. What about him? Emma asked curiously Dust quickly elaborated saying, you said that you know more about him than any of us, what makes him different from us? He's not that much older than us but when Mr. Logan looks at us, he sees kids, when he looks at Naruto however, he treats him like an equal. Like I said, in a perfect world you would have never have had to deal with the horrors you've been exposed to these past months. M Day changed everything for mutant kind and left us all vulnerable. Thus you had to adapt to the new reality of a world with barely any mutants and a lot of people who wanted as survivors dead, for Naruto however, it was like this for him from the very beginning, this is perhaps the first time in his life, no one is out to get him. Emma calmly said before rising from her seat and walking up to do more important things, she had said her piece and it was now up to the new X-Men to determine how much they grew moving forward. VVV Naruto frowned as he looked at the ceiling formula he had been sketching on a notepad. The ceiling arts were one, if not the most complicated of the shinobi arts to learn. And while they were easy enough to replicate and use by almost anyone once the ceiling formula was known, only geniuses and Uzumaki ever bothered creating new types of seals. Naruto's father Minato was one such genius and could figure out what a seal did through mere calculations, understanding the way the chakra flowed in the seal and his encyclopedic knowledge of the various symbols and squiggles that formed the foundation of a sealing matrix. Uzumaki's on the other hand were a completely different beast altogether, they were a passionate people more often than ones gifted with genius level intellects, yet their understanding of seals was unrivaled, this was because they didn't try to understand seals like a nun Uzumaki would, rather they simply knew what to do. It was kept a secret from outsiders to the clan but for the most part, this trait was considered by the Uzumakis as just another aspect of the clan's bloodline, the regeneration ability, longevity and instinctive understanding of seals being as much a part of their DNA as their distinctive red hair, 
with only specific members of the main family branching having the additional ability to create chakra chains. Naruto himself had strongly inherited all these Uzumaki traits through his mother and a fair amount of his father's natural intelligence which is why to his senses the seal he had just scrawled out didn't quite feel right to him. Over his week-long stay at the X mansion, Naruto's understanding of advanced mathematics and sciences had increased at an astronomical rate thanks to the internet and one drive, Henry McCoy aka Beast. While the basics of the subjects were the same, the elemental nations had diverged somewhat from Earth when it came to their understanding of physics and maths. Surprisingly though, chemistry was largely the same with only minor deviations in knowledge here and there, it was for this reason that almost all ninjas could manipulate space-time on some level, quite easily too, yet no one had thought to split the atom, a most basic example being how commonplace storage scrolls and summoning techniques were across the elemental nations, yet no one had even considered the concepts of nuclear fission and fusion. Yet even then, Shinobi did not truly understand the depths of what they were actually doing. Dwelling more on how to do it and what the purpose of their actions was. Another way of putting it would be to say that they pursued and achieved a result without a solid understanding of how and why they arrived at that result. In the realm of the sealing arts, the Uzumaki clan had contributed heavily to this, they literally could create complex seals in seconds without understanding the process involved in the same way an outsider like Minato or Jiraiya would have to if they intended to replicate the results. That's not say that there were not some genius in the Uzumaki clan who were the exception to the rule and tried to learn the actual process, like Kashina and Mito, just very few. If you asked any ninja what a storage scroll was for, they would simply tell you that it was used to store things away that were too big or numerous to carry. For easier movement, hell storage was in the name of the damn thing. The mechanics behind its workings and why it worked, on the other hand was beyond almost anyone who wasn't a genius, with all the wars and other conflicts going on across the lands, no one bothered looking too closely at such things, it also didn't help that the Uzumaki could just whip up whatever effect they dreamed of with their sealing prowess, seals that other ninja villages would copy for many years, even after the Uzumaki clan's destruction. But now Naruto knew better, having absorbed massive amounts information through his clones on the sciences of Earth, it was quite clear to him that the sealing matrix on a storage scroll formed and maintained a small, relatively speaking, pocket dimension in which things were perfectly preserved in a form of time-locked stasis. It was also why the bodies of deceased shinobi could be stored in these scrolls for weeks without them decomposing. In other words, the unique form that math and science took on earth was filling in blank spots that were left behind by the math and sciences of the elemental nations that had deviated at certain points. And with this happening, Naruto's own understanding of the sealing arts greatly increased, his natural prowess at the sealing arts and his own genius inherited from his parents but mostly his father, allowed him to do more and more with seals than anyone in the elemental nations had ever thought possible. In Naruto's opinion, he felt he needed to take another look at every seal he knew how to draw and see what he could change or improve with his newfound knowledge, for example, Naruto believed he could use the principles in the storage seal behind the creation and maintenance of its pocket dimension to make rooms or areas that were freely accessible and bigger on the inside than the outsider, that British drive, who show with its TARDIS was really inspirational for this. Another seal he had extrapolated from the storage seal's spatial nature and improved on. Allowed him to create an imaginary territory, and within its boundaries he would freely be able to manipulate time itself, Itachi Uchiha's Tsukuyomi and his ability to manipulate time freely within it had helped greatly in the inspiration for this particular seal, even so, Naruto could at best speed up time within the seal to the point that outside seemed frozen, in its current state, it was good for private conversations but little more. There was also a plan for seal that would again create an imaginary territory and heal anything and everything within its boundaries. If he could get that one right, Naruto would be able to create a healing field similar to how Tsunade and Sakura used Katsuya's body to heal Shinobi during the Fourth Shinobi World War. Naruto however intended to be able to deploy his healing field over entire cities and heal everyone at the same time in an instant, it would take a colossal amount of chakra though. However, none of his many sealing projects compared to this particular seal he was working on right now, one of the things that Naruto had unfortunately discovered after he first arrived at the X mansion was his lack of chakra pathways in his right hand and forearm. Apparently when Kagaya destroyed his arm, she was thorough enough that even after regenerating an entire arm, he had not regenerated his chakra pathways in that arm. Due to this, Naruto was still severely limited in his ninjutsu repertoire, only the most well practiced of his techniques could be performed with one handed seals or without seals at all, thus, the vast majority of his technique were pretty much locked away until he either regrew new chakra pathways or found an orthodox solution to the problem, the seal he was currently working on was a part of that unorthodox solution. His right arm was perfectly fine and his bone claws in that arm were pretty cool and kind of creepy in how much they reminded him of both Kagaya and Kimimaro's. Ash killing bone and dead bone pulse techniques, well, not so much the techniques, 
as much as the fact that bones generally just protruded from their bodies. Naruto couldn't shoot his claws and send them flying off as projectile weapons but time spent with Logan and Laura had shown him exactly what a pair of claws could do and this seal if it worked would only make his claws more useful than they already were. Naruto had taken to calling it, the Omni Matrix and when it was finished it would be the greatest seal to have ever existed, sure, maybe it won't have the strength of the ten-tailed coffin seal or Chibaku Tensai seal but its modular design and ability to incorporate and generate other seals made it a very different kind of seal, one that would be infinitely useful but only if he could figure out what was wrong with it and get the damn thing to work. Deep in his thoughts Naruto was startled when he heard his name being called, Mr. Uzumaki. Looking up to see who was greeting him he smiled when he recognized the attractive, telepathic, ninja, adventurer Psylocke and responded, Miss Braddock. Her emotions dipped as if she didn't like being called by her family name but she did not show it in her facial expressions or body language, instead choosing to say, please, call me Elizabeth or Psylocke. Miss Braddock is far too formal. Naruto merely smiled and replied, I feel the exact same way about being called Mr. Uzumaki, it's too stuffy for my liking, Naruto will do, especially since we will likely spend a lot of time together from here on out. The tone had said it was flirty but it was also an accusation or perhaps a declaration that he knew why she was here. He didn't mind, had been both informed that Psylocke would be assigned to him and had pretty much expected something like it would happen, in Konoha, the Hokage would have done no less if a powerful stranger from a foreign land showed up in the village much less from another universe, hell, had have personally sicked a full squad or two of Anbu to monitor said stranger 24-7 for the duration of their stay, his treatment here was light in comparison. That said, it was only polite to let her know that he knew exactly what her assignment was and that he openly welcomed her to observe him a lot closer than having her stalking around in the background, it's not like she would be able to hide form his by Kugan. Psylocke however did not take his invitation the way he meant for it to be taken, in an almost alarmed tone, she said, I have no intention of spending every second of every day monitoring you Naruto, you are not under surveillance or anything, I am just here to be your guide, here on earth, to basically help you with stuff and prevent misunderstandings on both sides. That's right, stalking is frowned upon here, Naruto thought as he connected why she seemed so alarmed, restructuring his sentence Naruto quickly said, oh I know that, what I meant is, it'll probably come to you a lot and bug you about all kinds of things, plus, you're a ninja and I've already expressed my desire to trade notes with you. Ninjas here and I am pretty sure even where you come from, are generally secretive about what they can do, but for you, I think I can make an exception, Betsy said to him with a small wink much to Naruto's amusement. Shifting her gaze to the calligraphy set and the seal he was working on she asked, so, what are you doing? Creating an Omni Matrix, Naruto promptly responded with a bit pride in his voice, this seal, if it ever got back to the elemental nations would revolutionize the sealing arts. Unfortunately Psylocke was left pretty confused with his answer, it hey, what now? Grinning, Naruto said, an Omni Matrix, it's a modular sealing formula that can incorporate and rapidly generate almost any seal I can picture in my head to perform whatever specific task I require, call it my attempt at an all-purpose tool, sort of. All-purpose tool? Like, it can be a socket wrench or a power drill? She asked, curious about what he meant, unfortunately what she thought of his tools and what Naruto thought of his tools were spectacularly different things, so much so that Naruto seemed to try and simultaneously frown in disappointment get freaked out and twitch in a failed attempt to hold back his mirth, making it look like he was lightly spasming, thankfully he eventually just settled for answering the question and mercifully Psylocke ignored his reaction. Ah, oh, no, not those kinds of tools, he kind covered the topic of tools while studying in Hank's lab but never delved too deep. Still it gave him an understanding of where Psylocke was coming from when she spoke of tools. Nevertheless he had to correct her notion, I am missing something in my right hand that would allow me access to some of my more shall we say, unique abilities, a ninja's techniques are his tools, whether for battle or for day-to-day -day activities, and I am missing a large chunk of mine, sure in terms of raw ability, I am fully recuperated and ready to go, but it's like comparing, how does the saying go, oh yes, it's like trying to use a sledgehammer to perform surgery on a patient, no, that can't be right, that doesn't make sense. I believe you are trying to compare a sledgehammer to a scalpel, Naruto, but I think I get what you were trying to say and like you explanation better. Elizabeth declared with no small amount of mirth to her voice. Naruto felt his cheeks burn in embarrassment so brightly they nearly matched his hair, instead he quickly pushed back onto the topic, anyway, once this seal is done, I can combine it with another seal and it will fix my right arm up real nice, I will finally be able to perform all of my old tricks and maybe create some new ones based on things I have seen here, I just, all I need to do is figure out what I am doing wrong. Ruth thinks you've mixed these two symbols up, a young woman's voice said from besides him. Naruto was not so much startled by the presence of Ruth Aldine, he had sensed her approach through his multiple sensory abilities, 
know what had startled him was her appearance, more specifically her lack of eyes. He didn't comment on this though, instead merely choosing to say, huh? Ruth thinks you've mixed these two symbols up, Ruth repeated, this time pointing at the symbols in question. Well shit, that's, how, how did I miss that? Naruto stuttered in disbelief as he paid closer attention to the symbols in question, it was a minor thing, a simple brushstroke at the tip of the first symbol that should have been added to the second almost identical symbol, a brushstroke that had made too early and in doing so rendered the whole seal inoperable, and thanked Kami that was all it did or the end result of screwing up a seal this complex would have been as spectacular as it would been unpredictable. With a gesture of two, one-handed seals, Naruto enlarged the whole sealing formula and quickly made the appropriate corrections, as soon as he did, the whole thing felt right to his Uzumaki senses, and he just knew it would work as desired. From the look on your face, it must have worked, Psylocke declared with a soft smile. Naruto did not respond to Psylocke, instead choosing to get up from his seat, wrap Ruth in a hug and spin her around to which Blindfold actually squealed, thank you so much Ruth, you've saved me weeks of headaches going through the sealing formula again to pick out any mistakes, I promise, I will repay you with a gift, equal in value to what you've just done for me, and you can count on my friendship from now on, this I swear on my Nindo, my ninja way. Ah, Ruth thanks you for your generosity but she doesn't want to trouble you, the girl kindly responded. Naruto did not like this and was about to protest however before he could say anything Betsy placed a hand on Blindfold's shoulder and said, Ruth, to a ninja, their nindo, is a sacred code they live by and an oath made on a ninja's nindo is the highest promise you can extract from a shinobi or kunoichi, it's generally worth more than even the ninja's life, rejecting his offer would be extremely offensive, just accept it. Ruth paused a moment, as if considering these words before nodding her head and saying, okay, in that case, Ruth accepts your promise. Naruto nodded, happy that hadn't had to work to convince her to accept his promise, Scott Summers and the X-Men had chosen wisely when they picked Psylocke to be his guide and guardian it seemed, still there was one thing he needed to know, Ruth, they call you Blindfold right? Ah, yes, it's because Ruth was born without eyes, Blindfold replied. Naruto raised a brow at that fact and said, I did not know that but that's not what I was getting at, what I wanted to ask, is how did you know which two symbols ID messed up on and where they were? not just in general but specifically on this seal, when you can't see. I helped her out, Psylocke interjected. Hey, how? Naruto asked curiously. Ruth, might be physically blind but she is a telepath and a precog, seeing through the eyes of someone else would normally be pretty trivial for her once she was in their head, I allowed her to see things through my eyes and I guessing she used her precognition to look into the future and spot the problem or it really would have taken you weeks to figure this seal out, Psylocke explained. Nodding with a grateful smile Naruto said, in that case, I am grateful to both of you for helping me, now I can take my hand out for a test drive, well, only after I surgically implant my new seal based artificial chakra chakra pathways inside it, that means a minor operation I guess. What? Psylocke and surprisingly even Ruth yelled out in shock. Don't worry about it, I heal quick and I promise I won't make a mess, though I probably should ask drive, McCoy for some help, Naruto continued brushing of their concerns. Psylocke however growled at him, Naruto. She really hoped that this would not be a normal thing. V V V. Laura, you wanted to see me? Laura asked. She had arrived just a moment ago as Naruto was showering and was probably wondering how he even knew she was there, if he was reading the confusion he felt through his empathy abilities correctly, that are more likely, why he was willing to talk to her while he was showering. Not that Naruto cared all that much about nudity taboos to begin and he was pretty sure Laura wasn't as fussy as the average human on earth but certain forms needed to be adhered to, yeah, but I was hoping to do that before or after I finished showering. I don't mind, ill wait, she said without moving from her spot just outside his shower stall. When she didn't move, Naruto didn't feel the need to kick her out. As a former Anbu commander, he didn't see what the big deal was when the glass surrounding his shower stall was fogged up and there was a curtain between them. Also due to her experiences and her personality Naruto already knew Laura wouldn't care about what she saw even if she could see him naked, or at least he thought she wouldn't, he was after all comparing her experience in Weapon X to his short experience in Rudin later on regular Anbu. Well, you're here now, so we might as well do this while I shower. Thank you for coming and sorry for being so harsh on you guys in there, Naruto said as he rinsed his hair of all the shampoo in it, he had always treasured his scarlet locks being one of the physical features he got from his mother along with his amethyst eyes so he put extra effort into keeping his hair clean, Hinata had always said it made him a little girly but then his mother had always considered his father to be somewhat girly when they were younger. From her spot Laura replied, I can handle criticism and from what I can tell you weren't wrong or unjust with what you said and how you said it, 
Your words were meant to sting and to tear us down yes, but only so that Logan could build us back up. You know, this is why I didn't hold back as much against you. Verbally or physically, you are not like them, it's obvious in many many ways I know. But even if you had a relatively normal life and were put through the same exercise. I don't think the qualities that set you apart from the others would disappear. Of course that's just me, there's no way for me to prove this, even so, I really don't like hurting my friends even if it's just training, never have and perhaps that's why as much as I hate the battlefield, I sometimes prefer it, on the battlefield. Your opponent is the enemy and your only due to is to eliminate that enemy, in close your opponent can be a friend, a lover, a teacher, a rival or even an enemy, it's just so much more more complicated, but that's not why I asked you to come here. In the facility I made a promise that I would help you reconcile being a good person and being a killer. That's a promise I intend to keep, however, I am also actively looking for a way home and Scott Summers believes that Drive, Reed Richards of the Fantastic Four might be able to locate my home and perhaps even get me there in future, me and Ms. Elizabeth Braddock are going over there in the, what do you call it, ah yes, the Blackbird Jet, I'd be grateful to you if you'd accompany us to the Baxter building when we head out an hour. You want me to come along, why? She asked surprised at the offer he had just made her. I don't have a real reason but do I really need one? Chuckling at the feeling of skepticism coming from Laura's direction Naruto added, You're not buying that are you? Yeah, me neither. I will tell you why but before that I would like it if you answered a question of my own first. And what question would that be? Laura replied, We spent last night talking to each other about our pasts, and trust me, if I had known about the training exercise I would have waited for another time to tell you so much about myself, so my question is, why didn't you tell your teammates about me? Between the various stories of my past I told you last night. You have a clearer picture of my capabilities than anyone save Wolverine. Emma and Beast, and I have no doubt they've told their teammates a lot about me. It's not like you lacked opportunity, you could have warned them about me before the exercise began. You could have even retreated right after I took out Julian, instead of committing to an attack in my blind spot. Hell, you are more than skilled enough to have pulled away from our little hand to hand session and warned your teammates before I took you down, from another perspective, your actions might have been seen as disloyal to your team, they really could have used that information, so why didn't you tell them anything? It'll answer your question, but only after you tell me why you didn't bring it up during the meeting, when you were giving your assessment of our abilities. You could have made this known and I am sure they would have been angry, you put a lot of emphasis on the value of teamwork after all, so I am a bit surprised that you didn't. I couldn't have blamed you for either choice really. I might have been pretty saddened if you shared such personal information on me with your team after I told it to you in confidence. Naruto's voice grew solemn as he looked to the roof as if seeing something beyond it but then added, nevertheless, I would have also been pretty proud of you for trusting them and I would have definitely understood your actions. Life is messy and complicated like that most of the time. Sometimes both choices are wrong and sometimes both choices are technically the right choice. It's up to you to decide which choice has consequences you can live with. Laura contemplated these words in silence for a moment before replying. They're my team and in many ways my friends but you are also my friend and you understand things about me that they never would. Also, while I know that we should treat those training exercises as real. Ultimately they are not, we were not in a real battle, with real costs, so even if I informed them the secrets you told me in confidence and we won, that victory would not have felt real, you on the other hand trusted me with your secrets, that was real, I feel like I would have lost something precious, I guess I can live with the consequences of my team being angry at me for keeping your secret, she finished with a self-depreciating chuckle. Having toweled himself down while she was talking Naruto stepped out of his shower with a towel around his waist and smiled at her, in that case the truth behind why I want you to come with me is as simply this, you are my first friend on this world and the one I am closest to, I don't know what to expect when drive, Reed Richards scans me, but one thing I do know is this, I want my friends close by no matter what happens. Laura smiled at this but said nothing, though a furious blush colored her cheeks, instead she looked to a section of his room that had been cleared of everything there then covered in massive plastic tarps and lots of tape, it was as if someone was prepared to paint that section of the room and didn't want anything else to get dirty, only the plastic was on the walls and the ceiling, as well as the floor, so she asked, what's all that plastic for? Naruto who had somehow gotten fully dressed while she was looking away answered, that's the other reason I wanted you here, I'd like a little help with some minor surgery, that is if you were willing of course. Laura frowned at this, not because she wasn't willing to help but because she didn't see how she could be helpful in performing any kind of surgery, still she asked her attractive friend, what do you need me to do? I need you to cut off my arm just below my elbow so I can implant a couple of seals into it to act as artificial chakra pathways that will then connect to my actual pathways and allow me to use the full scope of my ninjutsu. Well, your job is just to cut off my arm, it'll do the rest. I would have gone to Beast for help but that man would question everything and delay the whole process by a day. 
this way it will only take five minutes better to ask forgiveness than permission i believe the saying goes well at least for this one time naruto explained he was reluctant to make a habit out of doing things that would anger and displease the x-men or rather those among them he was close to and something like this would not stay hidden while the artificial pathways would connect to the rest of his chakra network inside of his body they flowed out from the inside of his arm spread over the surface of his right forearm like a tattooed circuit pattern think nasu versus magic circuits worse yet they would faintly glow at all times so the only way he could use them in a stealth operation was with gloves and long sleeves at least for his right arm otherwise he now would have a glowing right arm to give away his position a bit of a hindrance to his stealth but a small price to pay for the plethora of jutsu he would soon be able to perform once more snicked with the sound of her claws popping laura only response to his request was okay when do you want to begin kami he loved this girl vvv it with clear curiosity in his visible eye that naruto's head observed the world around him in wonder the Baikugan's omnidirectional vision and ability to see through solid matter being the only reason his head wasn't swinging in every which direction as if on a swivel even then the sheer number of things he had spotted merely within the walls of the baxter building was mind-bogglingly impressive naruto psylocke and x23 had arrived at the baxter building and were waiting in the lobby for reed richards aka mr fantastic to come down and get them not that they'd had even spent more than three minutes waiting so far the others were far from bored and naruto was downright fascinated with the futuristic architecture of the inside the building it was unlike anything naruto had ever seen he literally had no frame of reference for any number of things he could see thanks to his Baikugan. And this was after channeling a considerable number of clones into researching Earth's architectural and advanced engineering techniques. Even now he had hundreds of clones running around back at the X mansion studying whatever information related to every known scientific field he could get his hands on. He barely understood a tenth of everything he read but it would be worth the Hokage Mountain's weight in gold when he took that knowledge home. What he was seeing here though, was beyond just another earth thing that he really didn't have an analog for on his world. Sure cars, planes, cell phones, the internet, rockets, missiles. Space stations, satellites, video games and many other similar inventions had surprised him, such things simply didn't exist on his world, mainly because Shinobi had spent the last thousand years trying to kill each other with superpowers and thousands of years before even that, with no powers and regular pre-industrial weaponry, in short, there just hadn't been time innovate and develop technologically along the paths earth had followed not with all the deaths and bloodshed along the way even the things that were the same or had a similar analog in the elemental nations were either the technological equivalent of things here or inferior it was understandable when one considered the giant left turn the elemental nations took with the free access to chakra as the technological path this lead to due to chakra or at least the potential to wield it becoming widespread in the populace some things simply became unnecessary as a whole humans from the elemental nations were physically superior to those of earth at least two to three times as strong on average however that number changed drastically the second chakra got thrown in the equation there was a reason why even genin were expected to run to entirely different countries once they had been trained in the tree climbing and water walking techniques these countries were not small at all the average fit civilian taking weeks or months to make journeys that ninjas made in hours or days the point being it was a harsh way of life but one that kept even the weakest humans of his world incredibly fit by modern earth standards and as far as ninjas were concerned the advent of chakra rendered things like cars and planes utterly obsolete to their way of life they could run faster than cars anyway and teleportation was far more accessible than flight to begin with so no one really bothered with it except tizuna and koyuki's people in short because of their way of life many of the other fancy technologies naruto had spotted on earth had not even gotten a chance to develop on his homeworld yet just the interior of this building blew all that technology right out of the water from what he could see with his Baikugan, naruto was left feeling like he had stepped into the future or something in short it was damn impressive the ding of the elevator doors parting pulled naruto out of his thoughts he had watched the man known as mr fantastic and his wife the invisible woman descend from the higher floors in the steel contraption it wasn't his first time riding an elevator seeing as he needed one to get to the lower levels of the x mansion but that one traveled a very short distance this one traversed an entire skyscraper at incredible speeds delivering the richards couple from the top of the building to the lobby in under 10 seconds taking a good long long at mr fantastic naruto noted that the man was 61 feet with broad shoulders and a toned but not overly muscular physique he had rich brown hair with streaks of graying on each of the sides of his temple and brown eyes that were alarmingly alight with curiosity he wore one of those skin tight full body suites that were so popular amongst superheroes and villains it was mostly blue with a white circle on the chest bearing a black four the symbol of the fantastic four next to him his wife wore pretty much the same attire and sweet cami did she look good 
Naruto buried any lecherous thoughts he had of her almost as soon as they popped up in his head, partially out of respect for the married woman and partly because he didn't want to get on the bad side one of the few people who could probably send him home. Still, Susan Richards could have been accused being a namikaze on his world with her blonde hair and blue eyes. Albeit her hair lacked the spikes, she was still a MILF though, if he remembered how to use the term correctly. I am Drive, Reed Richards and this is my wife, Susan otherwise known as the Invisible Woman, Mr. Fantastic said extending his hand. Nice to meet you Dr. and Mrs. Richards, I am Naruto Uzumaki, Naruto replied with a smile as he shook it, then shook Susan's hands, it was easy see and feel the affection and pride that Reed had for his wife even as the super genius introduced her, I don't know if you know my friends though? Before Reed could confirm or deny this Betsy spoke up in greeting, it's good to see you again Reed, Sue. Same here, Elizabeth, Sue replied with mischievous smirk. Miss Braddock. It's a pleasure as always but while we know each other well enough and I have just met Mr. Uzumaki, I do not believe we've encountered our third guest before. I think some introductions are in order, don't you? Reed asked with a curious glance in X-23's direction. This is Laura Kinney, Logan's daughter and a dear friend of Naruto's, he asked her to come along and I thought she needed to get out in the world a bit more, I hope that's okay? Psylocke asked. It's perfectly fine, you are more than welcome here Laura, can I call you Laura? Sue replied. She looked Laura over rather keenly and seemed to see something she liked in the young girl. Yes, unfortunately was Laura's only reply, she's shy and still getting the hang of social interaction. While I am from a different universe so I might get stuff wrong, Naruto quickly defended Laura before changing the subject and saying, so I heard you were the smartest man on the planet and quite possibly my best chance of finding a way back to my home universe, I also heard that to do this you need to scan me for my quantum signature or something and match it to my native universe. Cyclops was a bit vague on the details. It seemed like anything science related was the key to getting Reed Richards talking. For he immediately took control of the conversation. Well the short version is that, everything in this universe all the way down to subatomic particles vibrates at specific natural frequencies and in specific manners unique to this universe. This means that, you who was born in another universe will have a natural frequency that doesn't match the frequency of this universe. Although under the right conditions that can actually change. Nevertheless a quick scan of your quantum signature and a comparison to samples I have on file of the quantum signatures of other universes I have already probed it should provide a match, or at least it will give me a general direction in which to start looking for your native reality, beyond the boundaries of the universe, it quickly becomes difficult explaining distance and direction in a way a normal person can understand, so difficult it's near impossible so I won't bore you with that. Okay, Naruto said calmly as everyone gathered in the spacious elevator and eight seconds later found themselves over a hundred floors up. Reed then led them towards his lab as he continued saying, my point is, in a few days to weeks depending on how long it takes for me to find your reality, we should be able to at least take a peek at your universe through a device I just thought up, a sort of intra-universal telescope if you will, then it will be a few more weeks to safely build a portal through which you can return there. Nodding his head in understanding Naruto smiled at the man who lived and breathed science before saying, I wanted to say thank you so very much for doing this for me drive. Richards, Provided things aren't too bad on my world then I am not actually in too much of a hurry to leave earth, I just want to make sure my people are alright, things didn't look too good before I mysteriously arrived on earth, it's part of my commitment as one of my world's defenders, something I am sure you and the rest of the fantastic four understands well, until then I have some personal things to take care of here on earth first. No problem Mr. Uzumaki, from what beast tells me, I could probably count on your help if ever ended up stranded on your earth, something that is a real possibility, Reed said sounding as if he absolutely believed in the possibility that this would happen. Naruto snorted in amusement and replied, I would see that you were welcomed like heroes if you ever showed up in the elemental nations. ID settle for being welcomed as friends, anyway, this is my old quantum scanning device. Impressive looking is it, Reed bragged as he redirected Naruto attention to the device in Kasitan and Naruto had to agree. The old quantum scanner as Reed put it, was a series of three gyroscopic rings surrounding a raised platform, each ring was lined countless advanced sensors that would simultaneously scan him for a few seconds as the rings rotated around him at high speeds, it was also completely outdated by Reed Richards standards, I built that thing like a hundred ideas ago or something. A hundred ideas ago? Naruto asked confused, did he mean time? My husband means doesn't always perceive time like a normal human, I am not saying he sees things in slow motion or anything as fantastical as that, just that the sheer amount of problems he solves and new inventions he creates in a day means that even though he made that scanner months ago at the most, he might as well have invented it 20 years ago, Sue explained, clearly fluent Reed Richards. Ah oh, I see, Naruto really didn't, 
He was smart and quick to pick up things about people but a super genius way of thinking was a different kind of monster altogether. Fortunately for you Naruto, I upgraded that scanner shortly after Cyclops called to inform me of your situation. Read the quickly riffled through a drawer before pulling out a strange silver rectangular device that looked like a silver laptop battery and then began waving it back and forth at Naruto like a handheld metal detection wand, it beeped and booped with a bunch futuristic sounds before small green light on it flashed green and Reed smiled at in satisfaction, and done. Naruto blinked in surprise, just like that, yes, it's 30 seconds faster than the old scanner but I can now cut down the scanning time by an extra 5 seconds. I just haven't really gotten around doing it yet, anyway. Why don't we go to the living room for some refreshments while the computer scans through my database for a matching universe? My machines scour the universe for your native reality, you won't get any answers today but I would be ashamed as a host if I didn't offer you our finest hospitality, plus I would like to hear all about your homeworld, once again Reed's eyes seemed to light up with curiosity as he said this. Ahem. Sue not so subtly elbowed her husband and added, we both would. Smiling in amusement Naruto, looked at his two companions who merely shrugged at him before he said, then I got a couple of interesting stories. VVV so who are those two gems hiding over there? Naruto asked, motioning with his head to the two tufts of blonde hair poking out from around the corner leading to the kitchen. With a single rapid motion drive, Richard's hands elongated and quickly wrapped around the two children who giggled in delight as he carried them into the living room saying, Oh, these two bundle of happiness are Franklin Benjamin Richards and Valeria Megan Richards, our pride and joy. The love and affection the two parents had for their kids could have been felt even if Naruto wasn't already an empath, still, there was something he had felt from the kids and wanted confirmed so he asked, well, the gods of this earth interact with humanity a lot from what I have noticed, but even I didn't think I would be meeting a family of deities so soon. Reed blinked in surprise not expecting that before saying, no, we are just humans, superpowered humans but human all the same, we are not gods. Hmm, that would have conveniently explained so much about your children. It was more to himself than anyone else but Reed and Sue still picked it up. However before either could ask anything else, Naruto pulsed his chakra in a way that was so fast and so faint no one but the most attuned sensor would have realized what he was doing, from beneath his feet a ceiling array flared to life, expanding to a size big enough that it caught Franklin and Valeria who had come near him within it, time instantly sped up so drastically within the seal that everything outside it was pretty much standing still, as if time was frozen outside. This was the other seal he had developed after closely studying the storage seals of his home reality and extrapolated on it with earth math and sciences, with that done Naruto leveled the full power of his Byakugan on the two kids, they didn't look particularly powerful but his senses were telling him something else altogether, he was in the presence of the divine, and a word kept popping into his head, star god. Smiling at the kids who were looking around with looks that were not particularly worried of the situation, Naruto said, hello. Sorry if this all seems weird and confusing for you Franklin. Valeria, my left eye tends to see all kinds of things and sometimes it shows me stuff too, according to my eye, you are far stronger than me Franklin, to the point that I wouldn't even be able to comprehend your true strength little star god, as for you Valeria, well, I don't even need my special eye to tell that you are a truly smart girl, so smart in fact that calling you something as mundane as a super genius would actually be insulting. The way Naruto talked to them was as if he was talking to two adults instead of two children, Valeria merely smiled in interest and said, clever boy. Naruto merely chuckled at this before going on to say. Well don't worry, this is obviously a secret you have kept well. I will keep your secrets safe from anyone who asks. I just wanted a chance to introduce myself with my own words instead pretending in front of your parents. Plus they'd probably scrutinize the heck out of me if they knew what I was doing. You two are still kids after all, to that end, I am Naruto Uzumaki, a ninja demigod. Sort of. From another universe trying to find his way home, oh and I have a feeling we will be working together closely in future, I don't usually get those precognitive feelings but they aren't ever wrong, anyway, I am approaching the time limit for this technique so let's all just act as if nothing happened, we will talk some other time. In an instant the seal receded, it appearance and disappearance happening too fast for the human eye to even note and to everyone present in the room including the security cameras monitoring the room nothing happened, on cue Susan asked the question that she was going to ask before Naruto messed with time, I am sorry, what's that supposed to mean? Without missing a beat Naruto replied, even if you aren't gods, your son reminds of one, and Valeria seems like a really clever girl. Oh, um, Susan looked extremely confused, I know right? She will be playing chess like a master real soon and I have no doubt she will surpass me in intelligence, Reed said beaming with pride. Naruto chuckled at the husband and wife, then said, I am sorry about that, I am still learning about your culture, way of life and the various ways you express yourselves, 
I've always spoken quite plainly on my homeworld so I apologize in advance if I come of as too blunt or disrespectful, I still have much to learn about your ways. Oh no, it's no problem at all, I know of many beings who have found themselves on earth and not even bothered trying learning our customs, I am honestly quite curious about you and your own world, Sue reiterated with Reed nodding eagerly, they hadn't gotten around to that conversation yet due to the kids showing up as soon as they sat down for tea and snacks but now was as good a time as any. Well, I haven't traveled the entirety of my homeworld so I can't tell you everything but my home country is called the Land of Fire and before you ask, every country is named after the classical elements or some distinct environmental quality in that country, Naruto explained of course calling fire, water, earth and air elements in the home of Drive, Reed Richards turned out to be a mistake. Fire, water, earth and air are not elements, Reed declared with the unquestionable surety of someone who believed that birds could fly and fishes could swim, it was more out of habit than because he was upset with the notion, but as a man of science, Reed despised false knowledge like that. Naruto was quick to defend the shinobi of the elemental nations. He didn't want Reed to think they were all ignorant barbarians. Oh, we know, our chemistry is about on par with that of this earth's, barring the knowledge possessed by select super geniuses like yourself, however fire, water, earth, wind and lightning were classically considered the elements for the last thousand years all over the elemental nations and our lands are ancient, modern chemistry is merely something popped up in the last two hundred years. Thus, the great nations were named after the classics. That's not too different from how things happened on Earth, Reed is just a bit of stickler for details, so you said, you're from the land of fire, what are the names of the other countries? Sue asked. Nodding Naruto responded, the five great nations are the lands of fire. Water, earth, wind and lightning, the other smaller countries are named after things like snow. Hot springs, tea, rice, waterfalls, grass, waves, moon. Rain and darkness to name just a few, there are at least a hundred more with similar naming conventions scattered all around the world. We have one primary continent comparable albeit somewhat smaller than the supercontinent Pangaea but stable, officially it is nameless and so is our world, but the continent is still commonly referred to as the elemental nations, again in reference to our classic element, there are three lesser continents about the size of Australia scattered around the world in hundreds, if not thousands of tiny island nations. So did your people choose for your country to be called the land of fire instead of say water or lightning, or is the reason for the name? This time it was Betsy who asked after, sipping on her tea like every bit the British aristocrat she was, she was just as curious about Naruto as Reed, Sue and even Laura were, although in Laura's case she preferred to sit back and listen in silence. Naruto hummed for a second as he gathered his thoughts before replying, it happened so long ago that I really don't know what the original reason was, however, there are two theories, first, that it was named the land of fire because of all the nations we have the highest concentration of fire. Release aligned ninjas, basically most our ninjas can use fire related techniques. Betsy's grin widened upon hearing this but politely remained silent, it was Reed who asked, oh, and you can do this too. Naruto shrugged, he knew a couple of fire jutsu and he was aligned to all five elements now, but wind was still his go to element, a little but I am a special case, even among my people. What was the second theory? Sue asked, immensely curious about the red-headed ninja in their presence. Naruto smiled at the women before saying, the second theory. And one I personally prefer is, well, it's hard to describe without having seen it yourself but close your eyes and try and picture a forest full of trees. A forest that reaches as far as the eye can see, just miles after miles of bark and leaves and grass and rivers, just going on and on and on a forest so massive you could take New York and the nearest five states and they would still be swallowed whole by it, within this forest is all manners of fauna, eking out a life for themselves, birds, bears, wolves, great cats, woodland critters, snakes, fish, deer, etc, etc, all of it perfectly in balance. Okay, everyone had closed their eyes to visualize the scene Naruto was painting. Now imagine there is a mountain in midst of this forest. It's not massive but it is wide, it's something that would allow you to see all the surrounding lands from its low peak. From this mountain you can see the lands change as the seasons pass. Like a watching a video in a time lapse, you watch the boughs and branches of 50 meter trees sway and bow as the rains from storm season batter but never break the ancient giants. You watch their strong canopies carry tons of snow when winter season comes and provide shelter for the various animals and the unwary traveler caught in the occasional blizzard. These trees bloom with a myriad of beautiful flowers in the spring and give all manner of delicious fruits in the summer. But then, their green leaves turn red, then every tree for as far as the eye can see from your position on the peak of the mountain turns red, and when the noonday sun is shining high in the sky, and the wind blows through the forest making these ancient trees sway, just for a moment, from your position on that mountain, it's like the entire land has caught fire, 
Naruto explained before adding, or for some it's been described as being like you were on island surrounded by a sea of flames. That sounds beautiful, I'd like to visit, Sue said excitedly. If you ever do then I will show you around, the mountain itself is called Hokage Mountain, basically it's our equivalent of Mount Rushmore. My father's head was carved into the side when he became the fourth leader of our village. The village hidden in the leaves being more of a small city is located at the base of the mountain and it's a ninja village. So you're like royalty? Reed asked, that really depends on who you ask, Naruto replied with a chuckle. Finally spoke up saying, your earth sounds very interesting. It is, I mean you guys don't seem to have a lot sentient animals here, still, after studying the multiple worlds interpretation and reading some of your publicly available papers on the multiverse, I've come to recognize that my world is just an alternate earth that diverged earlier on in its history from this one, but I can't say the rest of my people will like my homeworld being called by a name like earth, Naruto said. Why not? Sue asked curiously, Naruto chuckled and replied, honestly, it sounds lazy, I mean, I can almost bet that if you asked enough ninjas to come up with a name for the planet, the final name would be something awfully close to Elementia. VVV his name was VKTL, a loyal soldier of the Skrull Empire and its new queen Varanki. His mission like thousands of other Skrull infiltrators was to observe any and all enemy movements and operations on Earth in preparation for the coming invasion. His enemy was the human race itself and by extension the superhuman population that called Earth home. However his specific target this day was young man by the name of Naruto Uzumaki. Initially VKTL and many of the other members of the shape-shifting Skrull race had not thought much of the latest mutant to suddenly pop up in the Office of National Emergencies database, and to the credit of the X-Men, they had kept him well hidden in their facility over the last week, however, with the final date of the invasion quickly coming up, they simply could not risk an unknown running around. A few days ago Naruto's O, N, E file appeared in their database and elicited several eyebrow-raising abilities including enhanced speed, strength, durability, a regenerative healing factor, advanced energy manipulation abilities, heightened senses and bone claws like Wolverine and X-23 in his right arm. The file also stated that Naruto was a mutant from another reality stranded on Earth, though it didn't specify which reality. All of this popping up at such a poor time ensured that the Queen ordered an eye kept out on this young man and that more information be gathered on what kind of a threat he was. Which was why she had ordered a test of his abilities to take place. One of the Skrull sleeper agents in advanced idea mechanics or AIM was ready to unleash a new experiment in the midst of a densely populated area in New York City the next time Naruto left the Xavier Institute's grounds, they were tracking him and were putting in measures to ensure that the minute the experiment began, no other heroes would interfere, at least until they wanted them to. VKTL did not know the details of the plan or a lot about what this experiment was other than that it was some new kind of monster that was invisible to normal human eyesight and could shift itself into another dimension to become temporally intangible. However while humans couldn't hurt the monster in this state, it could still attack humans from there and it had a penchant for human flesh, it was just too bad this monster couldn't truly be controlled due to being a mindless beast or it might have made a fine weapon for the empire. Facing off against such a dangerous opponent would either reveal a lot of secrets worth reporting to their queen or the boy would be overwhelmed and eaten, if the latter was the case, then he was never a threat to the Skrull Empire to begin with, VKTL felt no sympathy for the child and would happily let him die. All he cared about was serving his queen and the Skrull Empire. VVV so how was it? Scott asked Naruto who had just stepped onto the third floor hallway his room was located on. Cyclops had no doubt been waiting to speak with Naruto privately here, well, a little more privately than the front lawn, that is. Naruto smiled and replied, things look promising, doctor, Richards assures me that he will have located my native universe and quite possibly have found a way to send me there in a matter of weeks to possibly a few months, plus, he's kind of nice, great family. I like him. That's good to hear, we'll have you home in no time, Scott assured much to Naruto's surprised, the man and him were not particularly close after all. With Cyclops having to worry about the destiny of the entire mutant race and a plethora of other issues, they just hadn't had much time to get to really know each other, not that either of them believed they could ever become close, like he was with others, they were just two very different individuals. Really, I am surprised to hear you say that, Naruto replied sounding quite skeptical. This time it was Cyclops who sounded surprised as he asked, why? I am not blind Mr. Summers, you'll only have a few weeks more to study me before I return to my native reality. With all the tests and experiments, you've had drive, McCoy running, I thought you would definitely push me to stay longer, to give the doctor more time, Naruto simply stated, it was common sense to try and hang on to an asset when you desperately needed it and the decimation of the mutant population was a problem that needed solving. Naruto was also pretty sympathetic to their situation and willing to help however he could but Scott needed to ask nicely first. My sole focus at the moment is the preservation of mutant kind as a species. 
your DNA opens up doors that might lead to a way to restore mutant powers. However, there are other doors we can exploit that have nothing to do with you and your DNA, more importantly, as someone who's just witnessed the decimation of his species, I can understand your concern for your homeworld, besides, Emma made it very clear to me that if you wanted to leave, there was nothing we could do stop you, at least without turning you into a vicious enemy that we can't afford to have right now, Cyclops explained his reasoning. Well, at least you were honest about it, Naruto said with a smile, he and Scott didn't really get along with each other, they were not antagonistic to each, nor did Scott's pragmatism and blunt personality rub Naruto the wrong way, with all the people he was forced to deal with as a ninja, Scott was actually an easier person to deal with. Despite this, the two just didn't seem to click with each other. Not like how Naruto got along with Logan, Hank and Emma to name a few, there wasn't any kind of real dislike for each other, it was more like Naruto couldn't be bothered to go out of his way start a conversation with Scott, yet, the minute Logan or Emma walked into the room, head crack a joke, pick a fight, do things that a normal person would do with a friend or a close acquaintance, he respected the man as a leader and temporarily treated him as a superior but they were not close. So what next? I fully intend to return to my people as soon as possible but I can't ignore the plight of Mutonkind right now, Naruto said, he planned to broach the subject of creating a two-way gateway between Earth and the Elemental Nations the next time he spoke with Dr. Richards, if it could be done then he would return to the Elemental Nations, settle any problems before coming back to Earth to help out the mutants, perhaps he could get Sasuke to tag along. That's for Beast to decide, Cyclops declared, he had enough things to deal with on his plate and so he delegated anything to do with a cure for the mutant decimation to Beast. Naruto was simply an extension of this, what I'd like you to do in the meant time, however, is take up the position of assistant combat instructor, Logan will still handle the main stuff and these advanced classes will be optional, but I think that any mutants undergoing your specialized training will greatly benefit from it, there is a war coming Naruto Uzumaki, a war for the survival of my species and I need to get my people ready. I see, I'll do it then, I will help whoever is willing to step up, become a warrior, but you need to understand that I am not very good at holding back, I can't guarantee they won't be scarred for life. It sounded like bragging and was said as a joke but Scott could tell by the gleam in Naruto's eyes that he was completely so that today thanks for watching.